a reincarnation romantic comedy of a hero and a witch. Volume 1, by Amami Kazuki, translated by Ayo and Helena at Nierskai Translations. Audiobook by Masquerade at Masquerade. Audiobooks. Prologue, The Hero and the Witch. A boy and a girl were facing off against each other on a battlefield that had turned into a wasteland. They both looked like they were in their 15 or 16. Despite their youthful outlook, however, they held strong enough power to influence the fate of the world. I see. So you've got rid of my curse already, said the silver-haired witch, the bearer of curses and the cause of the various disasters that happened in the world. Of course, I was chosen to get rid of that curse of yours, after all, answered the blonde boy, the strongest hero in existence and the one who bore the fate of saving the world. I see, so that's why you look so carefree. Terrible scars filled their clothes and body, marks of their fierce battle. Their surroundings were in the same shape. The previously lush forest, filled with its majestic greenery was now a barren land devoid of any color save from the color of dust. The hero approached the witch and thrusted his sword on her throat. It's over. Or do you still think that you can resist? No. Besides, I have no reason to fight anymore. Let's just end this. The witch closed her eyes and said in a whisper. But, let me remind you that killing me won't get rid of all the curses that afflicted this world. If you don't strike the real source of the curses that lie in the root of the world, disasters will still befall the people you're trying to protect. Yeah, I know that. I've heard those exact words a million times already. The hero nodded with an unreadable expression. The witch ignored it and continued. With your power. I'm sure you'll do just fine, you managed to defeat me, after all, that said, I have no reason to exist in this world anymore. So, you can kill me now, comma the witch continued, the hero brandished the pure white sword in his hand, before he moved his hand, his mouth moved to ask one final question, may I ask you why are you doing all this, right, it would be lonely if I'd just die like that, <laughs> all right, let me tell you a story about a poor witch, don't forget it later, okay? Think of it as a last gift from me. Then, the witch told him a story. About her thoughts. What she fought for and what she died for. The words that left her mouth were spun beautifully alongside her beautiful voice. The witch. No. The girl told the boy her life story. I'll leave everything to you. Make sure to save the world. Hero. You don't need to worry about that. Goodbye, witch. After the witch's story was over, once again, the hero brandished his sword. Then, the boy who bore the fate of saving the world, finally became the world's savior. Chapter 1, Reincarnation, Transmigration, and Faithful Reunion. My name is Sheena May I, nice to meet you, everyone. Her lovely voice roused my consciousness. It took me, Shireshi Godu, a while to clear my consciousness but... Gradually, I became more aware of the things that happened around me. This place was a second-year classroom of Yumai High in Gunma Prefecture. The current time was 9 a.m. In other words, the homeroom was still ongoing. After confirming the situation, I turned my gaze to the front of the classroom. There was a beautiful girl standing in front of the podium. Her black hair was long and glossy, though my consciousness was hazy. Her beautiful face didn't fail to captivate me. Her stature was small, but that only enhanced her cuteness if anything. But, I didn't recognize neither her appearance nor her voice. No matter how forgetful I was, it should be impossible for me to not recognize any of my classmates. As I was racking my brain in that direction, I suddenly remembered something. The other day, the homeroom teacher said that there would be a transfer student coming to this class. Now. Everything finally started to make sense. That was the reason why she was standing in front of everyone like this. I didn't expect the transfer student to be this pretty, though. Her dainty appearance took everyone by surprise. Not only the boys were captivated, even the girls too. Oi, oi. She's crazy cute. Damn. I'm excited now. What about you? The boy sitting in front of me turned round and started talking to me. I, I guess. Yeah. Halfway through my reply, I let out a yawn. What's wrong, Godu? You seem to be in low spirits today. The boy who was currently tilting his head to my direction was my bad friend, Kudu Shinji. Beneath his brown hair was a disgustingly good-looking face. His stature was bigger than me. 
but the way he dressed was sloppier than me. Every inch of his body screamed frivolous. I worked until late last night. I'm sleepy. I answered while rubbing my eyes. Though, perhaps because of the appearance of the cute transfer student, my drowsiness was already halfway gone. You're still at it, huh? Your part-time job, I mean, gotta do it if I want to get more money. As long as you have money, you can do anything. Ha ha. You and your manga villain act. Shinji laughed out loud. Suddenly he grinned. An idea probably came up in his mind. Right. If your workplace is in need of help, why don't you ask that transfer student to work there? Your workload will decrease and you'll get to know a cutie like her. Two birds with one stone. And the catch is? No way you're suggesting something like this for free. Of course not. You'll have to introduce her to me afterwards. He hit me on my shoulder. You're just trying to make use of me, aren't you? Besides, I don't think she's the kind of person who'll break the school's rules for no reason like that. They kinda tolerated it but, strictly speaking, working part-time was against the school's rules. The transfer student, she in a may I, was it? She looked quite nervous currently. But I could tell that she was a serious student. She was definitely not the kind of student who would break school rules for no reason. She Ina finished her introduction and sat down. Her seat was on the opposite side of the room compared to mine, which was by the window. It was simply too far away for me to walk there and start a conversation with her. Hello, can I call you she Ina san? How do you do? Whoa, you're prettier up close. She was greeted by everyone in her vicinity, judging from the flustered look on her face though. She didn't seem to be someone who was good at socializing. She seems to be a bona fide beautiful girl. Huh? Shenji nodded happily. This guy had the tendency to use that pretty face of his to ensnare every beautiful girl he found. To put it simply, he was your average philanderer. The girls in the class were aware of this, so he had a bad reputation among them. He didn't seem to care about that, though. Well, his scope of activity wasn't restricted to the school ground, so I guess receiving the eye of his girl classmates wasn't a big deal to him. The girls in this class are pretty, but they are impure. I mean, look at those hairs. What's the point of dyeing them brown or blonde? There is a severe lack of black-haired beauty around here and then, the new girl came. Like an oasis in the desert, her existence is perfect. She didn't move and here to satisfy your fetish, you know? I looked at Shinji listlessly before turning my gaze to Shi Inu again. By this time, the homeroom had ended and she was surrounded by the other girls. It was difficult to tell what was happening from here, but they seemed to be bombarding the poor girl with questions. This was something every transfer student had to go through at one point in their life. If they weren't good at socializing, well, tough luck. You two aren't going to talk to her? A gentle voice reached my ears. A girl with permed brown hair approached us. I mean, look at that I can't talk to her even if I want to. I said, pointing to the swarm of people. Well, Godu is Godu, but what about you, Shinji? I thought you'd be the first one crawling over to her. I know when to back down. That's one reason why I'm popular to begin with. He let out a snort before shrugging his shoulders. Besides, I'm in no hurry. They'll get sick of doing that soon enough anyway. Treating people like a freak show? Nice personality you got there. I'm just stating a fact. That's just how humans are. After they get used to her presence, her surroundings will die down. Besides, from the way she Ina is acting, this situation won't stay like this for too long. The name of the girl who was sighing at Shinji's words was Kairi Shimahina. Like she Ina. She was a beautiful girl. She had big, bright eyes and a high nose. Her skin was white without blemish and her lips were luscious and plump. In addition to her heavenly face, she had a slender waist and was blessed with an ample amount of meat in her chest. What is it, Godu? Why are you staring at me like that? We had known each other since we were kids. In other words, we were childhood friends. Our relationship was so close that we felt more like siblings than friends. Don't mind me. Anyway, what kind of person is she? She in a may I, I meant. I asked that question to change the topic. Hina tilted her head in confusion. I don't know I was there for a bit, but we didn't talk much. By there, she meant that she was among the crowds who talked to Sheena. If it wasn't obvious already, she seems to be a serious and quiet girl. 
but then again, it's her first day here, so she's probably nervous. Give her time and we'll know what her actual personality is like. Shinji nodded his head and said, even though she is that pretty, she doesn't seem to have much self-confidence. Is she unaware of her beauty or is she just overly self-conscious about it? I wonder what kind of person she is. Why don't you try to ask her directly? By the way, I hope that she is the former type. It'll be easy to make her fall for me if that's the case. I'll only need to give her enough praise, that'll do the magic. Though, the chance of her being the former is low though. I mean, there aren't many people who are that self-unaware, don't care, didn't ask. His words had a semblance of truth in it though. There was no way that people hadn't praised her look already, so she should be aware of it. While thinking about such things, I stared at Sheena who was talking with one of the girls. Suddenly, our eyes met. Her gaze felt unnaturally sharp. I realized that I was staring at her for too long, so I averted my gaze. Still, that sharp gaze of hers felt unreal. She didn't seem to have a strong enough personality to do that. Even now, she was still smiling awkwardly at the classmates who were talking to her. It was probably my imagination. Emma go to the toilet, I muttered before standing up. The first class wouldn't start for a while, so might as well get finished with my business first. Have fun. Don't use this as an excuse to skip class later, okay? I headed for the door while being escorted by the waves of troublesome people. To get to the door, I passed by Sheena's seat. Question mark. That was weird. The air felt strangely familiar. I wanted to stay and investigate this, but it would be weird if I were to suddenly stop in front of the transfer student's seat. In the end, I decided to let it go. I went outside the classroom with furrowed brows. While I was walking down the hallway, I started to rag my brain. What was that feeling? It felt like I knew the transfer student from somewhere. Neither her appearance nor her voice were familiar to me, but it felt like I knew her well. It was her atmosphere yeah, I recognized that atmosphere. The air around her felt so familiar to me, but I failed to connect it to a specific person. Were we acquaintances? If so, when or where did we meet? Many questions surfaced, but it seemed like those questions wouldn't be answered anytime soon. Well, everything could just be my imagination. Did you hear? They said that the new transfer student in class 2 is a real cutie. I heard that. I've been curious about it wanna take a look later? I've already done that. She's a real cutie. I almost thought she was an idol for a second there. As I was walking toward the toilet, I could hear the other students talking about the new girl. I guess the news reached the other class already, huh? It wasn't surprising though, since she was that cute. But still, she moved in right before the summer vacation. A really strange time to be transferring school as it was halfway through the school year. Did she have a reason in particular? Well, there was no way that she did it without a real reason behind it while thinking about such things. I arrived at my destination, the toilet. Just as I was about to open the door to finish my business quickly, a voice called out to me from behind. Can I have a word with you? My whole body stiffened. I heightened my guard in reflex. I didn't notice someone creeping up on me until they were this close. How did this happen? When I turned around to see who it was, the first thing that came to my sight was a pair of jewel-like eyes. Gradually, my sight received more information about the person before me. Her long, beautiful black hair. A face so beautiful that it wouldn't be strange if you were to fall in love with her at the first sight. Short stature that only enhanced her cuteness. Without a doubt, this person was the transfer student, she in a may I? Oh my! There is no need to look this surprised. I know that I called you out of nowhere and I'm new around here. But I'm still your classmate, aren't I? Said she Ina with a mysterious smile on her face. Unlike her meek attitude at class, she was acting quite haughtily in front of me. What did you just do? Just who the hell are you, really? I narrowed my eyes and asked. I focused my gaze on her so I wouldn't be missing the slightest bit of her reaction. I didn't let my guard down and I had a good reason for that. There was no way a student from this world could creep up on me without me knowing like that. Didn't I introduce myself previously? Sheena may I? That's my real name, you know? In this world, at least, said Sheena in a mocking tone. This world, huh? 
Obviously, I didn't miss that part of her words. That fearless look of her meant that it wasn't spoken in jest, so that could only mean one thing. She was related to my previous life. It's been a long time, hero. Your appearance in this world doesn't look as manly as before. The way she called me. That tone. That high-handed attitude. I knew this girl very well. I previously failed to connect the dot because her current appearance looked nothing like her previous one. Finally you've noticed. You've lost your touch. Haven't you? Taking so long just to notice something trivial like this. If she was like me, a reincarnated individual, then it wasn't strange that she would look different. The transfer student's appearance overlapped with a certain someone from my previous world's appearance. You the Witch of Calamity series? To my surprised shout, she in a may I? No, the witch, Ceres, nodded her head. Section I, Shire she go do, had memories of my previous life. Back then, I was known as Grey Handlet. I was born, grew and died in a different world than the one I was currently in. Those memories were my own memories, I was certain of it. Back when I was a child, I only dreamed of those memories occasionally, but as I grew older, the frequency of the dreams started to increase. At first, I only thought of them as a series of realistic dreams, but the continuity and the consistency of these convinced me that it wasn't the case. Besides, those dreams weren't something that could be produced by a child's limited imagination. At one point in my life, I suspected that I was afflicted with some kind of mental illness. There was a time when I consulted my parents about it. I managed to convince them that I had been constantly having nightmares. I could elaborate more by telling them the details of the dreams. Like, how in those dreams, I was a young man living in the world of sword and magic and so on. But I didn't want my parents to treat me like a lunatic, so I decided not to. In the end, my parents brought me to a hospital. But they found nothing wrong with my brain. They dismissed it as me having a severe case of Chunibyu, which I clearly wasn't. But I didn't want to start a fight, so I just hid my dissatisfaction deep inside my heart. It wasn't until the summer of my first year of high school that I finally remembered everything about my previous life. I realized that the boy named Grey Handlet was my previous identity. But, I've never told anyone about this. No one would believe me even if I told them. The people of this world wouldn't believe in the existence of another world to them. Reincarnation and transmigration was something that only happened in fiction. Besides, even I didn't know why I was reincarnated in the first place. In addition, I got reincarnated in another world, with my memories intact nonetheless. The situation revolving around my reincarnation was a complete mystery. I didn't know what exactly happened and I had no way to find out. So, I decided to live as an ordinary high school student in the meantime. I didn't know why I was reincarnated, but this was a chance for me to live a second life. This time, I'd live my life freely without being tied to something like heroic duty or what not. Or so I thought. Without warning, those peaceful days had crumbled down at this very moment. You still can't believe my words. Can you? The witch, Sheena, smiled as she said that. Immediately after, a silver staff appeared in her hand. She hadn't brought anything resembling the staff. It really appeared out of nowhere. The thing was as tall as her body and there was no way that she could hide it inside her school uniform. This was the phenomenon that defied the law of physics. The technique that manipulated the unknown magic. This should be sufficient as a proof. After all. Witches don't exist in this world. This world was ruled by something called science instead of magic. That was the reason why I've never seen a mage or something similar in this world. Even if they existed, they wouldn't be flailing their magic around as they would be busy hiding. Besides, their existence would be something really rare. Also, the average person in this world thought of magic as something that only existed in fiction. You can use magic in this world. Just some simple magic like what I did just now. The reason why this world isn't aware of the existence of magic is because mana itself is scarce here. Just gathering enough of them to use the lowest tier of magic takes a huge amount of effort. Even I, the strongest witch, has to gather them for years to use a higher tier magic. So it's no wonder that the residents of this world aren't aware of mana. It's really inconvenient. Back in the other world. 
I could gather that much mana overnight. The witch said in a displeased tone. So that was why she used a simple magic like this instead of just transforming the whole school building into something else entirely. I see. Unlike the witch, I couldn't use any magic. Not back then, not now. I simply didn't have a talent for magic. Besides, I didn't need magic to fulfill my duty. Sheena may I? It's hard to believe. But after seeing your magic, I have to accept it whether I like it or not that you're the reincarnation of the Witch of Calamity, Ceres that aside. Then, I asked her, what the hell is going on? I was aware that my question was vague, but it couldn't be helped. I didn't even know where to start. We both transmigrated, reincarnated and met each other again in this world? There is no way that this is a coincidence. Is this part of your plan? Is our reincarnation your doing? Tell me. Well, where should I start? The witch put her hand over her mouth and pondered. She seemed to be struggling with how she should start her explanation as she didn't seem to show any reluctance. Suddenly, the bell for the first period rang. Ah, ah, the class should have started already. Well, whatever. It can't be helped considering the circumstances. I haven't skipped too many classes and it felt a shame that I had to do it today, but it couldn't be helped. This matter was that important, after all. Which? What's wrong? For some reason, her face turned pale. N nothing why yeah, you're right. It can't be helped considering the circumstances. The witch let out a series of coughs. Could it be, she was bothered by this? Was it the first time she ever skipped class or something? Really? Was this the same person as the one who plunged the world into disaster? The Witch of Calamity, Ceres Flores? No way she was bothered by this right? Yeah, no way in hell. It was probably my imagination. Someone might hear us if we were to talk here. Let's move. Our surroundings were quiet, probably because the class had started already. The only voice that could be heard was the teacher's voice leaking from the classrooms. From that, it was easy to tell that if we were to talk here, everyone inside the classroom could also hear our voices. If we didn't move somewhere else, they would find out that we were skipping class quickly. The rest area in front of the club building should be deserted. Let's go there. After thinking of a perfect place to talk, I turned my back to her. But I suddenly felt a sharp killing intent from her direction. I immediately turned round in reflex. The witch bent her knees and kicked the floor of the hallway to sprung her body toward me. She appeared right in front of me. Almost instantly, she thrusted her staff right in front of my throat. Her movement was fast. All I could do was to follow her movements with my eyes and nothing else. I could feel my spine becoming cold as she narrowed her eyes after seeing my pathetic state. Just as I thought, you've lost the powers of your previous life. The old you would have easily dodged this even when I fully reinforced my whole body with magic. Her words were true. I was way weaker than back in my previous life. Well, it wasn't even worth comparing to begin with. The human's body in this world is poor. It's hard to move around like I did in the previous world. I shrugged my shoulders. The people in that world were much stronger than in this world. Rather, the people in the other world were just built different. Their basic capabilities were pretty much the same, but the warriors from that world were able to do superhuman feats after a little training. They could run hundreds of meters in less than five seconds, jump ten meters or more without preparation, smash through rocks with their swords and shatter chunks of iron with their fists. My feats in particular were extraordinary even among those superhumans. After all, I was the world's strongest hero. I was a superhuman among those superhumans. But, that was a story from the past. Right now, I was only a little stronger than a normal high school student. I guess that's the case, huh? I was just trying to confirm my guess, so no need to be afraid of me. You sure you weren't actually trying to kill me? I complained to the witch who withdrew her staff from my throat. I felt relieved by the action, but I still felt bitter. We should move to somewhere deserted. She crossed her arms, as if to say lead the way. I had no choice but to follow her biddings. I could try to disobey her, but she would probably kill me if I did. While walking, I started to think about the differences between the physical ability between the human of this world and another one. I tried to see if I could regain the power I had back in my previous life, but to no avail. No matter how hard I trained, I couldn't regain even a percent of my power back then. 
It was the influence of magic, said the witch in a matter-of-fact manner. It seemed like she was aware of what I was thinking about. The warriors from the other world absorbed the mana around them when they were training. Even if they didn't have the talents required to do magic, the mana they absorbed wouldn't dissipate. The more they trained their body, the more mana they would assimilate into their bodies and the stronger their body would get. That was the first time that I've ever heard of that. It wasn't a well-known theory in the other world. In other words, in a way, the warriors from the other worlds were also magic users. Conflicts between warriors and mages weren't uncommon in that world. If this kind of theory were to spread around in that world, it would turn it upside down. I never knew about that. I nodded, hiding my surprise. Saying absurd things without batting an eye like that, she hadn't changed at all. But, there is too little mana in this world to make that phenomenon possible. Let alone letting the mana assimilate to your body, rousing them in the first place is hard enough. That's why, I don't think you'll be able to get your power back. It was hard to believe, but her logic was sound. She was a master of magic and she knew about mana and such more than I did. Besides, her theory was still in the realm of logic. I couldn't refute her words even if I wanted to. This place should be good. We arrived at the rest area in front of the club building. There were benches and vending machines here. The place was near the entrance of the gym and was often used by the members of the sports club. Normally, this place would be crowded, but there were certain hours when it was deserted just like right now. I turned around to face the witch. I narrowed my eyes, watching the witch's every move. Hee hee. What is it? Are you still holding a grudge over my previous action? Of course. I won't let you have your way on me more than once. You can't win against me no matter how hard you try, don't you know that? Unlike you, I still have my power. Yes, it's hard to use it, but it's still something compared to you, said the witch while smiling mysteriously. Actually, I've been wondering about that. Yes, I lost my power, but I still had ample amounts of combat experience from my past life. Even if my power was merely at the level of a normal high school boy, I should be unbeatable when it came to fighting if my opponents were merely normal humans. Even if the witch enhanced her body with magic, as long as she didn't do a surprise attack like last time, I would still be able to retaliate. Besides, she said it herself, she couldn't use higher tier magic even if she wanted to. Don't worry. I'm not going to kill you. I mean, what's the point? I guess so. The witch turned her back on me. Seeing that, I let my guard down. She was right. What was the point? If I were to push myself, I could win and kill her if I wanted to. But there was no point in doing that. The only thing that would come out of it was that they would brand me as a criminal for assaulting a high school girl. Want something to drink? I asked the witch who was looking at the vending machine. I took out my wallet and put a hundred yen coin into the machine. Then I chose a canned coffee randomly. By the way, most of the drinks in the machine cost a hundred yen each so they were affordable by the students. No, I. She rummaged through her pocket then turned away awkwardly. You didn't bring your wallet? It's in my bag. All right, I'll buy you juice then. It's to celebrate our reunion, I guess. I took the canned coffee then opened it. A pleasant sound echoed as I did it. I remember you used to like apple juice. Am I right? Somehow, I managed to remember that trivial thing she said from our previous life. She didn't say anything to my question, so I took her silence as a yes and bought an apple juice from the vending machine. Thank you, said the witch as she furrowed her brows and turned her face away from me. Now, that was a surprise. I didn't expect her to thank me at all. I guess her parents in this world taught her a little about manners, huh? Or it could also be that this world influenced her in a way or another. Perhaps noticing what I was thinking about, she scowled at me. What is it? That's for me, isn't it? Hurry up and give it to me then. Yes, yes. Here, take it. R, W, wait. Because I threw the can so suddenly. She flailed her hands, attempting to catch it midair. She managed to do it. But between the pompous gestures she previously made and her current appearance the gap was surely something. Huh? Calm down. You don't need to use such big moves to catch something like this. How about just hand it to me properly instead of throwing it away suddenly like that? Your reflex is as horrible as always. You still can't react to sudden movements like this. 
I can. I just need to use my magic. Don't use it for something trivial like this. Didn't you say it's hard to gather mana in the first place? Ugh. The witch turned her face away with UHMPH. That looked kinda cute actually. Unlike in the other world when she had a bewitching appearance, her current appearance made the arrogant gestures that she normally did look cute instead. All right. It's time to talk about the real topic at hand. Right but first, can I ask you something? What is it? When did you fully remember everything from your previous life? Last year, during the summer. Before that time, I only dreamed about them. I see around the same time as me then. So, is your question related to why you're approaching me? No matter how you looked at it, there was no way that she transferring here was a coincidence. Also, she was aware of my identity as Grey even before we started talking to each other. She must have some kind of goal, I'm sure of it. Could it be you're approaching me to take revenge on me? Of course not. Didn't I tell you earlier that doing something like that is pointless? Then, why the hell did you transfer here in the first place? I couldn't find another reason for her to transfer here other than to see me. How do I explain this I'm here to confirm your presence here also to observe you? I guess. Confirm? I knew it. This whole transmigration thing was your doing. Wasn't it? Correct. I need you to be here. That's why I sent you here. She answered my question, but she kept glossing over the important thing while acting all pompous. It seemed like she was hiding something. You need me to be here? Elaborate. She frowned at me when I asked that. It seemed like she disliked that question, but what else could I do? I had to know the answer, who cared about her feelings on the subject. I don't know how to explain it. I know you're bad at explaining things, so don't worry. Take your time. Shut it. The witch fiddled with the apple juice she was holding. With her gaze at the ground, she opened her mouth to speak. I mean, what? You know I live and, and, I could barely hear her words. As I furrowed my brows to show my unamused expression, she, I I, closed her eyes and cried out, I can't live without you, okay? What? After confirming that I wasn't hearing things, I asked her a question, what the hell are you on about? Look, I'm not saying this because I want to, okay? It's just the way it is. She looked away. Her face was red like a tomato. Seeing this, I realized something, did you fall for me? Was that a confession? N no. It's not. Sorry, I didn't notice your feelings sooner but still, sorry, I can't accept that feeling of yours. I coolly rejected her while fiddling with my hair. If she was one of my normal girl classmates, I would be excited when hearing her confession, but she was the witch. So yeah, no way I would be excited. Stop it. I, I didn't mean it that way, okay. What the hell are you talking about then? Well, figures. There was no way that she would harbor such feelings toward me. After all, our relationship wasn't that simple. Both the witch and I were sworn nemesis in our previous lives. We tried to kill each other countless times. We might have feelings toward each other, but rather than love, it was hatred. That was why her confession of love sounded ridiculous to me the first time I heard it. I brought my face closer to hers. But she backed away quickly with a reddened face. Why you're too close? Is that so? Our faces weren't close enough for her to be blushing like that, though. Like in her previous life, she was still bad at socializing. Huh? The witch coughed and took a deep breath. As you know, my soul is cursed. That's the price you had to pay for cursing the world, right? Right. Like they said, you get what you paid for. There's always a price to pay whenever I use witchcraft. In exchange for cursing the world and plunging it into disaster, a curse equivalent to that curse in power was bound to my very soul. While they used the same mana to operate, witchcraft was different from normal magic. Witchcraft was a rare branch of magic that was born by infusing mana with dark emotions. It had a more destructive nature than normal magic, but the user had to pay the cost of casting such magic. Because of that demerit, the branch of magic was abandoned hundreds of years before I was born. Normal magic was simply way more convenient as you didn't need to kill yourself just to inflict some damage to your enemies. That was until she managed to revive it. Thanks to that, she was able to single-handedly plunge the world into a disaster. If I were to die, 
my soul would disappear and the curse that was bound to my soul would lose its vessel and spread throughout the world. There's no one in this world who can suppress this curse other than me. That's why. Ah, I see. I heard the same thing came out from her mouth back in the previous world, but still, what she said back then didn't actually happen in the previous world. Instead, she was reincarnated into this world. Wait, does that mean that the same curse wouldn't afflict the other world? As if she knew what I was thinking about. The witch continued to speak. When I was about to die, I used reincarnation magic. It won't change anything as my soul will still be bound by the curse, but at least I can buy some time with it. I understand why you did that. But why did you choose to reincarnate in another world? That's because I don't want to put that world in danger anymore it's the world you just saved after all if I transferred my soul into another world, that world would be safe, said the witch, as if she was reassuring me. I did wonder what would happen if another calamity struck that world once more, there was no more hero in that world, could the people survive? Anyway, that wasn't important for now. The witch said something that bugged me. If that's the case. Then won't this world be in danger instead? Correct. Well, I didn't care about what would happen to the world that I didn't know, said the witch with a dismissive tone. It was obvious that she was lying though. So I asked her, so, what's your plan? If you've talked this much, that means you have some kind of plan to save this world somehow, right? She wouldn't be here, speaking to me, if she didn't actually care about what happened to this world. After all, she put so much effort into making sure that the curse wouldn't spread in the other world even though she hated it. There was no way that she would feign indifference toward a world she didn't know of. I don't like the way you speak as if you've figured me out. But yes, you're correct. She pointed at my face. You, you're the plan. I see. So that was why she dragged me to this world with me. So you need my exorcism, huh? Exorcism. It was exactly what it called a technique to exorcise demons and curses by interfering and dispersing mana flow. It could nullify every phenomenon that was caused by magic. Witchcraft was no exception to this, although it was different in nature than normal magic, one still needed mana to perform witchcraft. The user of exorcism was also rare, that was because only those who were unable to manipulate mana could perform it. In other words, only talentless people could do it. There weren't many people who couldn't use mana in the previous world. You could scour the entire continent and at most, you'd only find a hundred or so of such people. Yes, you're the only one who could dispel my curse. After all, I was one of those people. Being able to use exorcism was the pre-requirements to kill the witch. Exorcists like me were natural counters to the witch since she thrived by manipulating mana. It was possible for other people to kill her, but if they were to do that, the curse in the witch's body would spiral out of control and bring even bigger disaster to the world. That was why only exorcists were allowed to kill them, and that was the reason why I was chosen as a hero in the first place. After all, aside from my status as the world's strongest swordsman, I was also the world's strongest exorcist. My mission was to kill the witch of calamity and to save the world. So, will you help me? The witch laughed and glared at me. There was a hint of hatred in her eyes. If only you'd done your job properly back then, everything wouldn't have come to this. Her words were true. I could only nod my head weakly. I got it, fine. I'll do my best to help you how though? Use your exorcism to gradually dispel the curse from my soul. That's the only way to do it without killing me. It'll probably take a few decades for everything to be done. So that's what you meant by I can't live without you. Huh? Yes. Sorry in advance, but you're stuck with me during that time period. The easiest way to dispel the curse would be to kill the witch herself. There would be a period of time when the curse would stay dormant and that would be the timing to dispel the curse completely. It was just, if you failed to dispel the curse during that time, the curse would afflict the witch killer's soul instead and we had to go back to square one if that were to happen. Of course. The easiest way to do it would be to kill me right now. That period of time when the curse stayed dormant was the moment when the curse itself was at its weakest so it would be easy to dispel it. As a hero, that was part of my job description. To kill the witch and dispel the curse that was bound to her soul. But, I don't want to kill you. I know you'd say so. Seriously, 
you're such a troublesome person. The witch let out a deep sigh. This part of her hadn't changed. Even after her reincarnation, she still treated her life lightly like this. Let me remind you of one thing. There are no magic users in this world, that means no mages, exorcists or heroes like you. We only have one chance in this and if we fail, this world will be doomed. There's no way that the residents of this world will be able to fight the demons. Demons, the embodiment of a curse in the form of a monster, they feed on dark emotions and could only act on their instincts to kill humans. Most of them had strength and agility that surpassed that of a normal human. Because of the witch's curse, demons spread through the other world in great numbers. If it wasn't because of the magic users risking their lives to fight them, humanity would have gone extinct already. In other words, if demons were to appear in this world. Even so, I still don't want to kill you. You're such a troublesome person. How many times have I told you that this is the fastest way? Speak for yourself. If things were that simple, you wouldn't go out of your way to transfer to this school. You could just have approached me and begged me to kill you. Why did you go out of your way to do something troublesome? She furrowed her brows and let out another deep sigh. It seemed like I hit a sore spot. Fine, fine. In that case, you have to spend the rest of your life with me. That's the price you have to pay for keeping me alive. Now, that's a surprise. Who knows that you'd give up this quickly? Back in the other world, you'd stop at nothing to make me kill you. Like seriously, don't place a dagger in my hand when I'm asleep. That's not the kind of night crawling that I want to experience. Night crawling, is a custom in ancient Japan where an unmarried man would crawl to an unmarried woman's room at night. If the woman consented, they would do the deed. It's one of the ways for ancient Japanese men to find a wife. I'm not a suicidal, stop treating me like one. After everything that you've done, you might as well be one. When I rubbed the frown on my forehead, the witch pouted and turned her face away. Back in my previous life, I was all alone. Only halfway through your life, I was always by your side for the rest of it. Being able to casually say something like that that part of you didn't change. For some reason, she looked at me with disgust. Then, she opened her mouth to speak. There was no one who mourned me when I finally died except for you seriously, what were you thinking, I was your enemy, for hell's sake, exactly what she said. No matter which world we came to, we would always be enemies, but still, you were right I have a family now I don't care about my own life, but if I were to die my family would be sad. She muttered those words while blushing furiously. Seeing her in this state, a series of chuckles escaped my mouth. W why are you laughing? D don't mind me good for you then, which, I was being sincere when I said that, she was no longer alone in this world. That smile of yours pisses me off HMPH. The witch snorted, crossed her arms in front of her chest and leaned against the wall. It was a familiar posture, but it felt different somehow. I don't know why, but that posture looks weird on you. What? Is it because you look different now? Due to the differences in her appearance. Her posture just felt too off. Shut up. As if you also don't look different from your previous life. Are you implying that I look uglier now? I, I didn't say anything like that. B besides, your current look doesn't look bad. As expected of her, she managed to poke where it hurts without realizing it. I didn't manage to catch the latter half of her muttering. But whatever, I'll forgive her for now. In your case. You looked pretty back then, but now you're more cute than pretty. See cute ahem I'm not happy from hearing your praises, okay? I looked at her appearance once again. Since she was a second year like me, she should be in her 16. She was around the same age as in her previous life, but aside from her facial features, her body proportion also differed. Compared to back then, there were two things that were missing from her appearance. Those two things were something that she was proud of. Two big things. W where are you staring at? The witch hid her chest with both hands, as if to shield it from my gaze. Well, don't worry about it too much, okay? Don't give me that pitying look. I'm still growing, okay? They'll grow for sure. It was rare to see her flustered like this. Since that was the case, it should be fine for me to get carried away a little. You had such an amazing figure back then. I'll sue you for sexual harassment. Well, I know that the only good thing about you was taken away from you, but don't be like this. There's still hope for you maybe. I see, so that's how it is. 
You think I wouldn't dare to throw hands? Let's see how you'll love these hands. She exuded a thick killing intent as she said that I had to take a few steps back because of the pressure. V violence isn't the answer to everything, you know. C calm down. Ha ah, whatever. Let's go back to the classroom quickly. It'll be bad if I miss the entire morning classes on my first day. Also, to tell you the truth, I really didn't want to miss the first period. Said the witch after looking at her watch. I followed suit by taking out my phone. Sure enough. The first period had ended already. The witch turned away and started to walk away. I was about to follow her when I noticed something. By the way, what's up with your act back in the homeroom? What? It's my honor student act. You got a problem with that? Well, an honor student wouldn't skip class on the first day. S. Stop bringing that up. You know that I had no choice but to do it. So, why did you do that? pretending to be an honor student, I mean, that'll just make you look like a quiet kid with a communication disorder, I know, right, as expected, you think so too, she slumped her shoulders as she said that, somehow, the current atmosphere was more depressing than when we were talking about the other world, by the way, do you still have trouble talking to other people, yes, so what, you were the only person I could talk properly with back in the other world, so it can't be helped that I'm also like this right now, then was then, now is now, you aren't a witch anymore so people wouldn't unconditionally hate you, would they, besides, you have family and friends now, right, I, I can talk to my family just fine, f friend though w what are those, can you eat them, so you have no friends, huh, s shut it, people don't change that easily, okay, if you just talk like how you normally talk to me, It'll be easier for you to find some friends. Acting like an honor student would just make people avoid you, you know? When she heard that advice from me, the witch furrowed her brows. What are you on about? She tilted her head. There was a confused expression in her face. If they were to see my true self, they would obviously hate me. She said that as if it was an obvious truth, leaving me with no chance to rebuke her words. Seeing me staring at her in silence. The witch turned away and dashed toward the classroom. Her black hair danced in the air following the movements of her body. Chapter 2 The Caring Hero and the Clumsy Witch Well, this was to be expected. After all, the new student somehow skipped the first class on the very first day she attended. The witch looked really uncomfortable with all the attention, but she managed to quietly return to her seat. Oi, oi, go do. You sure moved quickly. Huh? said Shinji with crossed arms. There was a disgusting grin on his face. She Inasan said that she wasn't feeling well, so I escorted her to the infirmary. There's nothing more to it, right? I raised my voice so the witch at the end of the classroom could hear me. Why yes m maybe it's because I was nervous, b but I've been feeling unwell, said the witch in a small voice. Was this really that haughty witch? It felt so weird seeing her like this. I understand why she skipped. But why did you skip then? If you had to escort her, then just do that and come back quickly. Hina approached me as she asked that question. I was sleepy. Since I was already there, might as well. I shrugged in response. It was a lie. But there was no way that I'd tell her the truth about what happened. I'm still. How did you become so close to her this quickly? There's something fishy going on here. Hina looked at me with suspicion. That's why I told you that you can't let your guard down, Hina. This guy is a natural at this, said Shinji as he slapped me on the shoulder. Seriously, stop that. It hurts. Hina glared at Shinji before turning around and walked toward the witch's seat. Are you all right now, she Ina san Why yes, I, I feel better already. It's your first day, so there's a lot to take in. If you have any troubles, feel free to ask me for help. Okay, Hina puffed her chest as she said so. Thanks to that, her massive weapon became more pronounced and the witch had to witness it in its full glory. There was a hint of envy on the witch's gaze as she stared at Hina in silence. Seeing that, I let out a chuckle. What's wrong? Seeing the puzzled Hina, the witch shook her head. N nothing. You um, I I'll ask you if I need some help, um, girl. Your tone is way too stiff. Relax, she is your classmate. Ha ha ha. She Ina-san, we're classmates. Don't be so stiff, 
Okay, just talk to me casually. EA, you are my I understand. That's still too stiff. EA, you um T then G got it I is that how you do it? Ha ha ha, you're doing it again. Well, if that's more comfortable for you, she in a san, it's all right. Have I introduced myself to you? My name is Kyrish Imahina. You can call me whatever you want. Kick Irish Imahina. Is it? M. My name is Sheena May I, and nice to meet you. Ha ha ha, I know your name already, She Ina San. You're an interesting one, don't you know that? Ina laughed loudly at the witch's response. Seriously, that girl was too far gone. I knew that she was bad at talking with people, but I never knew that she was this bad. I saw her talking with the crowds earlier today, but I was only observing her from afar, so I didn't know the details about their conversation. If it went on like this, then it was no wonder that the other girls were laughing around her back then. By the way, I just realized that I've never seen her talk properly with another person back in the other world. Now I'm starting to feel uneasy for her. Could she really adapt to this world? I mean, yeah, she had been living here for 16 years already. But still, after Hina left her side, I quickly went to her side and whispered to her, Oi, what? Get yourself together. Easy for you to say, you know I'm bad at this. Witches aren't supposed to be friendly with other people to begin with. Why are you so smug about it? Don't you realize that you sounded pitiful just now? P pitiful? I am not. I just love to live in solitude. That's it. You don't need to sugarcoat it. Lona. Leave me alone. She was getting teary-eyed by my teasing. Suddenly, Shinji cut into our conversation and called out to her. Oi, oi. Don't leave me behind like that. Hiya, she Ina san. Seeing Shinji approaching her casually like that, the witch's body stiffened. Oi, why were you like this? Say something quickly. She sent an SOS signal with her gaze to me. Well, it can't be helped then. Shinji, you're troubling her. What do you mean? I was just calling her name. Dumbass, did you look at yourself? You look like a philandra. You're scaring her. Go away. Do I really? He then took out his phone and took a look at his own reflection there. Hiya, what are you guys talking about? Another person interrupted our conversation. Shindyuka was her name. Her black hair was tied in a side tail. There was a gentle smile on her face. It suited her calm demeanor. She was well liked by everyone in class and because of that, she was one of the centers of the class. Yo, Yuka. Hear me out. Shinji talked about how I told him that he frightened the witch. In response, Yuka nodded happily. He is right. So get away from her quickly. Instead of Yuka, Ina answered him instead. She brought a group of girls with her and kicked Shinji out of the witch's vicinity. And once again, people gathered around the witch. They talked with the witch and occasionally asked her a question or two, in which she only nodded lightly as a response. I guess I was the only one who could tell how troubled she looked currently. She sent me another SOS using her gaze. It seemed like the positive vibes that Yuka and the others brought intimidated her. Ha <laughs> ha, really? Yuka-chan? That's crazy. She seemed to be especially intimidated by Hina. Hina looked like a Jiaru, but she actually never dated anyone. I knew about that because she was my childhood friend. She received a lot of confessions, but she never accepted any of them. Maybe she already had someone she liked, who knows. I know right? What do you think? She Ina San, perhaps noticing that the witch was left out of the conversation. Yuka tried to drag her into it. As expected, the witch kept stuttering when talking, though she managed to convey what she had in mind. It didn't show in her face, but it seemed like Yuka also had some difficulties trying to make her fit in. There was nothing wrong with Yuka. What she did was appropriate in that situation. The problem lies in the witch's lack of communication skill. I could see tears already forming in her eyes. Seriously? Wasn't she supposed to be the witch of calamity? Shouldn't she have more backbone than this? This part of her really hadn't changed. Huh? Oi. The next class is about to start. When I shooed the girls away, the witch's face immediately brightened. You shouldn't be that happy over something like this. Then... I went back to my seat and was greeted by a question from Shinji. I knew it. There's something going on between you two. I knew it was impossible to fool him. He was one of my closest friends after all. Besides, 
This guy was surprisingly observant and he could read the air really well. I know her from way back. I'm not that close to her though. I see. Why did you hide it from me then? I wasn't lying. It was true that I knew her from the way back. Too much of a hassle. Besides, I'm not obligated to tell you everything about my interpersonal relationship. I shrugged my shoulders as I said that. Meanwhile Shinji chuckled in response. Fine, I'll leave it at that section. Lunch break. Godukun, can I have a word with you? When I was eating with Shinji, Yuka approached us. Yuka was Shinji's classmate back in middle school. Since she had a large circle of friends, they didn't hang out often, but thanks to that relationship they had, me and her got along quite well. Her coming over to talk to me like this wasn't a rare occurrence. Both Yuka and Shinji stood out because of their appearance and because I got along with both of them. The rest of the class treated me the same way as they treated them, though. I felt that I didn't deserve that treatment because I didn't look as good as them. What's up? Nothing much, it's just have you done your assignment for the fifth period? What? What assignment? The fifth period would be math. The teacher in charge was known to be a strict person and they wouldn't hesitate to lower your grades if you missed out an assignment from them. But... I didn't remember anything about us having any assignments today. When I tilted my head in confusion, Yuka giggled. I knew it, you haven't done it. Sensei gave it to us near the end of the period. You probably didn't hear it because you were sleeping back then, also because I forgot to tell you. W wait a minute are you for real? Ina suddenly cut into our conversation. Her face looked pale. Yeah, sorry. I forgot to tell you too. N no. It isn't your fault. Yuka-chan, it was my fault that I dozed off the other day. Uck, what should I do? Can I make it in time if I start doing it now? The witch, who was invited to lunch by Hina, was listening to our conversation with a blank stare. Sorry, she ina san I have to do my assignment first, so go ahead and eat without me. She apologized to the witch and hurriedly took out her math textbook and notebook. Hina is an earnest student, isn't she? Yuka giggled after seeing that scene. Meanwhile Shinji and I just shrugged our shoulders. That girl doesn't know how to give up. It's at times like this that we should just accept our fates. I know, right? Then again, I know about the assignment, but why the hell would I do math, you? Wait, what was that, Shinji? If you knew about it, then why didn't you tell me about it? Why would I do that, my dear best friend, if I'm going to get scolded? Then obviously I'll drag you with me. I'm not a delinquent like you. Stop treating me like one. I'm an honor student. Honor students wouldn't skip classes like you. Said Shinji as he let out a sigh. I couldn't even retort to that because he was right. Yuka-chan is teaching me. You guys should join in too. Sensei didn't give us a lot of problems to solve. We should be able to finish it during the lunch break if we do our best. When I looked around the class. There were many classmates that had put their lunches away and were working on the maths assignment. Yuka must have been telling them about the assignments. This was why everyone adored her, she was so kind. Are you an idiot, Hina? To do the assignments, I have to solve the problems and to do that I have to understand the question first. I have been sleeping in class for the past few weeks, so I know literally nothing. That's not something to brag about. Instead of worrying about me. You should worry about yourself. You haven't done anything yourself, have you? You don't need to tell me that, said Hina as she scribbled through her notebook with her pen. I'll show you mine, so you should work on yours too, Godukun. Yuka pulled out her assignment and gave it to me. Oh, my goddess. Goddess really existed in this world. Back in the other world, they only exist as a false image that was created by the church. You're overreacting next time. Do it on your own, okay? Promise me. I made a gesture as if I was praying to her and she giggled when she saw it. Ah, that's not fair. Yuka-chan, you're spoiling him too much. That's just how deep the bond between me and Yuku is. You just don't have enough affection points with her. That's why she didn't show her assignment to you. What affection points? This isn't a game. N no. I just thought that Hina is able to solve the problems normally so she doesn't need to look at mine. Yuka hurriedly defended herself. Seeing this, Shinji crossed his arms and spoke, Well, no choice then. If the answer is right in front of me like this, then I'll have to do it even if I don't want to. 
What's with that haughty tone of yours? HMPH, unlike you and your stupid bond or whatever, I'll be paying her for her kindness. So, how much? Just buy me some juice later. Got it. After that exchange happened, we quickly put our lunches away and pulled out our notebooks. The witch looked at us and asked, is it okay if I don't do the assignment? Of course, Sensei wouldn't be that heartless to scold a new student about an old assignment. I I see. S sorry, I asked something strange. No, don't be. Also, relax. Don't be so nervous. Yuka tried to be as gentle as possible when talking to her, but the witch was still tense when talking to her. When our eyes involuntarily met, she glared at me though. Was it so hard to just act like how she acted around me instead of acting meekly like this? After things had quietened down, the witch pulled out a book and started to read it. She looked relaxed when she did it. Reading a book on the first day you transferred in? I mean, it wasn't a bad thing, but doing that would just make it harder for you to make friends. All right. Somehow, I finished everything. I finished the assignment quickly. It was all thanks to Yuka. I finished it faster than you, said Shinji with a smirk as he crossed his arms. So what? While taking back her notebook, Yuka whispered something to us. I wonder if she prefers to be alone? Did I do something unnecessary? She moved her gaze toward the witch, who was absorbed in her book. I don't know I think we were too pushy, after all, said Hina with a complicated look on her face. Both her and Yuka had been trying their best so that the new student could get used to the new environment quickly. But they started to think that their plan backfired and blamed themselves because said new student looked so uncomfortable around them. In truth, that wasn't the case. The witch was just too used to being alone. She had been living alone for half of her life and she knew how to deal with that kind of solitude. That was why she looked relaxed when she was reading a book on her own like that. But still, just because she was used to being alone, that didn't mean that she liked being alone. In truth, that girl, Ceres Flores, hated to be alone. She longed for the warmth of family, friends or any kind of human interaction. However, her lack of communication skill as well as the trauma of being detested as a witch made it hard for her to interact with other people. She was afraid that someone might come to hate her. That was the reason behind her nervousness and anxiety whenever there were other people around her. I was a special case because we were originally enemies. She could act haughtily because she didn't care if I were to hate her. Or rather, we were supposed to hate each other to begin with. Anyway, I wanted everyone to talk to her more so that she could overcome her trauma, but it would be really unnatural if I were to ask them to do it openly like that. Anyway, go do. Don't you know she Ina-san? So, what's with that? Then Shinji said that to me. I explained to Yuka and Hina that I knew the witch for a bit. I should talk to the witch later so that we could elaborate a proper backstory to tell everyone. Ha, huh, I see. So that's why you two got along quickly. MHM. I didn't notice that it was her at first, but when we talked earlier I managed to confirm that it was really her. I went on and explained to everyone. They were all the centers of the class. So if they understood the witch's personality, everyone else would also understand and they wouldn't isolate nor avoid her because of it. That girl isn't very talkative, but she does like to be around other people, so don't hesitate to talk to her. While I was busy trying to explain her circumstances, the witch was reading without care, since her attitude pissed me off. I gave her a rough poke in the shoulder. Oi, W what? I'm trying so hard to make some friends for you and here you are lost in your own world. I didn't tell you to do something like that, though. Everyone saw how she was yelling at me. Ha, huh, I see. So that's how it is. Ha, huh, she Ina-san. Ina stared at her in surprise. Somehow, you two look like you're about to enter your own world should we give you two some space, said Yuka while giggling. Well, anyway. That's the kind of girl she is. Just think of her as a really shy girl. Wait a minute, what are you saying about me? The witch tried to argue, but her voice gradually became quieter as she noticed everyone's stare. In the end, she fell into silence mid-sentence. Of course, I laughed at her in response. Right after that, the bell rang, signaling the end of the lunch break section. I managed to get through the fifth period with no problem and proceeded to sleep through the sixth period. Time passed and it was currently after school. 
I placed my pencil case in my backpack and threw the rest of my things, textbooks and notebooks, into my locker. Of course, I would be in trouble if a teacher discovered me doing this, but it was too troublesome to bring them home. Besides, I didn't study at home anyway, so this was more convenient for me. After I finished packing up, I looked at the witch, who was fiddling with her phone in her seat. All right, see you later, Godu Kun. I have to go to my club. I'm going ahead, Godu. I wanna stop by the arcade today. See ya. I raised my hand in response to Yuka and Shinji's goodbyes. Then, I went to the witch's side. So, what are you up to? She yelped in surprise when I called out to her. What the hell? Was she that absorbed in her phone? I asked, what are you up to? I saw her phone screen, she was looking at her eye. At first, I thought she was texting someone. But after taking a closer look, she was actually staring at the app's home screen. The top of the screen showed friends. Four, with two of the contacts listed as new friends. From the familiar profile picture of the two contacts, I could safely assume that they were Hina and Yuka. The witch quickly hid her phone. What? She glared at me. I could see a slight tint of pink in her cheeks. You, W what? Don't give me that pitying look. I could see tears forming in her eyes. Well, I thought she was up to something, but she was just giddy because the number of her Ryan friends increased. I guess I could safely assume that the other two contacts she had in her friend list were her parents. Well, it was good that she got along well with her parents, I guess. If you have anything to say, say it to my face. Ah. Uh, no I mean I guess good for you. Um, do your best out there, okay? Don't say that. You're just making me look pitiful. What do you want me to say then? You're such a troublesome woman. How about not peeking into other people's phones without their permission? Oh, that was a good argument. My bad but still, I didn't expect to see that. Even the way you apologize pisses me off. The witch gritted her teeth, as she glared at me. Well, friends were about quality and not quantity. So the number of friends you had shouldn't matter, but her having only four friends in her Ryan meant that she didn't have any friends from her previous school, right? No. I should stop thinking about it. Then, I heard a light-hearted voice coming from behind. Ina came into the classroom while slinging her bag over her shoulders. She noticed the teary-eyed witch and furrowed her brows at the sight. What's wrong? Was Goda bullying you? R. N.O.T. There was dust in my eyes. While the witch was making a random excuse, someone else entered the class. I looked over and saw a girl carrying a huge pile of handouts. Everyone. Sensei forgot to hand these over. Her gait was unsteady when she said that sentence. It seemed like she wanted to place the handouts on the teacher's desk. But because of her posture, what she did looked dangerous. Through my trained eyes, I managed to predict what would happen to her in the next few seconds. If this continued, she would fall over and the handouts would scatter all over the floor. There was also a possibility that her head would hit a nearby desk. Oi, watch out. I called out to her and dashed toward her. Right at that moment, huh? As expected, she tried to correct her posture, but her action was counterproductive and made her completely lose her balance instead. In the end, she fell over while letting out a scream. If I were to go over there normally. I wouldn't make it in time to save her. And so, I decided to push my body to the limit. I still had the body of a normal high school student, but I could temporarily remove the limiter from my brain to enhance the physical capabilities of my body. There, I grabbed the pile of handouts with my right arm and caught the girl's waist with my other hand. After that, I corrected my body's posture so that I could hold the handouts properly with my right hand and pulled the girl closer to me with my other hand so she wouldn't fall over. Eh? Huh? The girl stared at me with a puzzled expression. At that moment, I felt a sharp pain in my ankle. I guess I sprained it. Huh? Well, that was a given for doing something like that without any warm-ups. I tried to ignore the pain and called out to the girl, Are you okay? Can you stand? Why yes, you are mess sorry for troubling you. A and, T thank you. This girl was Sasyama Miki. She was one of my classmates, but I haven't talked to her much. She was close with Hina, though. If you're okay, then that's good. Be careful next time, okay? 
I let Sasyama go and patted her shoulders. Why yes, T thank you, Shireishi kun I saw my life flashing before me for a second there. Hina then rushed to Sasyama's side and asked her about her condition. In response, Sasyama smiled at her. Not bad, go do. A man's got to look cool once in a while. I shrugged my shoulders in response to Hina's praise before placing the handouts on the teacher's desk. In exchange for that cool act I sprained my ankle though. Unlike my previous life, I had a much harder time helping people because of this body. After all, even though I retained all my combat experiences and reflexes, my current body was still that of a high school boy. I could raise my physical capabilities like what I did just now, but my whole body would hurt all over if I did it for a long period of time. What? When I went back to the witch's side, she was giving me a blank stare. That habit of yours still hasn't changed, huh? Is your leg okay? Ah, you noticed, as expected, I shook my legs a little. It's not a big deal. I'll just need to smear it with some poultice and it'll heal in a few days. Can you walk home with that leg? My house is nearby. So yeah, of course, don't worry about me. This level of pain wouldn't bother me. Thanks to my previous life, I was subjected to a lot of things more painful than this. I'm not worried about you or anything. She turned her head away with UHMPH. Go do. We're going to our club. See you later. You um. Thank you again. Shireishi kun. I'll repay you properly next time. Both Hina and Sasyama ran out of the room. They seemed to be in a hurry. They were both in the track club and they were probably running out late for their club activities. Most of our classmates had either gone home or went to their clubs. Some of them were still talking in the hallways, but there were only me and the witch inside the classroom. So, are you planning to enter a club? I asked the witch. She turned her face away in response. If there's a literature club, maybe I don't want to join any clubs related to sports figures. You're hopeless in that regard. Shut up. Don't compare me with a muscle brain like you. Who do you call a muscle brain? Anyway, the literature club was shut down a while back. They didn't manage to get enough active members. Is that so? Then, I won't be joining any clubs. You sure? Joining one is the easiest way to get more friends, you know? Shut up, that isn't any of your business. You're preaching to me about clubs and what not. What about you? Why are you still here? Don't tell me you didn't actually join any clubs after all that preaching. Of course I did. The going home club. Let me welcome you to the club. Newbie. I don't need your welcome. Also, why are you still here? Go home already. Oi, oi. I'm here because of you. Didn't you ask me to dispel your curse? Ah, right. Hearing my words, the witch nodded. Wasn't the purpose of her transferring in to dispel her curse? How could she just casually forget about it like this? Was her head okay? Well, firstly, let's move elsewhere. Where to? My room. What? I knew that she was the witch, but it still felt embarrassing that she thoughtlessly invited me to her room like that. What? Do you have a problem with it? Aren't your parents home? No, they're not. I planted a suggestion in their mind to send me here by myself using magic. Oi, what the hell? Look, I had no other choice. Okay? She snorted before continuing. So, what are you going to do? I don't want to invite you either. So if you have a good place for us to do it, I'll be okay going there with you. Look at this girl acting haughtily when asking someone for a favor. Well, since you're living by yourself, might as well. It isn't like I can use my power anywhere else. Though, I wasn't sure if I could use my exorcism or not. But, if the witch's theory was correct, I should be able to do it no problem. In any case, I still couldn't use it anywhere I wanted. In order to dispel the curse out of her body, I still needed to make physical contact with her so I could interact with her mana and make a pathway for me to inject my power. Holding her hand should suffice, but there was no way I'd do it in public. Aside from that, I had to concentrate when using my power, so a quiet place was more preferable. Let's get going. Let's finish this troublesome business as soon as possible. I turned my back to the witch and walked away. She followed behind me quietly. Anyway, um, why aren't you in a club? What? Why do you ask? I mean, it's fitting for a muscle brain like you. What do you mean a muscle brain like me? Just because you're bad at physical activities doesn't mean 
What's wrong? For some reason, the witch stopped walking when I turned around. She was crouching while holding his forehead. There was a pillar right in front of her. I guess she bumped into it somehow, huh? What the hell are you doing? When I called out to her, she stared at me with teary eyes. I was just walking normally. Don't mind me. She could still act like this. Amazing. She always acted haughtily like this in the other world as a self-defense mechanism but it seemed like that habit carried away even in a peaceful world like this. It wasn't necessarily a bad thing, but well, D don't touch me. I moved her hair out of the way with my hand and took a look at her forehead. Ah, you got a bump. Why you're too close? Don't you know there is something called sexual harassment in this world? That doesn't apply to you specifically. I obviously wouldn't touch another girl's forehead. The witch was an exception. Wait. Actually, I wouldn't mind doing it to Hina because she was my childhood friend. That aside, where's your house? Is it close to school? Yeah, it's within a walking distance. That's awfully close. My parents made me live near the school because they were worried about me. I see. They really love you, don't they? When I said that, the witch furrowed her brows. They love me? Of course. They are worried about you because they love you. They're just worried out of obligation because I'm their daughter, said the witch in a hurry, as if to cut me out. The way she said that sentence bothered me. I stopped walking. You what are you? It was as if she was implying that if she wasn't their daughter, they wouldn't care about her. You won't understand how I feel. Everyone looks up to you. They need you. There was a faint smile as she said that. Just like back then. I guess you're right, I was chosen as a hero to lead the people around me. Since I've killed countless demons and saved countless people, everyone put their hopes in my back. And so, I didn't understand the witch's feelings. After all, unlike me, she was hated by everyone. Even so, I still had a complaint about my situation. But, they only sought after me because of my power. They depended on me because I was capable. No one cared about me because of who I was. That was the kind of existence I was and that's the reason why they killed me in the end. Even if that was the case, the witch trailed off her sentence and broke into a mysterious smile. I didn't know what kind of feelings were hidden behind that smile. I still envied you. She was the enemy of the world, the root of all calamities. The witch who received the hatred of everyone in the world, let out a bewitching smile. Just kidding. The shadow of her past self overlapped with the girl standing in front of me. I don't really care about all that stuff. Let's get going. We've wasted enough time already. The witch flipped her hair and walked toward the school building's entrance. Then, she suddenly turned back with a blank face. When she passed by in front of me, she let out a cough. I pressed my forehead with my hand involuntarily. You forgot to change your shoes, didn't you? L look. Everyone did that once in a while, right? At least be firm when making your argument, geez, not me for sure. The fact that this happened after a serious talk like that made me feel embarrassed. Wait, why was I the one getting embarrassed from her antics? Give me a break. I don't know just hang in there, witch. I'm only like this because I've been nervous for the whole day, okay? I think. I left the witch who was trying hard to defend herself and went outside. When I took a step outside, a wave of heat enveloped my whole body. It felt like the sun was trying to burn my body. Summer has arrived, huh? There was no better explanation other than this. Even though it wasn't long since I left the school building, sweat already started coming out from my body. Yet, the energetic voices of the baseball and soccer club members could be heard from the direction of the field. How could they run around in this kind of weather? I'd rather stay inside my house while eating some ice cream instead of torturing myself like that. It's so hot. The witch brushed her hair off her face and fanned her chest lightly with her hand. Are you okay? What? Do you think I'll collapse from the heat? That isn't impossible. Back in the other world, the heat never got this bad. Summer in Japan is nuts. Well, isn't that because we lived in the north? Maybe it was like this too in the south. Maybe. I only traveled around the land of the Holy Augusria Empire, the de facto ruler of the northern region. Aside from that, I went to its vassal states too, mainly the Mariano Federation. The furthest region to the south I went into would be when I was raiding a dungeon in the Astria Kingdom. 
but that kingdom was located on the border between the north and the center of the continent. While reminiscing about my previous life, I went to the bicycle parking lot. The witch's house was within a walking distance. Meanwhile mine was a bit far. It took me 20 minutes to get there with a bike at the parking lot. I saw some of my fellow going home club members hanging around. See ya. I pushed my bike out the gate after that. I said my goodbye early so they wouldn't go out of their way to invite me to go home together. Meanwhile, the witch was walking a few meters behind me so people wouldn't notice that we were going home together. While I didn't mind her doing that, I didn't know where her house was. I asked her for directions with my gaze and she confirmed it with hers, so I boldly walked towards said direction. Eventually, we reached the crossroad. It seemed like the witch decided that she didn't need to watch out for other people's gazes anymore, so she came forward and walked by my side. After that, we walked together in complete silence. While I didn't feel like saying anything to my former nemesis, at the same time, I also wanted to talk about a lot of things with her. While I was contemplating that silly thing, the witch suddenly stopped. Here, she said nonchalantly, the thing was, the place she pointed to was a really luxurious apartment. The idea that a single student would be living there was just so outlandish because of how expensive it looked. A, are you serious? What's wrong? Why are you making that dumb face? Looking at me, the witch tilted her head in confusion. Your parents are they like, filthy rich or something, huh? I don't know they're just, normal. The witch said, looking puzzled. She then proceeded to take out a card and swiped it in front of the front door. The door then opened soon afterwards and we were greeted by a really spacious lobby. I, a mere commoner, could do nothing but tremble and let out a weak voice at this sight. The witch, not noticing the state I was in, quickly got into the lift. I hurriedly followed her behind. I didn't want to be left behind by her and get caught by the guards. This is amazing. Inside the elevator was a wall made of tempered glass. We could see the whole city from here. You've been overreacting about the silliest things since a while ago, said the witch, shrugging her shoulders. Of course, I was born into a normal family, okay? Rather than making fun of me, she just didn't understand what was amazing about her situation. Because she had no friends, she wasn't aware that the environment she lived in wasn't a normal one at all. Years of failure in socializing resulted in her lack of common sense. Your lack of common sense hasn't changed at all. Huh? This is why you should try and socialize with more people so you could learn about the world you're living in properly. Is that so? The witch had an uneasy look on her face. Maybe my words were finally getting through her. In other words, stop reading books everywhere you go. I am not doing that. B. Besides, I'm learning about this world through those books. She turned her face away with UHMPH. Eventually. The lift stopped. I didn't even know how many floors we had passed. The witch got off the lift and unlocked the door to a room at the end of the hallway and entered it. I don't want you to be here, but go in. S. Sorry for intruding. As I followed the witch fearfully and entered the room, the smell of books entered my nose. There were several bookshelves lining up on the walls of the spacious room. All of them were completely filled with books. Hell! There were even some books that couldn't fit in the shelves because there wasn't enough space. Those books were stacked neatly on the floor. In the center of the room, there was a table, surrounded by two sofas. The witch sat down on one of them and I sat down on the sofa opposite of her. This room is so big. The room was spacious, but it felt suffocating to me. Maybe that was because of my commoner soul freaking out. Even in my previous life, I didn't live in this much luxury. Yes. They provided me with a private room that was as big as this room because I was a hero, but I didn't use it much since I had to travel around a lot. I used to sleep in cheap inns instead. By the way, don't you think there's too many books here? It can't be helped, okay? There's so many interesting books in this world, said the witch as she averted her gaze from me. Unlike back in the previous world, the books here are cheap and my family would buy me as many books as I want. Come to think of it, she was also a bookworm back in the previous world, but since paper was scarce over there, books were absurdly expensive. When I took a closer look, there were a lot of manga and light novels on the bookshelves. There were other things too, such as historical documentaries. I noticed that there were more shown manga and light novels than anything there. I it can't be helped. 
Okay, T. The storybooks in this world are interesting. I didn't say anything, but she started to defend herself all of a sudden. You've always liked stories like this, right? I remember your eyes would shine brightly whenever you were listening to the bard's stories. I know you love heroic tales like knights slaying evil dragons and such. It felt nostalgic. Imagine the bard's reaction if they found out that the young woman who had been frolicking like a child around them was the Witch of Calamity herself. Ahem, I'm going to make some tea. Perhaps remembering that dark history of hers, the witch blushed and cleared out her throat. Then, she got up from her seat and returned not too long after with two cups in her hands. I thought I was not welcome here. You're still a guest. This is just basic manners. If you don't want it, just throw it away then. No no. Thank you for the hospitality. The witch said in a dismissive tone and sat on the sofa. Her manners and gestures were elegant and beautiful. Well, since she was a rich young lady, she must have been properly educated from a young age. I wish she would show this much elegance when talking to people other than me, though. As I were admiring her beauty, suddenly the witch exclaimed, Hot. The witch who had just sipped her tea was currently sticking out her tongue. Tears started to form in her eyes. Ahem. No. No. My impression of you was ruined already. Clearing your throat wouldn't fix that. Come to think of it, she couldn't take hot food too back in the day. I'll let it cool down first. The witch turned her gaze to the window, trying to hide her embarrassment. I silently sipped my tea. Yes. It's a good tea. I didn't know my tea, but it must have been an expensive one. The fact that it was expensive meant that it was a good tea. So, I should act like I knew a lot about tea here and gave it the praise it deserved. It's just instant tea I bought from the convenience store, though. Oi, what the hell? Why are you bringing out a commoner's product all of a sudden? You don't know anything about tea, do you? The witch shrugged her shoulders and placed her cup down. All right. I think it's time for us to start. Why are you acting haughtily when you're the one asking me a favor? Seriously, be more humble about it at least. Whose fault do you think it is? Even so well, whatever. It feels disgusting if you treat me politely anyway. Besides, this is something that I got to do. The witch stood up and sat down next to me. I thought she had an ulterior motive for a second there. Then I realized that she did it so we could start dispelling her curse. Oh, okay. You can start whenever you feel like it. For some reason, her voice cracked a little and her face was red. Seeing her like this made me feel conscious over the fact that I was currently inside the room of a girl classmate and I was sitting really close to her. Calm down. It was just the witch. Don't get any strange ideas. Eh alright, let's do this. Why yes. The witch leaned even closer to me. A soft, sweet scent tickled my nostrils. Her scent made me feel nervous. Even though I was a hero in my first life, I was still currently a high school boy. Even though I knew that she was the witch, I still felt nervous. I couldn't take my eyes off her. Everything about her drew me in from her long eyelashes, her clear and beautiful eyes, her pure white skin. She was an immensely beautiful girl. She was a beauty in her previous life, but she was blessed with such a pretty face in this life too, though. Unlike her previous life, her current appearance could be classified as cute rather than pretty. Her petite body only raised that impression further. W what is it? See could you stop staring at me? The witch stared at me with a shy face. Ahem. Seeing her expression, I came to my senses and let out a cough, trying to brush everything off. We were doing this because of the curse, nothing more. I needed to stop thinking about weird things. I'm going to hold your hand. Her voice trembled as she said that, probably out of nervousness. Then, she proceeded to touch my hand before immediately pulling away while letting out a small shriek. She attempted to do it again, slower, and managed to grasp my hand properly. I could feel the warmth of her hand. Her hand was thin and small. It felt like it would break if I were to squeeze it tightly. At first, I was worried about the possibility of my hand being sweaty and making her uncomfortable but then, I realized that she was the witch and I didn't need to show her that much consideration. I let out a sigh and that made my shoulder move a little. Thanks to that, it grazed the witch's shoulder and she yelped in surprise because of it. What the hell was that reaction? Is this really necessary? L look, I don't want to do this either, but it's the necessary procedure. 
thanks to her being all embarrassed. The embarrassment spread to me and made my voice tremble as I talked. My heart was pounding so hard to the point that I suspected that the witch could hear it. I felt sweat start to form in the hand that the witch was holding. I should calm myself and focus on dispelling her curse. I closed my eyes and tried to use my power. Oh, evil that lies deep inside. Chant, a ritual using words as its medium. It was used to activate the power of exorcism, the power to interfere with the cursed mana that was sleeping within the witch's soul. The pre-requirements of exorcism was the absence of mana within oneself, to be precise. Only people with a unique constitution that rejected magic could use it. That was the reason why the witch couldn't use it. But, Exorcism still required mana as its power source. To be exact, it used the mana of the exorcism subject as its power source. In this case, I was using the witch's mana. Show your form before me. After the chant was finished, the exorcism spell was perfectly formed without any issues using the mana that the witch had in her body. I let out a sigh of relief. There was no problem so far. It seemed like as long as there was a curse to be dispelled, exorcism could be used in this world. The witch was confident that it would be the case, but I wasn't since I was born in a different body compared to my previous life. All right, let's do this. Anyway, that was just the opening act. This was where the real thing began. I managed to secure a connection with the witch's soul, so I only needed to remove her curse now. If I wasn't careful, the curse might afflict me as well. So this was the part where I needed to concentrate the most. As I was thinking about that, something murky and dark entered my consciousness. What the hell is this? After taking a closer look at it, I realized that it was the curse itself. But its form was abnormally huge and dense. It was hard to believe that this kind of curse even existed. The curse was bound tightly to the pure white soul of the witches. Even now, it was slowly eroding her soul. It was worse than I thought. I was aware of its existence back in the other world but, back then, the curse's erosion hadn't reached this far. The light of her soul was barely hanging in there as almost every inch of it was contaminated by the curse. Oi, oi, what the hell happened to you? I dragged my consciousness back to reality, only to find that she was shutting both her eyes and her mouth, probably out of consideration for me. Acknowledging her intention. I decided to finish my business first. My miracle shall purify every impurity. It would be impossible to purify everything at once. I could only do it little by little. Section. After the exorcism was done, I returned my consciousness back to reality. The witch was breathing roughly and it was clear that she was in pain. Maybe it was the side effect of me touching her soul directly. She noticed that I had finished my job for now and thanked me, albeit with difficulty as she still hadn't managed to catch her breath yet. She looked really out of it. Her body was limp as she leaned against me. I decided to get up and laid her down on the sofa. Calm down. First, try to catch your breath. Why yes, replied the witch before she took a deep breath. That was strange. I've done this a lot of times back in the other world, but she never ended up in this state. Was it because the curse's erosion was worse than back then? It was the curse that it would bind its victim's soul, damage it and eventually kill it in the past. Thanks to her curse resistance, the erosion didn't get too far. No matter how potent the curse was, the witch was able to resist it to the point that it wasn't affecting her life at all. That was the reason why she could afford to worry about what happened after her death. Ordinary people wouldn't be able to stand such a heinous curse. They would die instantly the moment it made contact with their souls. So, what was going on with her? Could it be that her reincarnation made her curse resistance weaker? No, wait. I guess this was just how things should be, huh? It had been 16 years since she was reborn to this world, after all. Besides, I didn't know what happened to her during those 16 years. Are you really okay? When I asked. The witch furrowed her eyebrows and stared at me with suspicion. What are you talking about? I'm clearly not okay. That's why I'm asking for your help to begin with. You know that's not what I'm talking about. Are you talking about the erosion? Well, everything will be fine. My lifespan will be shortened a bit, but that's all there is to it. If you dispel the curse properly, I should be alright maybe. Maybe? What do you mean? Stop talking about your own life lightly. Like I said. You don't need to worry about anything. 
Besides, we aren't in the kind of relationship where we could afford to worry about each other. When I tried to scold her, she immediately cut me off. I opened my mouth to try and refute her words, but I couldn't say anything to her. After all, her words were true. Which, are you? I have no reason to tell you anything. Remember that we are just in a cooperative relationship because our goal is the same. There's nothing more to it, just like in the other world. Got it? The witch seemed to know what I wanted to say and cut me off mid-sentence. I don't care about what kind of relationship we are in. I'm just worried about you. Why? You're not a hero anymore, are you? The moment I heard those words, I unconsciously held my breath. She was right. I was no longer a hero. The heroic grey handlet was no more. My current identity was Shai Reishi Godu, an ordinary high school boy who lived in Japan. There was no reason for me to worry about my old nemesis. Silence enveloped the room. As I remained silent, the witch whispered something to me. From today onwards, you have to do this once every three days. I know this is a hassle, but this is the price you have to pay for not killing me on that day that's why, I won't thank you for this no matter what. Got it. I didn't mention the fact that she thanked me earlier. Maybe she did it unconsciously. All right. I'm going home then. I have finished my business here and it wasn't like she'd answer my questions even if I asked her anyway. Besides, I had a part-time job at 7, so I should get back home quickly. There was only one problem, though. I stared at the witch blankly. She let out a HMPH when she noticed my gaze. What? Nothing just when will you let go of my hand? Even when I tried to pull it away, she held it so tightly that it couldn't even budge. What are you? The witch stared at our intertwined hands. She finally realized what she had been doing. Immediately afterwards, she yanked her hand away and quickly backed away from me. WWW, you don't need to overreact like that. I smiled dryly at her. She was still the same old witch. This clumsy side of her just never changed. All right, see you at school. I drank the rest of the tea, which had gotten cold at this point and left the witch's room. I went back home on my bike. It was almost time for my part-time job to start, but I still had to go back home to change my clothes first because of my sprained ankle. It took me longer than usual to get home. I'm home, I said as I unlocked the door to my house, saying that was just out of habit more than anything since no one was currently at home. Both my parents were working. My dad worked in another city and my mom wouldn't be back until late at night. I have an older sister, but she was living on her own since she was a college student already. That was why whenever I went back from school, there would be no one to welcome me home. I climbed the stairs and walked to my room in the corner of the second floor. Compared to the witch's room, it was just a normal boy's room. There was a bed, a study desk, a chair, a drawer and a small bookshelf inside. There were only five or six manga and novels lined up in the bookshelf, a stark difference between the witch's numerous book collections. Oops. I needed to stop thinking about such things. I picked up a uniform for my part-time job and rushed out of the house. My current destination was a family restaurant in front of the station. I had several part-time jobs, but I had the most shifts there because it paid better than my other jobs. Hiya, Shireishi Senpai. While I was on my way, I suddenly heard someone calling my name. I turned around to see a girl in glasses waving at me. Her chestnut-colored hair was tied neatly in a ponytail. Kuisaki, you have a shift today? The girl was Kuisaki sire. A senpai at my part-time job and a kuhai at my school. Yes? Didn't I tell you about this yesterday? She pouted, placed her hands on her hips and proceeded to reprimand me. Her gesture seemed like she was trying to seduce me or something and I was aware that she was the kind of girl who'd actually do it. You think I'd remember everything that you told me? Yesterday, she talked to me all the time during work. I was too sleepy to listen to her properly, so it was a given that I didn't remember everything. Why you're so mean, senpai. You're going to make me cry. Boohoo. I'm crying. You're making your kuhai cry, senpai. Now, you have to comfort me. If you're really crying, sure, I'll do it. I'm crying. See? There are tears in my eyes. Wow. You could actually cry on demand like that. You should try to be an actress. You'll make it big. Actually, it's just my hay fever. 
Okay, I'll take my praises back. Come to think of it, it's already summer, huh? Right. By the way, Senpai, do you know that if you have a severe hay fever, no matter what the season is, you'll still burst into tears? You are? That sounds horrible. I made it up just now though. I don't actually have hay fever. So, this conversation is a waste of time. Ha ha ha. This is why I like you, senpai. You always go along with my jokes. Kawasaki laughed as she teased me. Being teased by someone younger like her put a dent in my pride. But seeing her smile made me just want to let her off. Curse that pretty face. It was so unfair. It was the same with the witch too. By the way senpai, don't you think you have too many shifts these days? How so? Don't you need more time to study? Final exam is just around the corner, you know? R. Right. I forgot that was a thing. It will start next week too. If I didn't want to get red marks, I needed to study properly this week. Ugh, what a pain. What about you? This is my last day. I'll be taking a break until the end of the exam. You got it good, huh? What do you mean, senpai? Can't you just do the same? Can't. The manager asked me to. I mean, there are a lot of students like us working there, right? We'd be short-staffed around this time, so I had no choice. The truth was, I just forgot that we'd be having our final exam soon. I shrugged my shoulders as Kawasaki looked at me, clearly unconvinced. You can just refuse him like I did, though. Unlike you, I don't really care about my grades, so I don't mind doing it. I literally just remembered about the exam. Geez, fine, do whatever you like, senpai. While we were having our conversation, we entered the family restaurant building. Suddenly, Kawasaki stopped as something came to her mind. By the way, senpai, is your leg okay? Huh, you noticed? It's nothing big, I just bumped into something. Laugh at me if you want to. She was surprisingly sharp, huh? So far, only the witch noticed it. But that was a given since she was the witch. Kawasaki then fell into silence for a while before eventually sighing in frustration. Please don't overdo it, senpai. Stop overreacting. Tis but a scratch. I can handle this. No problem. I was happy that she was concerned about me. But I had never pushed myself ever since I reincarnated to this world. Unlike back then, I only did whatever I could do. Section. The work at my part-time job was divided into two the kitchen and the front side. Since I could do both, my role was to fill in whichever of the two that was short-staffed. Today, it would be the front side, meaning I would be the waiter. As expected, the number of people started increasing as soon as dinner time started. Since the restaurant was located right in front of the station, we got more customers than normal restaurants did. It was hard dealing with so many people at once especially since we were always short-staffed. But since the pay was so good, the job wasn't so bad. 1,000 yen per hour wage was rare in this prefecture. Welcome. Table for how many people? Because of my previous life experience, I could actually guess from their footsteps how many people would come into the restaurant. In this case, there were four people. By the way, I could still do this even when this place was crowded, on the battlefield. There were countless times when I had to fight while being deprived of sight, so I had to understand the situation around me using my other senses, mainly hearing. The reason why I was so strong back then wasn't because of my strength, swordsmanship nor exorcism, but because of my unnaturally sharp five senses. Even though I was reincarnated, my five senses still retained that sharpness which was quite a curious thing to happen. You'd thought that you wouldn't retain your senses if you moved to a different body, but here we are. I continued to serve the customers while thinking about such things. There were more people than usual today and sadly, we weren't able to serve them all because of the lack of manpower. Gradually, the number of customers who were waiting in the waiting area had increased. Thank you for waiting. Here's your order. Both Kawasaki and I did our job well. But there was a newcomer who did a rather poor job in comparison, though, she did quite well for a newcomer. I believe her name was Darkeis san Senpai, things are looking quite bad here. In the middle of the chaos, Kawasaki approached me and talked to me. There are so many customers waiting and some of them seem dangerous. Right, 
There were some nasty looking people waiting in the waiting area looking annoyed. I understood their feelings though, I hated waiting too. Imagine waiting for dozens of minutes just to eat at a family restaurant, couldn't be me. Well, if it was a delicious raiment shop instead, I would wait for it even if it took hours. Well, we can't help it, the kitchen is having a hard time too. No matter how good we were at serving the customers, it wouldn't make the situation in the kitchen any better. They were currently overwhelmed with the huge number of orders. I could go there to help them but, if I were to do that, the front side would be overwhelmed instead. Like I said many times, we were short-staffed. When I was thinking about that, a crisp, high-pitched sound echoed through the room. When I turned around, I saw the newcomer fall to the floor. It seemed like she was in the middle of carrying an order as the floor around her was filled with scattered food and broken plates shards. You fuck. Not only that, some of the food was splattered on the pants of someone who was waiting in the waiting area. Unluckily for her, he was one of the nasty looking guys Kawasaki mentioned earlier. I am truly sorry. Do you think an apology is enough? You've made me wait for so long and now this, Takes san was apologizing desperately, but the customer was having none of it. T this is bad, senpai, said Kawasaki with a pale face. I ran over to Takes san's side to help her apologize to that customer only to see him kicking one of the intact plates on the ground toward her direction. I managed to catch the flying plate right before it hit her. Thankfully, I was able to read his action before he actually did it. Takes san stared at the scene in front of her in a daze. My bad. My foot slipped, just like that woman over there. The man looked surprised over the fact that I managed to grab the plate, but he casually acted like he didn't do it on purpose. Was this guy for real? Did he realize that if it actually hit her, we could charge him for assault? If this was the other world, this kind of behavior would be acceptable, but pulling something like this in this world? I could only see people who did this as idiots. Having this behavior in a world with established laws was foolish, the risk was too high. I'm sorry, but this area is dangerous because of the broken plate shards. For some reason they can fly around on their own too, so can you sirs move to another place for a moment? Still, I couldn't treat him roughly since I managed to stop him and he also claimed it as an accident. Besides, the first mistake was from our side, not theirs. That was why I gave him some concessions by saying that but it seemed like this guy was dumber than I thought. Fucker. Don't get carried away. Either he was pissed because of my dismissive attitude or was just blinded by his rage. Whatever the reason was, he grabbed my collar and pulled me close to him. In that instance, the surroundings started to buzz loudly. Oi, Masato I, I think you're going too far. His friend stepped forward, trying to stop him. They looked like a dangerous bunch, but at least they knew that they were really pushing it by doing this. The only idiot in their group was this Masato guy, apparently. Then, Takes san who had been in a daze, stood up and bowed her head again. You um, I am really sorry, everything is my fault, s so if you want to blame someone, what a good girl. If I was in her shoes. I wouldn't even bother apologizing to him. But I guess she was trying to make him release me. But, if things proceeded to what she wanted, his anger would shift back to her again and I didn't want that to happen. It was fine if he were to attack me, but if he were to attack Takes san instead, it would be troubling. Who knows what kind of things this idiot would do. So I didn't dare to take any risks here. I snorted at him to agitate him. You. That action managed to make him lose all his patience. He punched me as hard as he could. I could dodge it easily. But that would be counterproductive. So, I decided to take the hit. Deflected the impact and threw myself on the floor to turn this into a bigger scene. As soon as that happened. The female customers around us started screaming. S. Senpai? Kawasaki was about to come over, but I stopped her with a gesture and told her that I was fine. The man who punched me realized what happened and his expression turned really ugly. As if he chewed a bitter pill. TCH. You. Then, he immediately stormed out of the restaurant. His friends followed suit not long after. Well, that was that. Problem solved, I guess. I let out a sigh of relief and called out to Takes-san. Are you okay? 
Why yes, she nodded her head, tears welling up in her eyes. Immediately after that, she said, ah rather than me. Are you okay, Shirei san I smiled to reassure her that she didn't need to worry about me. I'm fine. I'm quite strong, you know. That punch didn't even hurt me in the first place. I just made it seem like a big deal to make them leave the place quickly. What do you mean you're fine? Look at this. While I was thinking about such things, Kawasaki grabbed my hand in frustration. When I looked at my hand closely, I could see blood dripping from it. A cut? Did I hit a shard when I did that act? Great. I made a fool out of myself then. Tis just a scratch. Don't worry. However, I still had to treat it quickly or else it'll be a hindrance for my job. W what do you mean? Why you're bleeding a lot. Takes san shouted with a face that looked like she was about to cry soon. It really wasn't a big of a deal though. I wouldn't die from this much. I knew exactly how much blood you'd need to drain to kill someone. Thanks to my previous world experience. Senpai doesn't it hurt? Asked Kawasaki in a worried voice. This much pain is nothing. I can barely even feel it. I'm fine, I'll fix this up real quick. I smiled to reassure her and went toward the office. My words were true. I received a much more grievous wound than this back in my previous life. Compared to those, this kind of wound was nothing. Anyway, it was great that everyone was okay after all that. Finally, my experience from my previous life could come in handy this time. If I could use it to help other people in this world too, I couldn't be happier. Section. After that, the police visited my workplace and interrogated me. Because it turned into a bigger deal than I thought, I had to go home later than usual. Is the bandage really necessary? Of course it is. You bled a lot. I stared helplessly at my bandaged arm as Kawasaki said those words firmly. Just putting some spit on it should cure it in a jiffy. It's because you're saying such stupid things that is why I'm doing this for you. Sigh. It seemed like my standard became too twisted for this world. Ever since I remembered about my previous life, I started thinking with the mindset of someone who lived in the other world more. Back then, bar fights were common occurrences and no one made a big deal out of them. But here, it was the total opposite. I didn't mind about anything that happened, but Takes san was crying while apologizing to me. Senpai, are you used to fighting? What made you think so? I answered her question with a question of my own. How do I say this back then, even in that kind of situation, you didn't seem to panic at all. Well, there was no reason for me to be wary of those kinds of small fries. No matter how weak my current body was. I could beat them all on my own if I wanted to. But, if I actually tried to fight back and win, I would be in the wrong. Thanks to the law of this country, that was why I decided to just let him hit me. Also, if I was actually panicking in that kind of situation, I'd be disqualified as a hero. Do you think I'm a delinquent? I asked while picking up an empty can that was sitting by the side of the road and threw it into a nearby trash can. It made a loud noise as it hit the bottom of the trash can. You don't seem like one are you a rehabilitated delinquent by any chance? Of course not. Besides, I've never got into a fight in my whole life. I shrugged my shoulders as I said that. It was true, I had never got into a fight in this world. Kawasaki didn't seem to be convinced. You're keeping a lot of secrets, huh? Senpai? Actually, I wasn't trying to keep everything a secret. But if I were to tell any sane person in this world about me being a hero of another world and that I was reincarnated here for some reason, nobody would believe me. So, I brushed her off with a mysterious smile. Kawasaki furrowed her brows. This was getting a little hard to handle I should try to change the topic it was at that time, I noticed an old woman carrying a lot of things in the corner of my eyes. Huh? Is that Maru Yama-san? Who? An old lady who lives nearby. She seems to be in trouble I should help her. I ignored Kawasaki, who was about to say something and called out to Maru Yama-san. Hello, I'll help you out, Maru Yama-san. Oh my. Aren't you shirei sans son? Thank you for offering. Then, can you help me bring these back home? It's around the corner. But carrying these really puts a burden on my old back. Of course. You can depend on me. Maru Yama-san smiled as she handed over her shopping bags that she was holding. You're such a good child. 
You took care of my grandchildren the other day too, didn't you? Well, it was fun with them around. You don't need to mind that, Maruyama-san. As a part of volunteer work, I've been helping the elderly around the neighborhood. Maruyama-san was one of the people I helped out. The other day, I played with her grandchildren while their parents were away. Senpai, did you forget that you're injured? Give me one of those. Kawasaki forcefully took a bag from my arm. I guess she had a point. My arm was actually hurting a little. You don't really need to help me. I'm not that heartless. I won't let you do anything on your own, said Kawasaki with UHMPH. Oh my, you're walking with a girl at this hour? Is she your girlfriend? I answered her question with a chuckle. I knew that she was joking. Ha ha, you're such a joker, Maruyama-san. Don't you think so? Kawasaki? Huh? Kawasaki? She was blushing for some reason. Normally, she'd just proceed to go along with the joke and tease me, but not this time, I guess. Maybe, she wasn't used to this kind of joke. I am not his girlfriend, Kawasaki replied with difficulties. Before we knew it, we had arrived at Maruyama-san's place. Thank you. You too. I appreciate it. Maruyama-san thanked us several times and gave us some tea cakes as a thanks. I didn't expect something in return, but it didn't feel bad to receive thanks like this sometimes. That meant my efforts in helping weren't in vain. Do you do this kind of thing often, senpai? I do it whenever I feel like it. So, are you still thinking that I'm a delinquent? I shrugged my shoulders as I said that. Kawasaki sighed in response. Fine. You convinced me. But... You shouldn't do something like this until your injuries are cured, senpai. Seriously, you need to take care of yourself more. Yes, mommy, I get it. I'm your kuhai, not your mommy. You pervert. That's my way of telling you that you're a caring person. Even so, I don't want you to call me that. Seeing her disgusted face made me feel hurt. While we were having this exchange, we arrived at my house. All right, senpai, see you at school. Whenever Kawasaki and I worked on the same day, we would walk home together like this. Her house was ten minutes away from mine. No, wait, I'll walk you home. I thought about it for a while, but I really should do that. Hearing my words, Kawasaki frowned at me. What? What are you saying, suddenly? I mean, because of that shit show, we came back later than usual, right? I don't think it's safe for girls like you to walk by yourself at this hour well. It isn't actually that late, but still. When I thought about it, 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. weren't much different. But still, after that shit show, I couldn't help but worry about her mental state. Don't worry, I won't go through the dark alleys like an idiot. I'll be fine, senpai. I know you're worried about me, but I'm mentally stronger than you think it's a tempting offer, though. Said Kawasaki teasingly with a seductive smile on her face. Seeing that, my heart jumped a little. She was younger than me, but that smile was too much. Not realizing my state of mind, she waved lightly at me and left. For a while after that, I continued watching her back. She was a good kuhai who always understood my intentions. The darkness of the night continued following her back as she slowly disappeared from my sight. Even though it was night, the breeze didn't feel cold. Instead, it felt warm. As I stood up in silence for a bit, various noises started to enter my ears. The voice of the crickets, the neighbor's TV and the sound of Kawasaki's footsteps that slowly fading in the distance. A stray cat approached me and meowed at me. Yet, I felt strangely uneasy. Which, is that you? Behind me, there was a crow perched on a branch of a tree. When I stared at it, it stared back at me without showing any reaction. There was a faint sign of mana from its body. Until a few minutes ago, it masked its presence by blending with Kawasaki's. But now that she had gone, I noticed its presence easily. I don't know since when you've been watching me, but can you please not stalk me with your familiars? That's a crime, you know? The crow then spread its wings and flew away. What the hell was that all about? Why was she stalking me? Anyway, well, I could ask her about it tomorrow. Section. Huh? Did I fall asleep? My consciousness slowly rose. I took a look at the clock on my table. It was midnight already. I tried to stand up with my sluggish body and tried to figure out what happened to me before I fell asleep. It should be around 10 when I got back home from my part-time job. I laid down in my bed to take a rest for a bit, 
but I fell asleep instead. I planned to study when I got home, though sleeping around that hour felt bad to me. I don't know why. It just felt that way. Well, in any case, I didn't feel sleepy anymore. I could start studying right now if I wanted to. I should take a bath first, though. I didn't turn on the AC, so my body was all sweaty. My body still felt sluggish but I could still move around. I walked toward the door to my room and opened it. It felt dizzy when I walked. Did I catch the summer cold? No way, right? Anyway, I disregarded that feeling and walked down the stairs. Mom had come back home already. I could hear her peaceful snore coming from her room. I let out a yawn and opened the door to the shower room. And then, huh? The first thing that came to my sight was a pair of big breasts. Then, my gaze moved down to a pair of slender wet legs. I noticed that there wasn't a single piece of clothing that covered the body parts of the person in front of me. To put it simply, this girl in front of me, Kairish Imahina, was naked. Jigodu. In an instant, all my sleepiness went away. Hina immediately took a towel and hid her chest with it. Her face instantly turned red like a tomato. Then, she muttered in a small voice. Close it. H. Huh? T. The door. Close it. A. R. R. Right. S. Sorry. And so, I closed the door behind me. And now I was trapped inside this room with her. I was panicking, okay? But, I don't think that was a good enough excuse. The silence between us was suffocating. I knew that I fucked up. I could feel cold sweat running through my back. As I was standing there, paralyzed, Ina shouted at me. W. W. What the hell are you doing? Idiot. G go outside first before closing the door. S sorry, T that was my bad. B but, why are you here? Can't you wait until later to ask that question? N no. Of course not. I need to know now. I sharpened my concentration to burn this scene into my eyes. Thanks to that, my concentration was at its peak. If I were to give a comparison, it was at the same level as when I fought the witch in earnest. Wait. For. Later. Hina pushed me with her right hand while her left hand was pressing the towel against her chest tightly. F fine, I get it. Stop pushing me. I opened the door and went outside. Maybe because she was also panicking at that time. She used her left hand to hold on the handle, trying to close the door from her side. Thanks to that, the towel that covered her body gently fell onto the floor once again. Her body was exposed to my eyes in its full glory section. I can't get married anymore. Hina was lying on my bed, hugging my pillow tightly. She was clearly sulking. Really, that was my bad. Please, forgive me. W.Y. Were you staring at me like that? Anyway, why you shoulda looked elsewhere? I should just report you to the police. Please don't, I beg you. I knew that I was in the wrong here, so I discarded my pride and bowed down to her. She was pouting while hugging my pillows. Her eyes were red probably from tears. Currently, she was wearing her middle school's gym uniform. She probably used it as her nightwear nowadays. Once again, I found myself staring at her. She looked sexier than usual in that outfit, probably because she had just come out of the bath. Anyway, what could I do to fix her mood? For the time being, I should change the topic first. Why are you here? Anyway, it's been a while since you visited at all, so I didn't expect you to be here. Our bath's heater broke down, so I was going to go to the public bath. I met your mum on the way there and things happened. Ah, sorry about that. If I could describe her in a single word, my mom was pushy. After finding out that Hina was about to go to the public bath, she most likely forcefully dragged her here. It's all okay. Don't be sorry. When I explained my situation to her, she just told me to borrow your bath instead. It's to save some money, she said. Anyway, your mum hasn't changed, huh? Her eyes livened up as she tried to imitate my mum. Her expression clearly brightened after that. I managed to subside the wrath. Thankfully, even so, no matter how well they got along with each other, it was still inappropriate of her to leave Hina on her own. Like seriously, how could she fall asleep after dragging someone into the house? By the way, it really has been a while since I last came here. Yeah, back when you were younger, she used to come here all the time. We were inseparable back then, like family. As we grew older though, she came here less and we slowly grew apart. 
You stopped coming here after everyone teased you about it back in middle school. I, I can't help it. I, it was embarrassing, okay? By the way, her house was right next to ours. In fact, her room was right next to mine. I could easily go there if I were to use a ladder as a bridge. Sadly, my parents forbid me from doing it because it was dangerous. Aside from your new manga, your room hasn't changed at all, huh? She picked up a manga from the bookshelf then started reading it while laying down in my bed. Using someone else's bed as if it was her own seriously, this girl. The moment I was about to complain, a wave of dizziness struck me. Go do. D don't mind me it's nothing. I shook my head and my consciousness immediately cleared up. Then, I glanced at the clock on my table. By the way, why did you take a bath this late at night? I had dinner with your mom and we talked for a while. Mom was the cause, huh? I slumped my shoulders when I heard it. Seeing my reaction, Hina pouted. It's still your fault that you saw me naked just now, okay? Also, I decided to go in late because I was afraid that you'd wake up and use it. How tired were you anyway? Your mom said that as soon as you got home, you immediately fell asleep. I got a shift tonight, of course I was tired. Don't try to evade the question. She came closer to me. The sweet scent of her shampoo entered my nose. Once again, I realized that my childhood friend, who I had always thought of as a family, had turned into a fine woman. I know you've been doing volunteer work lately. You also helped out both the student council and the sports clubs because they are short-staffed. The final exam is around the corner too seriously, are you okay? When I heard those words. My eyes widened in surprise. I see. She knew about everything. I've never told anyone about it, but she knew about it anyway. She's been watching over me. Huh? Don't worry. I'm fine. Thanks for asking, though. Don't force yourself too hard, okay? I'm not forcing myself. Don't lie to me. How long do you think I've known you? You're feeling unwell, aren't you? I know you're trying to hide it from me. She stared right into my eyes, as expected. She found out, you don't seem to have a fever, she muttered as she placed her hand on my forehead, you might catch it when morning comes, if that happens, take a break from school and your part time job, ok? Yes, mum, both Kawasaki and her eye was surrounded by worry warts, you're such a handful, you know that? My mum said otherwise though, it's because you're always trying to do everything by yourself, Hina sighed, grabbed me and pushed me onto the bed. Go to sleep. Here's your blanket. She wrapped the blanket around my body, grabbed my shoulders and forced me to lie down. Then, she lied down next to me. You'll catch a cold like that? Don't get me wrong. I'm just doing this because I can't trust you if I were to leave you alone. There's nothing more to it. Stop that outdated Sandir act. Hearing my retort, she smiled mischievously and continued. I am just doing this because I'm too lazy to go home. Understandable. Well anyway, I should go home now. You're going home? I mean, of course, you are yes. You should go home quickly. Yes. I mean, if I were to sleep with someone who saw my naked body, who knows what would happen to me, right? Well, just kidding. We used to sleep together when we were little. But we were high school students now. So of course we wouldn't be doing that. She was right, if we were to do that. Who knows what would happen. All right. I'm going home. She got up from the bed while yawning. Just before she left the room, she turned around and looked at me. Rest properly, okay? She said it in a serious tone. Well, even if she didn't tell me that, I was planning to do it anyway. After she left my room, my consciousness slowly faded away. Chapter 3, Artificial Hero, Hero Creation Project. It was a large-scale project led by the Sage. Alicia Edwards. The plan was to produce a hero capable of killing the Witch of Calamity and send them out to the world as an agent of God. In truth, it was just the church's attempt to gain more power by gaining the achievement of killing the witch. But, the plan ran into various difficulties. To begin with, gathering enough children that had talent for exorcism was difficult. Although they managed to gather a hundred children from all over the continent, not many of them managed to survive. Some of them had their bodies broken down from the physical enhancements used for the project. 
Some of them had their spirits crushed because they couldn't endure the side effects of the drugs used for the project. Some of them were ruthlessly killed by the demons during their training. Some of them were afflicted with mental traumas they couldn't recover from. And so, 99 of the children became useless and Sage Alicia almost gave up on the project. But one particular boy persisted through. He managed to grow rapidly and eventually managed to achieve the goal the Sage had set. As the boy was originally an uncultured young orphan, Sage Alicia taught the boy everything he needed to know to be a man worthy of being God's chosen hero. She decreed to him, vanquish evil, save others, and so, God brought salvation to the world where people mourned because of the witch. The church announced that he had chosen a hero to drive the evil witch away and save the world, and the name of said hero was Grey Handlet, he was the church's masterpiece an existence that was created only to kill the witch section. You're such a sinful man, aren't you? Shinji, who was lying his cheek on the table in front of me, said that in disgust. I don't want you, of all people, to tell me that. I had just finished recounting what happened with Hina last night. Oi, normal childhood friends wouldn't lay down in the same bed, under the same blanket, when they became high school students, you know. This was the case of a pot calling the kettle black. You misunderstood something. Yes, we laid down under the same blanket, but she left before we did anything else. Elaborate on the anything else part. Look, we're like family, we won't be doing what you're thinking about. That's what you think, she might think otherwise. Of course not. Or else, why would she even get into the blanket in the first place? I didn't need to prove anything to him. Yes, sometimes, I was conscious of Hina as a girl, but at the end of the day, she was like a sibling to me and I believed that she also thought the same as me. This guy. For some reason, Shinji looked at me with a disgusted look. I want to beat the crap out of you so badly, right now. What? Why? Not only you're playing with Hina's heart, you're playing with Sheena May Ai's heart too. What the hell are you on about? I did none of that. Why are all the beautiful girls flocking around you? This isn't fair. I don't want to hear that from you. He shrugged his soldiers. Let me set this straight. I'm more popular than you and I look better than you. Oh, shut the fuck up. However, why are all the prettiest looking girls flocking around you? I furrowed my brows. What the hell was this guy even talking about? I'll spell it out for you. In our class, Sheena May I, Kairishima Hina, and Shinji Yuka, then there's that first year, your co-worker, Kawasaki Saya. They're all top tier beauties and I wouldn't doubt it if someone were to tell me that they're actually idols. How the hell do you even know about my co-worker? That was just creepy. Well then again, Kawasaki went to this school too, so I guess it wouldn't be strange for him to know her. Well, let's just say that my information network is wide. He waved his hand, told me that he wanted to get some drinks and went outside. I let him go without saying anything. It was currently lunch break and I had already finished my lunch, but there was still time to spare. Since that was the case, should I just play a game? I took out my phone and opened a certain rebounds per game game. The game felt strangely realistic to me because it was similar to my previous life. Thanks to my memories, I had a way to enjoy the game on my own despite the differences in setting compared to my previous life. By the way, the school forbade us to bring our phones, but they didn't actually enforce it strictly. Of course, if you were to use it during the classes, they would confiscate it. But if you were to use it during the lunch break like this, no one would reprimand you for it. In fact, some of my classmates were watching something on their phones for a while now. That was why I decided to play a game today but, sadly, I couldn't concentrate on playing because of a certain someone. I see. You like novels, huh? I read some famous ones sometimes too. Why yes I could read novels on my own, so. The witch was talking with Hina and I was listening silently to their conversation. He especially light novels I love them they are, sorry. Do you know what a light novel is? Why you probably don't know, right? I it's a novel with anime s cart style on it. And no, that's not it h how should I describe it you um, sorry. I rambled on. The witch started rambling on her own, but in the middle, she started stuttering and her voice faded little by little. Hina looked at her with a wry smile and said, 
You can take your time if it's that difficult to explain. The witch only laughed shyly in response. You are. I had to remind myself that this girl was the witch of calamity. After that, the conversation, though I didn't know if I could call it as one, continued. Ina managed to skillfully handle the witch's poor communication skill, as expected of her. If it was any other person, they left her the moment she started her light speed otaku speech. I asked Hina to take care of the witch yesterday and she said that she was planning to do it anyway, but in the end, no matter how much Hina tried to accommodate her, the situation won't improve if her communication skill doesn't improve anytime soon. This situation was troubling. I hope that the witch would be able to find someone she could trust in this life. It would be sad if she were to live under the assumption that everyone in this world was her enemy like she did in the past section. As I was having difficulties keeping myself awake in classes, everything had ended for the day before I knew it. Because I didn't catch a cold, I decided to come to school, but my condition still wasn't great, though. I still could do my part-time job, no problem. Hina would probably scold me again, but it wasn't like I'm torturing myself or anything so it shouldn't be a problem. Unlike my previous life, my current body was more fragile, but I only needed to adjust to it. That aside, oi, witch, what the hell were you up to yesterday? When I inquired her about the familiar, the witch, who had her head propped up on the table, slowly raised her head. What? Are you mad that I found out you've been flirting around with a first year? Who's flirting? You know that's not what I'm talking about. Why were you stalking me? It's my duty as your nemesis to stalk you to learn of your weaknesses, can you stop doing that, please? Ignoring my complaint, the witch yawned. Wait, were you sleeping, girl? You're just transferred in, listen to the class properly. Unlike you, I'm smart. Even if I slack off a little, I won't get into any trouble. The witch rubbed her forehead and asked me, so, why are you bugging me? Is it about the curse again? I told you to do it once every three days, right? I don't mind if we're doing it every day. No can do. I know that it takes a lot to even attempt to dispel that kind of curse from my body. If I don't give you time to rest, you'll break down. I mean, yesterday took a toll on you, didn't it? She was right. My body still felt uncomfortable. Like she said, I became like this because I was treating her curse yesterday. But, this much fatigue was nothing. It wouldn't hinder my daily life. Besides, I was really worried about her condition. The curse seemed to erode more part of her soul compared to back in our previous life. Was it really okay for us to take our time like this? Is everything going to be alright? What do you mean? If I keep treating you, will you eventually get better? She responded to my question with silence. I couldn't see her expression from where I stood because she was looking downwards. After a while, she asked with an emotionless voice. What if I say no? The witch gradually raised her face. The face that was staring at me looked like she was about to break down. What are you going to do if I tell you that what you're doing is nothing more than first aid? If that's the case, then I'll find a way to help you for real this time. What if I tell you that a way to help me exists and it requires you to sacrifice your lifespan? Just that? Well, I don't like the idea. But if that's what it takes to save the world, yeah sure, I'll do it. I thought it'd be something big, but if it's just that how are you going to do it, though? What kind of magic will you use? She didn't answer me for some reason. Which idiot? That was a rhetorical question. Things aren't that simple. Is that so? Oh well, forget about it, get away from me quickly. We'll do the treatment again the day after tomorrow, so don't talk to me until then. I don't want to see your face every day. It's an eyesore. Don't bring my face into this. She snorted and left. For some reason, she seemed to be in a bad mood. Then again, that was her default state. Guess I'll go home. I walked out of the classroom and went to the parking lot. Like yesterday, it was still boiling hot outside. The intense sunlight was burning my skin. I tried to fan myself with my hand, but it did nothing to reduce the heat. Are you going to work again today? When I was on my way, Hina called me out from behind. H Hina? I only have a four hour shift today, so I'll be fine. She had already changed into her club uniform. Her smooth, juicy thighs were laid bare for me to see. Why are you freaking out? She furrowed her brows in suspicion. Because I was scared of her anger, 
I was flustered when she called out to me and that made my voice crack when I answered her question. Whatever. So you didn't take a day off? I mean, if I were to suddenly do that, it'll trouble the manager. I didn't want to increase the manager's worries. After Kawasaki decided to take a break, we became more short-staffed than we already were. Please don't overdo it. I know. Don't worry. I won't do something that I'm unable to do. I didn't really understand what Hino was trying to say to me, but I knew that she was worried about me. I mean, I've never pushed myself too hard, I knew my own limit. The current me was merely an ordinary high school boy, there was a lot I couldn't do, so I only did what I could do. Don't worry too much about me, okay? I stroked her head. For some reason, she went quiet after that. Come to think of it. When was the last time I patted her head? W well, I won't worry too much about you. You're uselessly strong. She averted her gaze away with the HMPH. What do you mean by uselessly strong? Are you mocking me? I meant what I meant. All those strengths and you didn't even join any clubs. You're just a lump of muscle now, you know that? Oh shut it. Oi, don't punch me in the stomach. Whoa, your abs are as amazing as always. I tried to get her away from my stomach. Isn't it about time for your club activities to start? Why are you dawdling here? Ah, right. Oh crap. I'm going to be late. Hina left the parking lot in a hurry. She was a rowdy girl as always. Thanks to her, my days didn't feel boring. Then, I felt a presence behind me, so I turned around to face them. There was a black-haired girl hiding behind a tree. Was she trying to hide or something? What the hell was she doing? Anyway, whatever. If she was actually trying to hide, I guess I should just let her be. I got on my bike and started pedaling leisurely. Along the way, I passed through the residential area, wide paddy fields, various roadways and a park filled with children energetically playing around. It took five minutes for me to get to where I was from school. At that moment, I stopped my bike, and heard the sound of a bike falling from behind me. When I turned around. I could see a black-haired girl trying to hide her face behind a pole. There was an upside-down bike near her feet. Oi, are you okay? I didn't expect something like this would happen. I ran to the witch's side in a hurry. It seemed like she had been following me from school. Did she seriously think that I wouldn't notice her? What are you doing? Even she hid her face with her hands. I, you, no not go. Ah, uh, no. I sighed at the witch who muttered such dumb things with a fake voice. Look, even if it isn't you, I'll still help anyone who fells off a bike like this. They could be injured and all. Come on, let me take a look at you. Reluctantly, she revealed her pouting face to me. What? You want to say something to me? I fixed the witch's fallen bike's position and said, Of course, you're stalking aside. There's no way I won't have something to say to you after this kind of thing happened. The witch suddenly crouched down, trying to hide her bleeding knee. I knew it. You hurt yourself. This is nothing. Lucky for you. The park is nearby. We can wash it off there. I told you. This is nothing. This is not nothing. This is not our previous life. Don't make light of small wounds like this. She could fix it with healing magic back then, but that simply wasn't the case anymore. I carried the bicycle to the park with the witch following me behind. She was unusually docile this time, probably because she was embarrassed since she hurt herself after failing an attempt to tail me. In any case, we couldn't leave her wound like that, so I helped her to wash the soil off it. Does it hurt? I don't feel a thing. Her expression didn't change, so I'd assume that her words were true. All right. It's clean. Let me put some disinfectant on it. Why are you carrying that around? There's no harm in carrying it around. I know. But why? Normal people wouldn't do that. Is that so? Well, whatever. A useful thing is useful. You never change. Hero. Could you stop calling me that? I don't want people to treat me like a chunabi. Maybe I should stop calling her witch from now on too. Does it matter? It's just the two of us here. The witch let out a cough. Besides, I don't want to call you by name. I refuse it with every fiber of my being. Is that so? Well, I understood her feelings. We were enemies after all. It wasn't like us to be overly familiar with each other. After all, we weren't in that kind of relationship. Even though our status is different now, our relationship stays the same. The witch continued. Also, 
you're not a hero anymore, you're just a normal high school student, there's no reason for you to help other people anymore, are you still disillusioned from the fact that you used to be a hero in your past life, is that why you're doing all this, what are you talking about, I laughed at her words, this is just a small thing, not really something I'd consider as helping, besides, giving first aid to someone who needs it is a normal thing to do, everyone in this country does it, this is the best thing I can do considering the circumstances too, the best thing you can do, huh, what's with your tone, the witch stared right into my eyes, her tone sounded like she saw right through me and that felt unpleasant, before I could ask her what was on her mind, she opened her mouth, I knew it, you're still thinking that you have to help other people even when you're reincarnated in another world, even though you don't have your power anymore, what, I tried to refute her words, but I couldn't manage to say anything else, maybe her words were true all this time, I haven't been thinking about it much, I wanted to help people because that was the right thing to do, back in that world and in this world, that was always the case for me, is there a problem with that? was it wrong for me to do the right thing, I furrowed my brows as I asked her that, the witch just looked at me with a gaze that looked as if she was pitying me, your mind is still trapped in that world, and, like in that world, the word hero is engraved to your soul like a curse, that's why you have that crazy obsession to help other people around you don't you realize that you're an anomaly to people in this world? crazy obsession, you're exaggerating, look at yourself and say that again, only lunatics would help other people without minding their own condition, yes, there are kind people who'd help other people around them too, but they wouldn't do more than necessary, they'd only do it to the best of their abilities, yes, to the best of their abilities, what are you trying to say, don't you realize that your standard is distorted, I thought that being reincarnated in another world would fix it, but it seems like you're a lost cause, I couldn't understand what she was talking about and what was the reason why she said all this to me, I was raised to live as a hero, so it couldn't be helped that my standard would be different from normal people's standard, after all, I was born to be different from normal people, that was all there to it, nothing worth discussing at all, you're right, helping people is the right thing to do, but the thing is, you don't have to do it, that's common sense, that's what normal people believe only you would think that helping people is something that someone must do I'll ask you once again, you realize that you aren't a hero anymore, right, the witch lowered her gaze and stared at my leg, yesterday, when you helped that girl, you hurted your leg, didn't you, what about it, I replied as I flopped my leg slightly, I could still feel the pain, normal people wouldn't think of doing something as reckless as you, but you did that without hesitation, I'm sure that you'll still do it even if you know that you're going to suffer more injuries than a mere sprained ankle, I have a good reason to do it, if she were to actually fall, her head would bump into a table, since I could prevent it, I did it, compared to someone's life, a sprained ankle was nothing, even a child knew that, I guess you're right, as if she could read my thoughts, the witch continued, you made the right decision at that time, but I'm sure that you'll do the same even if you know that she'll only get a few scratches, stop talking as if you know me that well, oh, I know, how many times did you think we tried to kill each other in that world, the witch smiled widely, you will still do it and will continue to do the same thing even if you have to pay with your life as the price, just like back then, when I heard the witch's words, it felt like she was foreseeing something that would definitely happen in the future, words were the most basic form of curse, even without the existence of witchcraft, words had been used by humans to curse one another, are you trying to curse me with those words, I took a jab at her, trying to brush it off lightly, no, in fact, I don't need to, you've been cursed since a long time ago, but the witch took my words seriously, vanquish evil, help others, those words were what started everything in my life, I guess her words were true, I was cursed since a long time ago, if that was the case, heroes were a cursed existence to begin with, I've always tried to live up to people's expectations, I've always behaved according to sage Alicia's will, if it's the hero, he'll definitely save us, our hero, grace armor, the gods chosen, will be able to drive evil away from our lands, he's the hero, 
He'll never abandon us. Endure. Stay strong. Grey will definitely come to our aid. I've always faithfully acted according to the role that was assigned to me. Sorry, I kept you waiting. It's all right now. I'm here to help. No need to cry. I'm here to protect you. Do not worry, I'll be back. I'll do my best to protect your smile. Even so, I had no regrets because it was the right thing to do. It was satisfying to see the smile of the people that I saved. Of course, I was unable to live like a normal person as the price. Nevertheless, I was born with this power to devote myself to the people. It was my fate to be on the battlefield. It was inevitable that my body would be smeared with mud, sweat and blood. And that was why. When I was reborn into this world I had lost the reason for my existence as I was no longer the hero, and at the same time, I lost my sense of purpose. Even so, I voiced my thoughts. What's wrong with wanting to help others? I took a step forward and stared intently at the witch's eyes. So what if I want to help people? Is it wrong? When I asked that, the witch crumpled her face, as if she was hurting. You understood nothing. Did you? The witch turned her gaze down as she muttered that. The look in her eyes annoyed me. It was as if she could understand everything. I'm going to ask you one more time, witch. It wasn't like I didn't understand what she was trying to say. I knew that there were truths in her words. But I didn't know the intent behind her words. So, I spread my hands open and asked her once again. Is there something wrong with what I'm trying to do? Vanquish evil save others, fight for justice, it wasn't as easy as it sounded, there were many times when I had tried my best but, ultimately, I failed more than once, I sacrificed others for the greater good, you could call me a hypocrite, arrogant, liar and self-righteous person, I wouldn't deny it, deciding other people's fate on my own, acting like I was a god, I knew that the burden was heavy for me to carry, in the first place, the role of a hero was too heavy of a burden for a single person to carry. But, I knew that my actions had saved countless people's lives. I've protected those people's smiles and saved them from tragedies. This unworthy back of mine carried the will of the people of that world. The unworthy back of none other than me. The hero, Grey Handlet. I wouldn't reject the result of my own actions. Even if it was the result of a curse. With the way I am now, I can't do much. Still. I want to help others to the best of my abilities. Is that wrong? Is that the wrong thing to do? Yes, you're wrong. On what ground? Hero no, Grey in your previous life. Have you ever smiled? I was at a loss for a moment. I couldn't remember any instance when I was smiling back in my previous life. At least, not at the top of my head. What are you? Of course I did. Do you realize that now you're smiling a lot more than back then? The witch probably still feeling hurt because of her wounds, sat down on the bench. I was really surprised when I saw you smiling. I was glad for you. Finally, you could smile without a care in the world, but it was a year ago. Wasn't it? The time when your memories awakened ever since then. You have become more like you were in your previous life. The witch continued to speak in monotone. I hate it. I can't stand seeing you becoming like that. What do you care? It has nothing to do with you. It's funny to hear those words coming from your mouth, exclamation mark. Her words were sharp, as if she was trying to pierce my heart with it. Try to think deeply about the words you said just now. Warm breeze brushed against my cheeks. Before I realized, sweats had started flowing from my cheeks and fell into the ground. You've been reincarnated, but you're still bound by a curse. You know you don't need to help other people anymore, right? Live your own life. Seek your own happiness. Why can't you do that instead? I felt my chest tightening. Once again, I realized that the person in front of me was the Witch of Calamity. My own happiness? What the hell was she on about? I was happy enough. I had the power to help people and they believed in me. People around me and they said that they loved me. If that wasn't happiness, then what was? You tried to save everyone but yourself. You called yourself a hero. You tried to bring happiness to others, but you can't even bring it to yourself that's the thing I hate the most about you that's the reason why I hate you. The witch ended her words just like that. As she had no intention of continuing this talk, she walked away. But, what the hell, those were the only words I could say. I knew that she was kind, I knew that she said those words sincerely to help me. 
but that didn't mean I could accept her words just like that. What? Do you have something to say? I, the moment I took another step toward her, my phone rang. I didn't have to check to know why it was ringing. It was about time for my shift to start. I spent too much time talking to her. I couldn't ignore this as I'd be late. It's goodbye then. Hero, see you tomorrow. The witch walked away without saying another word. It really seemed that she had no intention to talk with me anymore. Her gait was still unsteady because of her injured leg. Your bike is still here, you know? This girl was as hopeless as always. I ignored her and answered the phone. As expected, it was from the manager. Hello? Yes, I'm sorry, I had a business to take care of. Yes, I'll be there quickly. As I was apologizing like that, the witch came back, took her bike away and left. I could see her face was red up to her ears. After she left, only the sound of cicadas could be heard in the park section. The witch once said to me that the most powerful curse wasn't witchcraft. It required no chant, mana nor preparation. The effect of the curse wasn't visible to the senses, one wouldn't feel pain or discomfort because of it. Yet, it ate away the mind of the one who was afflicted with it. And the worst of it all, said person wouldn't be aware of its existence. You are the same as me, don't you know that? Probably, those words she said to me were her true feelings. She just wanted me to be happy, probably. She was concerned about me, that was why she said all that to me. Even so, even if her words were true, that my way of life was wrong, as long as she still did the same thing as me. I had no intention of admitting it, jingles, my thoughts were broken by the sound of the bell, signaling someone's arrival to the restaurant, welcome, huh? I almost dropped the cup I was holding when I saw the person in front of me, what's wrong? You look off today, senpai, it was Kawasaki, she placed her hands on her hips and started to scold me, am I bad, I was just distracted because I had a lot to think about. I knew it. You're overdoing yourself. If you're not feeling well, take a leave. But, if I do that, we'll be even more short-staffed than we already are. Then, I realized something. Wait. I thought you won't have any shifts until after the exam? She told me yesterday that it would be her last day. Then, she pouted her lips and muttered shyly, the manager is trying to get more senior employees to work on more shifts and since I'm one of them well. I can't say no, even though it's troublesome. Kawasaki shrugged her shoulders. I see, thank you. It seemed like she was worried about me. Well, I guess it was natural. I wasn't a hero anymore. No one expected me to do everything. People wouldn't put their complete faith in me without any reason anymore. They would probably treat my attempt to help them as unnecessary. I'm just trying to make it harder for you to make money, senpai. Don't thank me for that. All right, I'll hold a grudge on you for it, then. Okay, that's too far. At least, be a little grateful. I tapped my cheeks a little with both hands. I need to get myself together. At least, I shouldn't make her worry about me. I'm just a little sleepy. Don't worry, Kawasaki. I shouldn't let my personal problems get in the way of work. Since they paid me for this, it was my responsibility to do my job properly. If anything, I should do my best for the money. To do that, I need to concentrate. I took a deep breath and analyzed my physical condition. I felt a little tired, but this much should be nothing to me. My current body was far less capable compared to my previous one, but I could do nothing but deal with it. I had been working out to hone my body and the effect of all those efforts had begun to appear. I managed to correct the error in my body, little by little. Even so, I knew that I could never become like I was back in the day. You're no longer a hero. The witch's words flashed through my mind. It repeated in my mind over and over like a curse. I'm aware of that, more than anyone. My hand could only reach those within the reach of it. In the first place, no one would even try to reach their hands out to me. That was my current reality and I accepted it. But still the height where I stood the reach of these arms of mine during that time compared to back then, my current self seemed pathetic. That was why, I kept chasing after the illusion that was my former self, even though no one asked for my help. Even though this was a world that didn't need my help. Darn it focus. Stop thinking. I shook off the vision of the witch in my mind and tried to concentrate on my job section. Even after I was done with work and the darkness of the night became deeper. 
The insects still buzzed energetically. There was barely any other sound in the neighborhood. I looked outside the window. I could see the surrounding houses well lit, showing that there were people living in those houses. Ina's room next door was also lit. Was she still studying? The coffee in my hand tasted too sweet for my taste. It seemed like I put too much sugar in it. Tonight was cool for a summer night and I could go to sleep without turning the AC on if I wanted to. Right. I noticed the textbooks and notebooks spread out throughout my desk. I had to study for the exam. Honestly, I didn't need to worry about getting red marks, but I felt a little worried about the witch who had just transferred in. I knew that she was a non-air student. But if the scope of the exam was different compared to her previous school, she would be bound to have a hard time. I should summarize the main points and give it to her later. I wasn't a great student, but anyone could study if they put their mind into it. After stretching my body, I sat down on the chair and started studying for the first subject, math. Suddenly, my hand stopped. Were the witch's words true? Was my current action just something that was born from a curse all this time? Was it true that I did nothing but chase after the shadow of my former self? I thought that I had been following my own will. If I were to think about it calmly, there was no reason whatsoever for me to help her as she was my nemesis. If this action was the result of a curse then, where did my will, my dream and my happiness go? It was exactly like what the witch said to me then. Despite the church's announcement permeating through the entire continent, Everyone was skeptical about it. No one believed that the hero would ever be able to defeat the witch. And so, my first mission was to gain the trust of the people. I responded to people's calls for help and defeated the various demons that swarmed around the continent. I did the same thing over and over again to the point that people recognized me as a real hero. It was only later that I found out that this was a part of my training to fight against the witch. Golden hair clear blue sky and a pure white sword everything matches the rumors are you the hero who was chosen to defeat me or something like that? I didn't expect to meet the witch in that kind of situation. Underneath the silver hair, there were a pair of bewitching red eyes and a face so beautiful that it could make anyone have their heads fall over heels. Below that, were a well-proportioned body and a pair of beautiful thighs peeking over from her damaged clothes. Her features matched the description of the evil witch from the rumors. Are you the witch of calamity, Ceres Flores? How rude of you, answering my question with another one. Why don't you answer my question first before asking? You're right. Yes, I am the chosen hero, Grey Handlet. I see. Then, I'll introduce myself. The strongest witch and magic user, the person who plunged the world into a disaster. The one who laughs at the pitiful scream of the weak. The one and only, Ceres Flores, with a confident tone and a fearless smile, the witch introduced herself. I'm not trying to badmouth you, just trying to tell you a fact. No human would be able to beat me, hero or not. It doesn't matter. I've beaten thousands of people like you and I doubt that your fate will end up differently from them. That's why, get out of my sight. As long as you aren't foolish enough to take up your sword against me, I'll show you mercy. The witch let out a killing intent as she declared that, unknowingly, chill ran down my spine as I swallowed my saliva. She was strong, really strong. Only when I came face to face with her like this did I understand. This woman was far stronger than anything I faced before. She was way stronger than me, who was dubbed as the strongest person in the world by Sage Alicia. But, there was something that bothered my mind for a while now. Well, I won't know that unless I try it. But first, I have a question for you. The witch who had been watching me with crossed arms, tilted her head. You were the one who created the demons, weren't you? So, why did you kill the being that you created? The reason why I came to this place was to defeat a powerful demon that had been terrorizing this area. But, in front of the cave where the demon lived, I found the witch in the middle of a battle against said demon. I didn't understand what was going on, so I stayed to observe how the battle went. In a short time, she managed to kill the demon by herself, albeit she was a little injured. The demon was supposed to be so strong that no one in the area could manage to defeat it yet, she defeated it in mere minutes. While there was nothing strange about that, as the witch surely had enough power to do that, why would she do that in the first place? 
it didn't make any sense to me. Hearing my question, the witch furrowed her brows. My, they're my creations. I can do anything I want with them. Something strange was going on. She was different from the rumors. Well, whatever. I could find out about it after I took her into custody. I guess that's true. All right, prepare yourself. I drew my sword. A silver light appeared on the surface of the sword when I infused my exorcism into it. What a reckless man. Even though I went as far as to warn you. The witch sighed and summoned her staff. It was a coincidence that I met her here, but it was an amazing coincidence as it was the perfect opportunity to defeat her. After all, her wounds from the last battle hadn't healed completely yet. As a hero who carried the hope of the people, the sooner I got to defeat the witch the better. Here I come, witch, come forward, hero. The battle on that day, ended in my complete defeat section. Another dream. Huh? I muttered as I woke up from my sleep before clicking my tongue in annoyance. No matter how many times I've dreamt about the time when I got beaten up by the witch, it always made me feel sick. The hands of the clock on my desk pointed to 6.40. It was too early to get up but too late to go back to sleep, so I dragged my body off my bed. I picked up my phone on the desk and unplugged the charger. Then, I noticed that there was an unread Ryan message. It was from Shinjiuka. I went down to the living room while reading the message. Wanna do a study group with everyone? Why now? I didn't mind. But why did she ask about it now? She shoulda asked about it at school later. R. Right. Today is Saturday. Realizing that, I went back to sleep. Section. Currently, I was in front of the family restaurant where I was working at. I entered the restaurant bowed to the senpai who was on shift and noticed Yuka waving at me. Yo, you're late, you know? There was a soft smile on her pretty face. It was currently 1.30 p.m., 30 minutes late from the promised time, which was 1 p.m., my bad. I overslept. Shinji, who was sitting next to Yuka, shrugged his shoulders exaggeratedly. Oi, oi, get a hold of yourself. The exam starts this Monday. You know, huh? Really? It's that close. At least remember the date of your own exam, idiot. Ina muttered exasperatedly at my reaction. I mean, I remember it. It just slipped my mind. By the way, are you ready for it? I'm not saying something like that so proudly. What the hell is wrong with you? Also, what are you doing? Shinji was playing a game on his phone while munching some fries. Meanwhile, the rest of the group were studying. Dumbass. I'm taking a break here. Studying all the time is tiring. You had rested long enough already, Shinji. Your resting time is longer than your studying time, you know? That's because I don't need that much time to study. I just need to study the important bits. And who was the one who summarized those important bits for you? I can't thank you enough. Yuka-sama please accept my gratitude. With that, Shinji suddenly bowed down to Yuka. There was an empty seat next to Hina, so I sat there. The four of us here gathered to study together. Anyway, this is unusual. Why are we holding a study group? Anyway, I asked Yuka. I thought that Yuka was smart enough that she didn't need to study with other people. Well, doing it once in a while isn't bad. Besides, it isn't like I understand everything that I have to study. And that's why this Hina is here. Well, go do and I won't be much help. That's for sure. I didn't know why Shenji always had that arrogant tone. Well, whatever. Well, there are other reasons too. Like what? Secret, said Yuka while smiling. By the way, I'm tired of studying. Can I go home? Shenji blurted out. He looked completely unmotivated. Jeez, Shinji. Yuka lightly hit him in the head. Cut that out. You won't get good grades if you keep this up. I mean... It's a miracle that I got into this school in the first place. That's why you got to study harder. You barely even studied and yet you got into this school anyway. That meant you aren't bad. I've summarized everything, so you just need to study this. Math still looks like moon runes to me. Shinji tried desperately not to face Yuka's gaze as she was gently telling him off. Never change. You two. Those two were always on good terms. I knew that both of them were friends since middle school, but they were so close to each other to the point that I felt suspicious about their relationship. 
Shinji tried to flirt with a lot of girls, but the only girl he actually tried to befriend was Yuka. What are you trying to say? Your grade is as bad as mine. Shinji grunted as he said that. It seemed like he misunderstood my words. I've never got a red mark, though. Huh? Really? That's news to me. Yuka said in surprise. Hina joined in and said, I don't know how he did it, but he always managed to barely pass the red marks somehow. That's amazing in a sense. Don't praise me too much. You too. I'm embarrassed. You know it isn't praise. Hina retorted sharply. It was true though. I've never got a single red mark in my life. Anyway, Shinji, how was your midterm? When I asked, Shinji laughed confidently. Hey I'll exercise my rights to stay silent. He barely passed everything except for math. He got a red mark for math. I mean, I hate listening to Mora Kami's class. Stop making excuses, just do it. It's not that hard. Ugh, at this rate, you're going to be dragged by Mora Kami Sensei to his supplementary class, you know? When Yuka said that. Shinji made a horrified look on his face. If you don't want that, then study properly. Got it. Somehow, it feels like she's his owner or something. I smiled at the sight Riley. Hearing that, Yuka puffed her cheeks in frustration. I don't want to be this guy's owner. His mom then. That's even worse. I don't want a womanizer as a son. Her response was unusually fierce. She acted like this. But whenever she was with Hina by themselves, all she talked about was Shinji. Is that so? My bad then. I should leave those two alone. I approached Hina and started studying together with her. After ordering a drink and a light snack, I asked Hina. So... How are you faring? Good, I guess. I should be able to get 80 in everything at least. Same as usual then. Her hands didn't stop moving as she answered that question. She was solving the math problems at an absurd speed. No wonder her grades were so high. This girl always occupied the second or third place of our grade. That was only because the first place was reserved to Yuka, though. What about you? Math is too hard for me. I know right? It's harder than back in the first year. While we were chatting like that, the waiter, one of my senpai, brought me my order. We exchanged a few words of greeting before he continued with his work. Then suddenly, Ina muttered something. Ah, right. This is where you're working at. Huh? Did you really just come to this place without realizing it? When I asked her that, Yuka joined in. While we're at it, since you're our friends and all, can we get a discount? No, a eh? Yuka pouted after hearing my answer. This restaurant's location was right in front of the station. It was close to school and the price was reasonable, so it wouldn't be strange for students like us to gather here. The place was spacious too, so other people wouldn't be bothered even if we were to make some noise here. In fact, there were two other groups studying here too. Some people in those groups were my acquaintances. R, she's here. Hina who had been looking at her phone, suddenly shouted. She turned her gaze toward the entrance and waved her hand energetically. I had a bad feeling. Well, I knew that it would come to this. After all, why else would Yuka invite us to study together? Here, may I chan? Why yes. The witch appeared in front of us, carrying a backpack with her. She was wearing a white blouse and a black skirt. It was simple, but it suited her well. It was frustrating for me to say this. But she looked really cute. I wouldn't say it to her face though. Hiya. May I chan? Let's study hard together. Yo, she in a san. That outfit suits you well. You look cute. A eh? T thank you very much. Don't say anything unnecessary, Shinji. Ah. Uh, would you like to sit next to me? Why yes. You um. Yuka san. Ha ha. Just Yuka is fine. Well. If you're comfortable calling me that. It's fine. The way they referred to each other seemed to have changed. I suspected that they became closer, but despite that, the witch was still the witch. She looked very nervous in the beginning, but when she noticed me, she furrowed her brows. You want to say something to me? No, didn't you hear about me being here? The witch took her seat. Yuka smiled at her. Since you're a new student, there might be a lot of things you don't understand or the exam scope is different from your previous school. That's why I invited you here, she Ina san You can ask Hino if you have any questions. I don't mind, but isn't this the part where you tell her to rely on you instead? I mean, you're a better teacher than me, 
Hina. But your grade is higher than mine. The witch flustered, probably because she was left off the conversation. Then, Hina tried to bring her into the conversation again. Um, anyway, may I Chan? Let's review the exam scope first. I made a summary of it. You can check mine. T thank you very much. The witch bowed her head. After that, she took her seat and the study group finally started in earnest. At first, everyone was chatting about random things but, as time went by, those conversations died down as everyone became more focused on their studies. Though, it wasn't like we didn't talk at all. It was just, all of our conversations were just us teaching each other. Yuka was taking care of Shinji, meanwhile Hina and I helped the witch out. Phew. I'm going to get myself a drink. Hina let out a deep breath, as she lightly shook her empty glass. R, let me get it for you, I want to get some too, said the witch as she raised her hand. Really? Then, can you get me melon soda? Oh, okay. Um, what about the others? Shinji and Yuka were too occupied with their things, so they didn't answer her question, or probably they just didn't hear her because her voice was too low. The witch's gaze turned toward me for a moment but she immediately turned it away again. Maybe she realized that she didn't need to do that much for me. I stopped studying and looked at her. She went to the refill area with two glasses in her hands, and when she got there, she stared at the machine listlessly. She didn't know how to use it. Of course, if this was an anime, there would be a question mark floating around her head at this moment. Well, to be fair, she wasn't a commoner like us, so she'd probably never used the machine in her entire life. I sighed and headed toward her side. W what? I ignored the glare of the embarrassed witch and got myself a drink. Since I drank melon soda just now, I decided to get oolong tea instead. The witch stared at me and snorted after realizing what I was doing. Then, she suddenly furrowed her brows, as if she was in pain. Oi, witch. What's wrong? Did you catch a cold? I could tell that her center of gravity felt off. Even though her expression was the same as usual, her body seemed unsteady. Of course not. I wouldn't be here if that's the case. I don't want to trouble the others. I guess so. Well, if there's nothing wrong with you, it's all good then. The witch boldly operated the machine and tried to get melon soda. When the drink came out of the machine, her body trembled for some reason. What's wrong? I am not surprised or anything. I didn't ask if you were surprised or not. I decided to leave her alone and got back to my seat first. The witch did the same after she got her own drink. I observed the witch when she was walking toward us. She walked slowly and carefully, as if she was afraid to drop the drinks. While that wasn't a problem, she seemed to be putting all her concentration on keeping her body steady. Thank you. When she came back, Hina thanked her for the melon soda. The witch just exhaled lightly in response. After that, she began to study with Hina again. From time to time, she would frown and rub her forehead with her hand. No matter how I see it, she didn't seem to be okay at all. I stopped writing. She Hina. Do you have a moment? I stood up as I asked her that question. I asked that, but in truth, I didn't know what I wanted to talk about with her. There were simply too many things to talk about. Go do, what's wrong? Hina and the others looked at me strangely as I was the only one who was standing. The witch seemed to understand my intention when our gazes met. When I turned around and left, she followed behind me. You um, we have something to talk about. S so we're going outside for a bit. The witch smiled as she explained the situation to the others. For some reason, I didn't prepare an excuse to tell the others. I just realized that I had been distracted for a while now. Ah. Uh. I see. I had been feeling irritated toward the witch. My thoughts drifted to the past. That day, the Witch of Calamity spared my life. After a fierce battle, I was utterly defeated. I fell to the ground. There were wounds all over my body and I couldn't muster any strength to take a step forward. At that point, I've already given up. I accepted that I didn't have what it takes to be a hero. And yet, it isn't even worth it to kill you. Take this as a lesson and stop playing hero. The witch gave me a half-assed reason and left the place. Not worth killing, she said. Didn't she realize that there were wounds all over her body too? Even her clothes had turned into the rag and there was blood seeping through the tears in her clothes. On the other hand, while I was in a similar state, there were no fatal wounds on my body. In a fierce battle like that, 
she had the lenience to not land any mortal wounds to me. That meant she was strong enough to kill me and she decided not to for some reason, despite the fact I was doing my best to kill her. I found you again, which, didn't I tell you to give up? Again and again, we fought each other to death. The first five or six times ended in my defeat, and yet, the witch refused to kill me and she always managed to find a reason to let me go. When I tried to follow her trail, I found out that she never tried to kill anyone who attacked her. Aside from that, it seemed like her goal was to kill all the demons she came across. Since I noticed this strange situation, I decided to ask the person in question about it. Why didn't you kill the people who attacked you? Why did you kill the demons? Aren't you their creator? Aren't you supposed to be the source of all this disaster in the world? But the witch never answered my questions properly. She always covered the truths with lies. Lies that made it as if she was a genuinely wicked person. I can do whatever I want. I'm the witch, after all. And so, our fights continued. Over time, I started to fare better against her. When we started to have more evenly matched battles, the witch started to run away whenever things got dire for her. It was the first time that I faced someone as strong as her and thanks to that, I grew stronger at a quick pace. Not only my physical capabilities and swordsmanship, my exorcism also grew stronger. Every time I faced her vicious spells, I had to wield my exorcism to counter it and as a result, I became more proficient in wielding it. And so our fights continued, again, again, and again. I chased after the witch and she kept accepting my challenges whenever we met. She could always run away if she wanted to, but she only did it when I was on the brink of defeat. I didn't understand the reason why she did it for a long time, but I managed to find out when everything was about to come to an end. After countless fights, I thrusted the tip of my sword to the witch's throat. Her mana had been depleted. She couldn't run away anymore. So, you can finally dispel my curse, said the witch. Her tone was so calm and she looked like she was satisfied by this situation. Since there was no reason for us to fight anymore, she told me to end her life and closed her eyes. Of course, she didn't need to tell me that, I was the hero, it was my duty to put an end to her life. But, before I did, I asked her the reason behind her actions for one last time. May I ask you why you did all this? Right, it would be lonely if I'd just die like that. <laughs> all right. Let me tell you a story about a poor witch, don't forget it later, okay? Think of it as a last gift from me. At that time, I decided to spare the witch section. Outside the restaurant, there was a small space surrounded by trees at the back of the building. It was the staff's smoking area. The staff normally would go there if they wanted to take a break. There were benches there, so we could sit down if we wanted to. I sat down on the bench. Meanwhile the witch leaned her back on the wall nearby and crossed her arms. So, what is it, can't you just call me out in a more natural way, asked the witch as she let out a snort. Always the pleasant girl whenever she was talking with me. Even though she acted meekly in front of Hina and the others, my bad, I didn't feel like doing that. I apologized in a monotonous voice. When she heard my voice, she furrowed her brows. What, what's with that tone? Are you mad because I scolded you yesterday? No. I shook my head. Her words pissed me off, but that wasn't the reason why. There was another reason why I acted like this. You know, I've been thinking since yesterday. I continued. You're one hell of a hypocrite, you know that? My complicated feelings toward her could be expressed with those words. You tried to save everyone but yourself. You called yourself a hero. You tried to bring happiness to others but you can't even bring it to yourself that's the thing I hate the most about you that's the reason why I hate you. That was what she said to me yesterday. Seriously, she also did that herself, she had no right to tell me off about that. I've always hated that side of hers, she kept treating her life lightly and kept refusing my help whenever I offered it to her. What are you on about? The witch tilted her head with a puzzled expression on her face. No matter how I think about it, there's clearly something strange with you. I knew that she was a clumsy girl and her socializing skill was zero. But, she wasn't this bad originally, forgetting to change shoes at the school entrance, forgetting that the tea she was about to drink could burn her tongue. 
falling off her bike and so on. The witch that I knew would never do that no matter how clumsy she was. At first, I thought it was because she let her guard down too much in this peaceful world. But, after confirming the fact that her curse had eroded that far, I realized that, you're trying to hide that your body is breaking down, aren't you? That conclusion made more sense than my first guess. She didn't notice those little things because she had been enduring the pain all this time, and yet she acted haughtily in front of me, scolding me about the things that she had clearly been doing all this time. It was just like back in our previous life. With each battle, I grew stronger. At first, I thought that I grew up at a really quick pace, but it wasn't actually the case. Yes, I grew stronger, but at the same time, the witch grew weaker after each battle. The curse took a toll on her body and the more time passed, the more it made her physically and mentally unwell. She was probably in a similar state as back then. When I was thinking about that, she asked me a question. What are you on about? Of course my body is breaking down. Is it not obvious? The witch said it dismissively. What? She admitted it that easily. What are you? In the first place, my body is different than my previous life's body. Back then, I was born a genius. I was a natural at both witchcraft and magic and thanks to that, my resistance to curses was much higher than now. That's why when I casted that curse into my body, I didn't die immediately but this body is different. She always had a pale complexion. Since she always looked like that, I always thought that she originally had a paler skin compared to other people, but it seemed like my guess was off. Yet again, I'm under a curse. Of course I'm always in pain. My body back then was too strong, that was why I was able to endure it. Curses are meant to make the person afflicted with it suffer, that's the whole point of it. Honestly. It's hard for me to stand up properly right now. Her tone was filled with self-mockery. I could weaken the pain with my magic, but I can't solve the fundamental issue without your exorcism. I need you to do something about it before I can't endure the pain anymore and my life's pan is cut by half. That's your duty, your atonement for sparing me. Perhaps because she no longer had the reason to act tough in front of me. She sat down on where she stood. I moved to support her. Why didn't you say that earlier? Because it's none of your business. You only need to do your duty. My pain has nothing to do with you. It's my punishment for everything that I have done. If you told me earlier, I would have tried harder to weaken the curse. And then you'll overextend yourself again. I've told you before, you aren't a hero anymore. You have no reason to help me. I'm your enemy. I couldn't bring myself to say anything to her after hearing her cries. But, I... Why didn't you kill me back then? She cried out again. There were tears in her eyes this time. If you killed me back then, none of this would have happened. She was right. My action back then caused her this much pain. I had made an irreversible mistake. She was right. I had to atone for this sin of mine. Section. Ceres' point of view. My past wasn't that big of a deal. I wasn't a special case, there were countless people in that world who had gone through something similar to me. I barely remembered anything about that time to begin with. I only started to remember bits and pieces of it recently. I lived in a small remote town. Since my parents were ordinary shoemakers, I had a pretty normal upbringing. My family was quite normal. If I had to describe it, at least they didn't hit me or anything like that, though. I couldn't say that they loved me that much either, every day they only gave me tasteless bread and soup for me to eat and I had to work every day. I had nothing to complain about living that kind of life, though, I was sure that my parents felt the same way too, they wouldn't get angry at me as long as I did my job and if I did my job well, they'd give me praise, I was happy enough with that life, though, I barely even remembered what they looked like nowadays, however, back then, they were more important than anything else to me, mostly because I didn't speak to anyone other than them, but one day, they died, they wandered into the slum by accident and ended up getting robbed and killed, it couldn't be helped, as it was a common occurrence in that world, if you scoured through the entire continent, you'd find such things happening in every city, in any case, they didn't come back home that day. I only found out about their deaths when the landlord threw me out of the house my parents were renting. 
They showed me my parents' corpse as a justification for that. When I saw their lifeless bodies, I cried. I felt sad, but their deaths weren't the cause of my sadness. Instead, it was because I became aware of the feelings that I had been hiding. I hated them. In fact, I hated everything. I hated my parents who never treated me kindly. I hated everyone in the town who looked at me with disgusted eyes just because we were poor. I hated the town that treated deaths as if it was a common occurrence. I hated the cruel world. Foolishly, I kept on hating everything. Hatred enveloped my soul. And with that hatred, I cursed the world. I sang the song of hatred. Let this world be cursed for eternity. Let this world be damned for eternity. I became a foolish girl who knew nothing about the world. Hated, resented and cursed the world. Even though I only wanted to feel someone's warmth. Even though I only wanted to live in a friendlier world. I dreamt of such a future, but since the world didn't let me realize that dream, I cursed it. The thing that I did was a common thing that everyone who lived in misery in that world did. Except that I was born with a talent for witchcraft. I was more talented than anyone else in that world. And so, the song of hatred that I sang became a powerful curse that afflicted the world. And so, the world was plunged into a disaster as countless vicious man-eating demons appeared all over the world. The song of a small child made millions of people suffer. When I came to realize this fact, I had turned into the witch of calamity. I should have known from the beginning. But my foolish self had only just realized it when it was already too late the fact that I was someone that should have never been born. Section Gray's point of view. I remembered the story that the witch told me. The story of the pitiful, lonely witch. After creating the demons, she went around the world to kill them. She prioritized the stronger demons who were more likely to harm other people. Witchcraft was an art of casting curses, but it was unable to dispel the already casted curses. Only exorcists could dispel curses, but the witch was unable to use it. In other words, she couldn't do anything about the curse. And so, she killed the demons. The people of the world called her the Witch of Calamity and resented her. They always tried to hunt her and kill her. She wanted to die, but if she ever died, a greater disaster would befall the world. So she decided that she shouldn't offer herself to the people. And so, she kept running while killing the demons. One day, I appeared before her. As an exorcist, I was her greatest enemy. But at the same time, I could become her savior. After all, I could dispel the curse that rooted deep inside the world's core. That was why the witch welcomed the fights with me, to make my exorcism grow stronger. So, when I finally rested my sword upon her throat, the witch felt relieved. She had no more regrets as I had become strong enough to dispel the curse out of the world completely. I had become capable of killing her and dispelling the curse embedded deeply within her soul. With that, she would finally be released from the painful life she had been living. To her, I was her hero. She told me that there was no need for me to hesitate. There was happiness in her face as she tried to convince me of that. She was delighted, from the bottom of her heart. It was the first time I've seen her beautiful smile. That was why, I. What's wrong? Kill me quickly, my hero. Grey couldn't bring myself to swing my sword down. My hand was stiff, unmoving. The reason for that was obvious. Vanquish evil, save others. Fight for justice. As a hero, your duty is to kill the witch. Remember the purpose of why you're wielding that power. The action was against the role I was supposed to play. Because in my eyes, Ceres Flores wasn't a bad person. And since she was a good person, I had to save her. That was what my conviction told me. But at the same time, it was my duty to kill her. And killing her would also be her salvation. The witch wanted me to bring her salvation. But I didn't want that. I didn't want to kill her. And so, I racked my brain, and came to a conclusion. I was God's chosen. The witch was my enemy. That was why I had no reason to fulfill her wish. So, I sheathed my sword. It was the first time in my life that I refused someone's call for help. At first, the witch was stunned after seeing my action. Then, she started to desperately beg me to kill her. Still, I refused to kill her. I decided that I would never help her. I made a lot of excuses in my head, but the reason why I did it was because I couldn't forgive her. I couldn't forgive the world that made her like this. I couldn't forgive this woman who thought that this kind of conclusion was okay. Don't fuck with me. 
It was the first time I felt anger. It was the first time the machine called Hero felt anger. And so, I vowed to show her what true happiness looked like. You aren't evil. I'm a hero. A hero wouldn't kill a good person. I repeated the words I've been saying to the witch back in our previous life. Killing her meant I'd be going against the principle of heroism itself and I would be acting against the role that had been assigned to me. Hearing that, the witch's face contorted as she gritted her teeth. I cursed the world, you know. I made the world suffer. I've caused countless deaths. How could you say that I'm not evil? You didn't even do that voluntarily. You were just mourning the death of your parents. You didn't mean to make anyone suffer. If you're evil, then why were you trying to help other people? They hated you. You could just leave them to die. She could just run away and admit that it wasn't her fault. She could just ignore those people who weren't worthy of her help. I had never seen a kinder person than her in my entire life. What I was doing didn't matter. In the end, I cursed the world and that was what everyone in that world cared about. I helped them so I could atone for my sins. I know that won't make them forgive me, but still, I had to do that. An evil person wouldn't even think of something like that, you know? I grabbed the witch's collar. Pulling her close, I stared deeply into her eyes. The world might think you're evil but I don't care what they think. You're a good person. I've seen your kindness with my own eyes. The witch let out a weak laugh. There was a faint smile on her lips. That kind of thinking is why the church executed you back then. She was right. The church executed me because I was going against God's decree. After I decided to spare the witch back then, we went on a journey together. A journey to save the world. We are only doing this because we have the same goal. That's the extent of our relationship, got it? You don't need to tell me that. In order to save the world, we first had to go to the center of the world and get rid of the curse from there. Isn't swinging your sword the only thing you can do? Just go forward, I'll protect your back. You don't need to tell me that. I don't expect a weak ass like you to be the vanguard anyway. Who did you call a weak ass? Seriously, shut your mouth and fight already. To get to the center of the world. We had to travel through the great dungeon at the center of the continent. However, due to the witch's curse, the dungeon had transformed to a den of demons. W wait, are you okay? What? Are you worried about me? Oh of course not. If you were to die after letting me live like this, I swear I'll never forgive you. What an annoying woman. Well, whatever. Although we weren't unscathed, in the end we managed to get rid of the curse deep inside the great dungeon. We did it. We did it, Grey. Yeah, guess my role as a hero ends here. What? What's with that lackluster response? Aren't you happy about this? I feel relieved more than happy, honestly. And so, we saved the world. I've done my part as the chosen hero, but on our way back, the elite group of the church ambushed us. Ex-hero, Grey Handlet. You are under arrest. Although I managed to make the witch escape safely, I used up my power and ended up captured by the church. According to them, my crime was being brainwashed by the witch. I tried to explain to them what really happened, but no one lent their ears to me. The church announced to the world that the hero had betrayed them, the people, the world and God. The witch and I were the one who successfully saved the world, but the church claimed it as their achievements instead. In the end, I was executed as a sinner. The hero had fallen into a sinner who was hated by the whole world. And that was the end of my previous life. That was the end of Grey Handlet. There was one thing that I regretted back then. I promised the witch that I'd show her what true happiness looked like. Yet, I left her behind in that world. She was all alone in that world. You're no longer a hero. I knew that better than anyone. Even before I was reincarnated to this world, I was no longer a hero. I wasn't able to become her hero, I remained as her nemesis until the very end, I knew that, but I was too afraid to admit it. So, for the longest time, I decided not to think about it. Ceres, but one question remained unsolved for me. What happened to her after I died? If she reincarnated to this world, then, how did she die? What happened to you after that? When I asked her that, she grabbed my collar, there was hatred in her eyes. How could you ask me that kind of question casually? You died, so I could no longer be saved back then. Because of you, I missed my chance to die. And, she let out a pained sigh as tears began to fall from her eyes. After you were gone, I became alone again. 
I couldn't say anything after hearing that, I could do nothing but watch as her tears fell into the ground around the time you were executed, they managed to catch up to me, the people who were deemed as failures of the hero creation project by the sage the exorcists. The witch wiped her tears with her hands, the sage was correct, they were failures. Even when grouped together, they were unable to dispel the curse bound to my soul, in the end, only you were able to do that. So, I decided to reincarnate both you, who were about to be executed and myself to this world. In other words, you were killed around the time I was executed, huh? Her end was too sad, I deserved that, so I don't really care. The witch let out a deep breath. I talk too much. We should go back, everyone will be worried. Wait, we aren't done yet. What can I do to help? I have no reason to answer that. She cut me off. Seriously, worry about yourself first before worrying about others. Stop that curse driven action of yours. I'll say it again, you're no longer a hero and I'm your nemesis, so stop trying to help me just leave me alone. I, can you confidently say that your actions aren't being influenced by the curse from your previous life? I couldn't answer her, if you can't answer, then you know what to do, I couldn't even attempt to move my lips to answer her, you once said that you'd show me what true happiness looked like, I know you meant well and you probably are still thinking of doing it, but, don't screw with me, you don't even know what it looks like yourself, what do you mean I don't know, I've seen true happiness before, but, have you experienced it yourself, she was right but what did it matter? I've never experienced it because I've never thought about my own happiness to begin with. Enough. Let's just go back. The witch sighed and turned away. Sensing that my legs didn't move, she turned her glance toward me once again. They'll get suspicious if we don't move soon. Can I ask you something? I asked. The witch and I were enemies, so there was no reason for me to help her. But, if that was the case, why did she keep admonishing me? Why was she concerned about me? Ceres, why did you choose to reincarnate to this world? I asked. I called her name and asked her in a serious tone. I understand why you reincarnated us into another world, but, why here? Why did you reincarnate us into this peaceful country? Answer me. I knew that it was because of her kindness. She did everything for me. I I. Once again, tears welled up in her eyes. I just wanted to make you happy, after saying that, she dashed into the restaurant, that was unfair, I was glued to where I stood for a while before I followed her, the sky above was cloudy, perfectly resembling my gloomy state of mind, section, after that, the study session continued and ended in an awkward atmosphere, well, of course it would be the case, the witch came back with both her eyes swollen because of tears, she didn't tell anyone why she was crying and I also had no reason to tell them, so everyone could only express their concerns in silence, frankly, I regretted asking that to her, I really shouldn't have brought up that topic back then, while apologizing inwardly to the witch, I pedaled my bike with Hina by my side, the weather was cold for summer, it seemed like it was about to rain. What happened to Mei I Chan? Ina asked me. I couldn't discern her current emotion from her tone. What if I say nothing actually happened? How long do you think I've known you? It was obvious from Mei I Chan's face that something did happen back then. Don't even try to lie to me, Ina said. Matter of factly, I wanted to tell her, but the content of my conversation with the witch wasn't something I could tell others. So, what should I tell her? What do you think? In the end, I answered her question with an ambiguous question. Hina's eyebrows furrowed in suspicion when she heard that. What? Do you think it's normal to help other people in need? Ah, I see. I thought this kind of thinking was natural, unless their nature was twisted to begin with. No one would want anyone to be unhappy. Even if it was someone that they hated, they might not want someone they hated to be in their lives, but at the same time, they would be wishing them happiness somewhere they couldn't see. If it was someone that they liked, it would be normal for them to help them. I just wanted everyone to be happy. I just wanted to see everyone smile. Was I crazy for thinking something like that? Was it some kind of curse? After all, my desire to help the witch. Did it really come from the bottom of my heart? Ina stopped pedaling her bicycle and stared at me in silence for a while. You know, 
your balance is off. Balance between tending to yourself and taking care of others. Your balance in that regard is off. Ina got off her bike and started to walk slowly. I did the same and followed behind her. A normal person would try to look for their own happiness first before starting to take care of others but that's only if they could afford to do it in the first place. Of course, it depends on the context. Like, if I saw someone got lost in the middle of nowhere, I'd try to call out to them, at least in your case. You always tried to help others without minding your own well-being. It isn't like you could afford to do it either. You're just ignoring your own happiness. That's why you always ended up hurting yourself. I mean, people's happiness is my happiness, you know. She glared at me with anger welled up in her eyes. What would you feel if I were to give up my life to save you? No, don't you even dare to think about it. I answered her with difficulties. Hearing that, she snorted and turned her face away. What a selfish answer. If you want me to accept your thinking, then you have no right to complain if I were to do the same thing as you. No, that was not how it was. Hina and I were different. I was different from the rest of the people of this world. But, was it really the case? I mean, even if I hated to admit it, I was no longer a hero. My head started to hurt. You've always been like this, but ever since a year ago, you became even more strange, you know that? Her voice, as she admonished me, was sharp. You stopped smiling as much. You kept pushing yourself to help others and you kept insisting that you were happy living like that. Hey, do you think people would be happy if you keep on meddling in their lives? She came closer to me. Seriously, what are you even trying to do? Closing the distance to the point that our noses almost touched. She looked straight in my eyes. Don't you realize that your life is yours? It's not mine nor is it other people's possession. She glared at me and continued talking. In the first place, your way of doing things is dumb. Yes, there are a lot of people that might need your help, but not everyone would welcome it. This is Japan and we aren't in a war or something. Even if you leave those people alone, they'll be able to take care of themselves. Your help isn't necessary, so stop sticking your nose where it doesn't belong. I tried to argue but no words came out of my mouth. Honestly, I'm getting more annoyed as I talk. Hey, who do you think you are? Do you think you're such a great person that you can afford to stick your nose into everyone's business? Such arrogance. Since when did you become such a great person, huh? What? Are you thinking that you're some kind of hero or something? Get back to reality, you're nothing. No one expected anything from you. Hey, arrogant Chayunabi Ukan. Let me tell you something. Whether you exist or not, the world goes on. Your existence won't change anything. Do you get it? It felt like she had vented out all her pent-up feelings. Her words were insulting. She rejected my way of life. The things I stood for, everything. Her tone sounded like she was condemning me as a person. She was treating me like a child who mistakenly thought that he was born special. But strangely enough, her words didn't hurt me. I see. I thought I already understood everything that she said, but after she pointed it out again, it made me realize that I understood nothing. Can I even live a normal life? When I looked at her, Hina let out a frustrated grunt. What the hell are you talking about? Just live your life the way you want to live. Just keep in mind that no one expects anything from you. Your existence is replaceable. The world will go on even if you don't exist. Ina closed the distance between us again and gently flicked my forehead. I know that, but... I glanced at my palm. I could vividly remember the sensation of the blood-soaked sword I had always carried. But that sword was no longer there. Is it real? No one is expecting anything from me? My existence doesn't actually matter? I guess so, huh? Of course, that's the way it is, huh? Exactly. You dumbass. Stupid ass Chayunabi. Do you think you're a hero or something? You're a high school student already. Gosh. Get yourself together. I swear, I always get second-hand embarrassment whenever I see you. Okay. That's just mean. Hina's insults made me flustered. I see I was that kind of guy, huh? Noticing my feelings, Hina looked at me concernedly. S sorry, I went overboard I I couldn't help it. Okay, seeing you like that made me frustrated. Hearing that, I bursted out laughing. No, it's fine. Thank you, Hina. I looked at her in the eyes and thanked her. Her words were true, 
There was no reason for her to apologize. Your words saved me, Hina. You are you a masochist? No? What the hell? How the hell did you come to that conclusion? It was true that her words saved me, though. Probably it was because it came from her. The girl who had been watching over me since I was a kid. I'm glad that you're my childhood friend. When I said that, she averted her gaze as her face reddened. Why yeah, you should be more grateful to me why you're a handful, don't you know that? I was not a hero anymore, just a normal high school student that could be found anywhere. I knew that fact since long ago, but I finally understood what it meant. I always thought that helping people was something that I had to do. Whether I was a hero or not, people always expected me to help them. It always felt like people were expecting something from me. Just like back in my previous life, Hina's words reminded me that there were no such things. I'm just a normal high school student, huh? No? There's no way in hell you're normal. Eh? What do you mean? Didn't you just say? Don't you realize that you're a weirdo? W -a me? A weirdo? But, I was just trying to imitate my previous self, to my horrified look. Hina bursted out laughing. I guess I have to thank you once again for always staying by my side, even though I'm like this. Eh? Ina flinched. It seemed like my words caught her off guard. T this guy. Her face started to redden again. Was she okay? She didn't catch a cold or anything, right? Are you okay? Yes. I'm fine. I don't know why, but I feel tired. I wanna stop by there. She then pushed her bike to a parking lot in front of a convenience store. I followed suit and we entered the convenience store together. We decided to buy some ice cream and ate it under the shade next to the building. Perhaps because we had been talking under the sun for a while, we were drenched in sweat and we just realized it when we were resting like this. You know, I muttered, I want to look for a new purpose in my life, huh? I want to try finding something that I really enjoy. Back when I was talking with the witch, the sky was cloudy. But all the clouds had already gone away before I knew it. I know it'll be hard to change myself at this point, but still. I thought that it was a given that I should live like I did back in my previous life. But, Hina and the witch told me that it wasn't the case. From now on, I'm going to live for myself. I wanted to make fun memories, to do whatever I wanted to do, to enjoy myself to the fullest and to look for my own happiness. It was something that I always dreamed about as a kid, but when I started to regain the memory of my previous life, I started to forget about that dream. I see, said Hina as she showed me a bright smile. If you're happy, everyone will also be happy for you, you know? Her smile was as bright as the sun. You're right I wonder why I didn't notice such a simple thing. Because you're an idiot, that's why. She looked really happy right now. And I felt happy when I saw her like this. By the way, Hina, I can see your bra. Her thin shirt was drenched in sweat. Since that was the case, it stuck closely to her skin and I could see her pink bra through her wet shirt. Gotta say, this was a pleasant sight to see. HMPH, my eyes? This girl just thrusted her fingers into my eyes without hesitation. Wow. Even in my previous life, this kind of bold girl was rare. Maybe she had the knack to become a warrior. I really can't let my guard down around you. She moved away from me while shielding her chest with her arms. Anyway, let's get back to the previous topic. What were you talking about with Mei Ai Chan? Similar to what we were talking about just now. She scolded me really hard. Huh? That girl can actually scold other people, said Hina, who didn't know the witch's true nature. Anyway. That girl is similar to you. Always trying to push herself too hard. Then, she continued trying to analyze the witch's personality. That said, she's different from you. How can I put it? It feels like she's afraid of people. To be exact, she's afraid of being hated by people. It's funny to think about it. She's so cute. There's no way that she only got one or two confessions in her entire life yet. She's this insecure about herself. She's always acting as if she's an outcast or something too. That was a good analysis, as expected of her. I knew that she was a sharp girl among all of us. She was the one who kept an eye on other people around her the most. Whenever we talked to her, even though she's scared and easily frightened, I could tell that she's genuinely happy. We were just talking normally, but she acted as if she couldn't be happier than that. I agree. 
There was no doubt that the witch felt genuinely happy when Hina and the others talked to her. That's why I like her, no matter how lame or suspicious she acts. I will always like that girl. I'm sure Yuka thinks so too. That's why. I want to ask you. You knew her for a long time, right? How did she become like that? I flinched when I heard her question. Should I tell Hina about the witch's past or not? After contemplating for a bit, I decided to tell her about it. Of course, I'll let the other world stuff out of the story. I told her briefly about the witch's past, how she accidentally hurt other people without meaning to and because of that, they grew to hate her. That was the reason why she became afraid of other people. I see. That's why you're trying to take care of her. Hina continued, but still, there's no reason for you to keep all this to yourself. I'm Mei Ai-chan's friend too, not only me. Yuka and even though I hate to admit it, Shinji too we are her friends too. You aren't alone. We want the same thing too. We want her to be able to have a normal life too. Hina's words made me feel strange. Sure, I was no longer a hero, but that didn't mean the nature of my relationship with the witch changed. Whatever we turned into, we would always be enemies. That meant, we hated each other. What reason would I have to help the witch right now? It was only after a while that I came up with that question. Chapter 4, Even if the world turned into your enemy. Monday, a new week began, and so did the three-day exam period. During this period, all club activities were suspended as everyone was fully concentrated on the exam. Well, that was what's supposed to happen. In reality, thanks to the suspension of club activities, everyone got more time to play around instead. Phew. I let out a sigh. I didn't feel so good for some reason. There was this indescribable hazy feeling in my chest. Shinji, who was walking beside me, noticed this and asked. What's wrong, Godu? You failed the exam? You, out of all people, asking me that? Ha ha, what are you talking about? I'll pass no problem. Of course. Now, that's a surprising answer. Yuka would be astonished if she were to hear that. He shrugged his shoulders before continuing. Well, other than math, that is, I'm sure that I'll get read. Hell, it won't even be close to the passing mark. I feel you. In my case, my physics seems to be horrid too. The exam subjects for the first day were math, physics and modern Japanese. Honestly, I doubt that I'd get a red mark for any of those subjects even though I barely studied but it was exactly for that reason that I doubt that I'd get any higher than the average score. So, why were you sighing? Shinji stopped walking and turned to face me. Let me guess, is it because of she Inamei? Bull's eye. Actually, I wasn't even sure if I was feeling troubled because of her. Yeah, maybe I was worried about her a little, but, who knows? What are you on about? Of course my body is breaking down, is it not obvious? I suddenly remembered the witch's words, the fact that her body was breaking down. But, I didn't think that was the cause of this indescribable feeling. I mean, I had no reason to worry about the witch anymore. I was no longer a hero and I had no obligation to care about anyone who wasn't my friend, not to mention the witch who was my nemesis. So, logically speaking, the witch had nothing to do with this indescribable feeling I was having. While I was trying to convince myself of that, Shinji muttered, well, in any case, neither Yuka nor I could do something about her, what do you mean, she seems to be suffering from something, she seems close to killing herself, you know, it's just my feelings though, I don't know why she would do that, after hearing those words, my head went blank, I'm not the only one who noticed it, by the way, he continued, that was the reason why Yuka held that study group in the first place, at first, we thought that she was like that because of some troubles at her previous school, but it seemed like our guess was wrong. Shinji, you know the cause, don't you? Then, he continued his words with a dismissive tone, there's only so much that strangers like us can do to her, you know? We can't get her to open up her heart to us. After that, he stopped saying anything. Before I knew it, we had arrived at the parking lot, the roof of the parking lot blocked the sunlight so the area was relatively cooler but, for some reason, that didn't stop my sweat from running through my cheeks. Um Shireishi kun There was a familiar voice calling me from behind. I turned around to see the witch standing there, 
She probably called me Shai Reishi Kun because Shinji was with me. Come to think of it, today was the day for her treatment. All right, see you tomorrow then. Don't slack off and study properly, okay? Yeah, see you. Reading the subtle atmosphere between me and the witch, Shinji quickly bid his farewell, rode on his bike and left. A warm breeze caressed my cheeks. I turned to see the witch staring at me. Silence enveloped us. Thanks to the fight we had yesterday, there was an awkward atmosphere between us. I could keep my silence but, if we kept dilly-dallying here, we wouldn't get any job done for today. Let's go. When I urged her, she nodded and walked behind me. Question mark. But, there was something strange about the way she walked. She was staggering. Even if it wasn't me who was looking at her, if the person was attentive enough, they would notice it. No matter how I tried to look at her, she looked unwell. It was obvious that she was trying so hard to endure pain. Just the other day, her condition wasn't even close to her current state. I wouldn't be able to tell that she was unwell unless I tried to observe her a little closely. And yet, she became like this overnight. What happened to her? Oi, what's wrong? I lent her a shoulder. Then I realized something. What if she didn't become like this overnight? What if her condition was originally this bad and she had just been hiding it so well that I failed to notice it? That would explain it. What do you mean? She asked me back. She knew what I was talking about. Yet she acted like this anyway. Stop playing dumb. No matter how. What do you care? It has nothing to do with you. When she said that, I couldn't find any words to rebuke her. After all, we were just cooperating because we had the same goal. It wasn't like we were friends or anything. I had no reason to care about her personal affairs. Yes, I had no reason at all. No, it does have something to do with me. If your condition is caused by the curse, then I have the right to know. It's concerning your treatment, after all. After some hesitation, I managed to come up with that. Honestly, I wasn't even sure if I could convince her with that or not, but I decided to roll with it anyway. I guess your words make sense. But still, it has nothing to do with the treatment. I told you the other day that my body is breaking down. Didn't I? That's it. After that, she didn't say anything else. We walked all the way to her house without saying anything to each other. I couldn't say anything to her. Only the question. Is this really okay? Kept echoing in my head. Section. Seri's point of view. I think. That person was always like that. He always acted like a hero. To other people. That person, Grey Handlet, was always a hero and nothing more. He kept telling me that he wouldn't help me yet. Here he was, helping me without making any fuss. Even back then, his decision to not help me was actually his way of helping me. He didn't seem to realize that, though. But that action became the justification for the church to execute him. That action caused the whole world to judge him as a sinner who aided the witch. Seriously. What a foolish hero. Trying to help the enemy of the world was clearly a foolish thing to do. He was too immersed in his role and ended up paying the price for it with his life. I could say that he deserved it. If only he didn't force himself to help me. None of this would have happened. Besides, I've never wanted his help to begin with. That was why. There was no reason for me to mourn his death. There was no reason at all. Instead of mourning him, I should condemn him for his foolishness. And yet, I found myself crying. I didn't even know why I was crying. I was being chased by the elites of the church and I learned of Grey's death through them. And I knew that they weren't lying. After all, they were his comrades. The exorcists created by the Hero Creation Project. To them, Grey was the person they placed their hopes in. Their hero. That was the reason why I knew they weren't lying. Even though I had no reason to care. The revelation made me flustered. And they used that chance to give me a mortal wound. I realized that I wouldn't be able to survive it back then. And so, with my last ounce of strength, I reincarnated both me and the hero to another world. I crushed the headless corpse of the hero and turned it into a pool of blood before dying next to it. It felt terrible. Even though this man was the person who kept annoying me until the very end. Until his dying breath. He kept ignoring my wish and did whatever he wanted. But, I didn't want this fool to end like this. So I prayed that he wouldn't be burdened as a hero anymore in his next life and could live happily until the day he died again. Of course, 
One of the reasons why I chose to reincarnate in another world was to prevent my curse from going haywire in the other world. But, the main reason why I did it was because I couldn't let him die like this. And yet, when we finally met again, that fool was still acting as if he was a hero. Even in a world that didn't need a hero's existence, he still tried his hardest to reach out to those people in need. Even when he couldn't find anyone to reach out to, he would try his hardest to look for them. If this keeps up, you won't be able to find your own happiness, you know? He was still a foolish man, instead of looking for happiness, he kept making himself unhappy for some reason. That was why I made an oath. This time for sure, I'll make him happy. However, I couldn't live in this world without his help. To cover up that fact, I made an excuse to him. I pressured him to help me because he didn't kill me back in the other world. Because of his actions, I became like this. Since it was technically the truth, the excuse worked perfectly. Though, I didn't expect anything more than that from him. The matter of my body breaking down was out of the scope of our cooperation. It didn't really have anything to do with the curse. I had expected it to happen since the very beginning because this body was different from my previous one. My previous body had an unnaturally high resistance to curse. Meanwhile this body had nothing. Back then, even though I casted that terrible curse upon the world, I couldn't feel any pain from the curse's side effects. This pain was something that I should have felt to begin with. It was the punishment I deserved. Dot. The pain I had to endure I couldn't even begin to describe it with words. Since I was a child, back when the memories of my previous life hadn't awakened, I had to deal with this pain. My consciousness was always hazy. I kept getting hospitalized for unknown causes to the point that my parents always worried about me. Living in constant pain, even before I knew what pain was, became my new daily life. Then, I dreamt of my previous life, gradually. I recalled everything about my previous life. At first, I thought that those memories were nightmares. Who would have thought that I was the main character of the dream? But, as I got older, I was forced to believe it. When the memories of the magic and witchcraft I had learned came back to me, I casted them to my body to ease my pain a little. Then, in the third year of my middle school, I finally remembered everything about my previous life and more importantly, about the hero. So. I used my magic to look for him. At that time, I was impatient because of my resistance in the previous life. I underestimated the curse's strength. I realized that if I stood by doing nothing, the curse would eventually crush my heart. While that itself wasn't really a big deal because it was what I deserved, the world would have to pay for it if it were to actually happen. That was why I decided to look for him so he could completely get rid of the curse in my soul. And so, I moved into his school. I had to take such a drastic measure because I was close to my limit. Gradually, by each passing year, the curse started to erode more part of my soul. As the erosion worsened, the pain became harder to bear. It was to the point that it was hard to hide it. Even Gray had noticed my condition at some point. Nevertheless, as long as I could receive his treatment once in a while, it would alleviate the pain a little. I could rely on it to survive for the time being. Honestly, I was at my limit, but I didn't really care if anyone were to find out about my condition. I'd die soon anyway, it didn't really matter in the end. As long as Grey could live happily in this world, I didn't care about anything else. I was the Witch of Calamity, someone who plunged the world to disaster. It was a witch's fate to be unhappy, that was all there to it. Compared to me, Grey was the hero who saved the world. It was his fate to be happy. For someone who worked the hardest to save the world to go unrewarded, I couldn't let that happen. So, I'd definitely make him happy. If the hero role made him unhappy, then I'd free him of that role. I swore to make him happy. That was why, I couldn't let him help me. Section. It hurts. I muttered those words involuntarily. Was it allowed for me to complain when I was alone like this? Even now, the pain tormented my soul. It was hard for me to get up from my bed. Luckily, this was my own room and no one else was there. I didn't need to pretend. I could lay down all day if I wanted to. It's painful. I remembered his face when I scolded him harshly the other day. Honestly, I had no right whatsoever to scold him like that. He could just shove me away and slap me in the face if he wanted to and I wouldn't complain. But, 
He listened to me properly. Even though no one would blame him if he were to ignore me, he listened to my story anyway. Everyone else in the previous world called my story nonsense. I could understand that, as it was the right thing to do. I didn't want anyone's sympathy anyway. To me, words were just another form of weapon to take my opponents down. There wasn't anything more to it. But, thanks to that man, I discovered the joy of talking to other people. He was the only person who would listen to me earnestly. It's sad. In this world, he was the only one who knew about my identity as the witch. That was why there were people who'd come forward and talk to me. That made me happy. But, at the same time, it made me feel guilty. After all, I was someone who plunged the world into a disaster. I had no right to talk to those kind people. I wasn't a being who should be alive to begin with. I realized that I was afraid of being hated. What if they were to find out about my true identity, as a being who should be hated? It hurts. I knew that I deserved it, living in this kind of pain. After all, I was someone who should be hated, the witch. That was why. I couldn't ask for help, even if I desperately wanted to. You know, it was the second day of the exam. I did better on today's exam compared to yesterday's. The current time was 1 p.m. Because of the exam, we only had to attend school for three hours. I was currently on my way home. Actually, no, I was supposed to be on my way home, but for some reason, I was inside a shopping mall near the school area. Before you assume things, no, I didn't come here out of my own volition. Don't you have to study? I asked Hina, who was walking in front of me. That question, hearing it, she turned around to face me. She placed her hands behind her backs as she smiled. I'll study properly when I get home. All right, what are we here for then? Lunch. Of course, studying is important, but taking a break is also important. Since school finishes early, we got to make the most of the time. She then scurried around the streets filled with restaurants. You brought me here just for that? What's that? You got a problem with that? It feels lonely going here alone, you know? She averted her gaze slightly as she pouted. Her cheeks reddened a little. If you're too lax, you'll end up like Shinji, you know? Shinji who? Wow. That's just cruel. Anyway, why are you worried about me? I got way better grades than you. Worry about yourself instead. I mean, yeah, but honestly, I don't think I'll get any red marks even if I were to slack off a little. See? She was in an unnaturally good mood. I wonder why? Did she do well in the exam or something? What do you want to eat? A muris. Of course. What did I expect from you? Anyway, there is a western-styled restaurant there. I don't want to go there. Why? I want some ramen. Then, why did you ask me what I wanted to eat? So I know what I should make for you later. Oh, really? I'll look forward to it, then. Yeah, go ahead. But can you back off a little? People will think that we're a couple, said Hina in a whisper before she turned her head away. What's the problem with that? When I asked that question, Hina's face reddened as she stopped dead in her tracks. You really don't care much about what other people think of you, huh? I mean, I used to be a hero back in my previous life. People assumed a lot of things about me back then, so I was pretty much used to it by now. Hina? Hina let out a cough. She then scolded me for some reason. You should pay more attention to how people think about you. That's why you've never noticed what me or other people are thinking about you. Well, I guess what she was trying to tell me was correct. I was executed by the church because I didn't notice what they were thinking about me back then. Though, I had no regrets about that since I did my job as a hero properly before I died. While thinking of this. I followed Hina to enter a certain Raymond shop. I sat by her side in front of the counter and ordered a large size tonkatsu ramen. They only sold tonkatsu here and Hina knew it too as we used to come here often back when you were younger as the price here was cheap for students like us and the food was tasty. I didn't come as often nowadays, though, mostly because I had been busy. We slurped our ramen without a care in the world, even with sweats trickling down from our foreheads. We enjoyed this momentary blissful feeling. Phew, I'm full. I muttered as I pat my stomach. I noticed that Hina was staring at me. Her eyes looked serious. So, she shook the glass in her hand as she asked. What's bothering you these days? You noticed? Of course I did. Who do you think I am? 
I'm your childhood friend, she snorted and crossed her arms, her boastful attitude looked adorable. Seriously, I couldn't beat this girl, she probably knew about me more than I did myself, you know, that was why, it should be okay to ask her this. Yes? There's something that I don't understand, she listened to me in silence. I thought about the witch, there's this one person that I hate, my enemy. Her eyes widened as I said that. Now, that's rare. I thought you liked everyone. That person is a special case. Honestly, it felt strange even to me. I hate that person. I don't want to get involved with them. Like I said, we're enemies. We don't get along well. We sometimes work together but, even during that, we'll curse each other as we go. That was how our relationship went. Towards someone like that, there should be no reason to sympathize with them right? As long as they didn't ask me, I shouldn't care about them, right? I mean, there's no reason for me to help them. But I, why am I? While I was staring at my own hand, Ina asked me a question. So, you want to help that person? But, you don't know if that feeling is coming from your heart or not, am I correct? Yeah. I didn't know why, but I had been struggling with this. I didn't know where this feeling came from. Was it from my obsession? Or was it my true feelings? You know. Hina held her forehead with her hand and sighed in exasperation. You're an idiot. I didn't expect her to suddenly insult me like that. When I looked up at her, in surprise, she was frowning while rubbing her brows. You looked so down these days. I wondered what was wrong with you. Turns out it's just this dumb thing then again. What did I expect from you? Geez, seriously. What an idiot. She muttered those words. Hina? You know, I'm actually struggling here. Listen here, idiot. Stop calling me an idiot. Shut it and listen. Your assumption is wrong in the first place. What do you mean? Your hatred. What enemies? If you really hate that person, you wouldn't be worrying about them like this. You think that you hate them, but in truth, you don't. That's all there is to it. Huh? You care about that person. Maybe you even like that person. I wanted to deny her words immediately but no words managed to come out of my mouth. Maybe, somewhere in my heart, I was aware of that already. You want to help them because you like them. Since you like them, when you notice that they're in trouble, you want to help them. It's simple, isn't it? My memories together with the witch flashed through my mind. There were barely any good memories. Most of the time, we were just fighting or cursing each other. In the first place, we were enemies, because that was the case. I refused to help her and she stated clearly that she hated me and cursed at me. Based on the knowledge that I had learned, I always assumed that I hated her. It was impossible not to hate your enemy, after all. I thought that way of thinking was the correct one. Thinking back, I had never really learned about how relationships worked. When I thought about the time I had with the witch, I never felt bad around her. I never felt uncomfortable around her. Our silly banters, stupid quarrels those times when we did it, felt really fun. At that time, I didn't realize that feeling. After all, the witch was the first person I had a real relationship with. I don't hate that person. It was only when Hina put it into words for me that I could come to terms with my feelings. Yeah, I don't know who that person is but you actually like that person. You just didn't realize it. It felt like my common sense was overturned. What we were talking about felt so obvious that it was embarrassing that I felt troubled by it in the first place. When you want to help someone so much even though they refuse your help, that means you like that person and you don't want to lose them, said Hina in a gentle tone. It's the same as me, you know? What do you mean? Even though you don't want my help, I'm here to help you anyway. You're someone I care about. We've been friends since we were kids. I'm always worrying about you every day, you know? Friends. Huh? Friend a relationship, connection, a word that symbolized mutual support, what was it that made me reluctant to befriend the witch, I see, the words came out of my mouth involuntarily, I looked out the window, the sky was clear, I knew what I should do now, my bad, Hina, I stood up, when I was racking my brain for an excuse to tell her, Hina waved her hand dismissively and said, just get going, that person is waiting for you, aren't they? She really could see through me, huh? Or maybe I was just too easy to understand. I placed the money for the Raymond on the table and dashed toward the exit. 
I'm going. Go get him, Tiger. Roger. I got on my bike and pedaled it to the witch's house. Maybe I didn't really need to do it now, but I wanted to save her as soon as possible. After all, I found the reason I had been looking for. However, it was a simple thing. It was unthinkable that I had been ignoring it for so long. Hina was right. I was an idiot. Sweat poured down on my face like a raging wave. The summer heat was slowly taking my energy. But, I had no intention of slowing down my bike. I had no reason to hesitate anymore. This time, I'll definitely save her. Section. I was trying to catch my breath in front of the witch's apartment. I could have just took it slowly and went here normally instead of pedaling my bike like a madman, but oh well. Anyway, I needed to talk with the witch. I pressed the intercom in front of the apartment. But, only silence greeted me for quite a long time, just right before the security guard was about to kick me out. The witch finally answered. What do you want? I need to talk. I don't want to talk with you. I don't care. Just come out and listen to me. My voice sounded more forceful than I thought. The witch was surprised to hear it. That's unusual. It's the first time I've ever heard you sounding so forceful. You won't listen to me otherwise. As I said this, I heard her let out a sigh. Hero. You. Stop calling me that. I'm not a hero anymore. You said it yourself, didn't you? So you've come to admit that already? Of course. It's about time for me to grow up. I can't be a Chayunabi forever. There was a short period of silence after I said that. Whatever. Come in. She granted me permission. I went up to the floor where the witch was living in. In the meantime, I managed to catch my breath. Sadly, I didn't have enough time to organize my thoughts, so I still didn't know what I should say to her. I knew what I wanted to talk about, though. I should be able to work out something from there. The door to her room was opened. I went in and took off my shoes. The room hasn't changed since the last time I came here. The bookshelves were still occupying every corner of the room. The smell of old paper tickled my nostrils. Yo. The witch was sitting cross-legged on the sofa at the back of the room. As she was sipping her tea, she turned her gaze to me. So, what are you? W. Wait. Are you okay? Her composed gaze turned into a gaze filled with anxiety after she saw me. What? Are you worried about me? How kind of you. What happened? Why are you sweating so much? Your face looks pale too. Ha ha. This is nothing. I wobbled a little mid-sentence. W wait. There's no way you're okay. I'm okay. I just forced myself a little when I pedaled my bike to get here. Had to turn off my limiter and all that. There's no way you'd be okay after that then. Don't worry. If it comes to it, I'll just vomit here. That'll make me feel a whole lot better. Don't you even dare to think about it. I calmed the fidgety witch down and sat down on the sofa. Ah my head hurts. Did you get a heat stroke? What is the temperature outside? Probably 38 or something. Who knows? Who cares? It was hard to think with this kind of headache. Why were you even? The witch picked up the AC remote and turned down the room's temperature. In any case, I'll get you something to drink. Maybe I still have a sports drink or something in the fridge. I knew it. She was a kind girl. She always pretended to be cold and detached. But whenever she panicked like this, her true personality came out. You know, witch. What is it? Now you can no longer escape. Ha 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 ha. Ea. I laughed with all my heart. It seemed like she took my joke seriously as she took a step back from me. I took a deep breath. My bad, that was the wrong character to play. You're creepy, you know that? Now, that's just mean. Seriously, what is wrong with you? Said the witch as she handed me a bottle of sports drink. Thank you. I'm more of an Aquari brand guy than a Pucari guy though. Shut it. She cut me off. Just drink it already. You'll get dehydrated otherwise. I obeyed her words and gulped down the Pucari. Ah, that hits the spot. After a while, the headache finally went away. I turned my gaze to the witch. So that's how you normally dressed at home, huh? You got a problem with it? She was wearing a t-shirt and shorts. Her style was rough but it was a staple for summer. If I could describe how she looked currently, it would be, you look cute. The gap between how you look right now and your normal self actually makes me excited. Whoops, I didn't mean to say that out loud. I guess my mind was still hazy as I normally would never say something like that. 
I could feel my face starting to heat up. Yikes. W -a. What is it? All of a sudden, her face turned bright red as she shouted at me. And never mind that. It isn't important. There's something I want to tell you. W what? Still flustered, the witch asked. I looked at her closely. What should I tell her? I started to scour through my memories with her. The days when we spent our lives together. Ceres you're a pain in the ass. Do you know that? The first thing that came out of my mouth was an insult. After hearing that, the witch furrowed her brows and almost immediately, sent out a complaint to me. Have you ever tried to look in the mirror? I know that I'm the same, though I hate to admit it. Still, you're way worse than me. Do you know that? I know you're the witch and all. But you're still too much. No? What are you even talking about? You're even worse than me. You've never listened to anything that anyone said. Always neglecting yourself and running toward a problem recklessly like a headless chicken. You're way worse than me. Worse. Look in the mirror. So were you. I'm the only one who knows of your true nature. Self-neglect is literally your middle name. Also, why are you so afraid of other people? No one in this world knows that you're the witch. No one will hate you unconditionally. So, stop struggling in the dark by yourself. Ask for help. Seek for help. Everyone will help you if you were to ask them. Just lean on someone when you're in trouble. It isn't that hard. So what? I'm still the witch. My sin won't go away even if no one knows who I am. In fact, just by existing, I'm already putting the world in danger. You already know that, don't you? I shouldn't be alive in the first place. How could someone like me have the right to depend on other people? I'm a monster who should be hated. I deserve to be burned in hell. I don't deserve to be saved. So, stop worrying about me and worry more about yourself instead. Don't fuck with me. There's no way that's true. Someone as kind as you don't deserve to be hated, let alone be burned in hell. I'll make sure of that. I'll save you. Ha! Huh? The witch held her breath for a moment before showing me an exhausted smile. You're still trapped by the curse, aren't you? That's why you're acting like this. You lied to me earlier when you admitted that you aren't a hero anymore, right? Well, I expected it. There's no way that problem of yours could be solved so easily. I was a fool to believe you. No, the curse doesn't affect me anymore. Hina had told me enough that I'm just a normal high school boy. Then, why? Her face was distorted. Then why are you trying to save me? You are not a hero anymore. You have no reason to save me. We're enemies. I was the reason why you lived like that back in the previous world. I was the reason why you were killed. Hate me. Hold a grudge against me. That's the feelings you should have about me. You're seriously a major pain in the ass. I stood up and stared at her face. What? Am I wrong? I am the witch. I'm the most troublesome, evil, disgusting. The worst person you can ever meet in this world. That's a given. If you're really like that. Hina and the others would never go out of their way to help you. They cared about you because they noticed your kindness. You're a kind girl. Nothing you said would ever change that. Shut up. Shut up. You won't fool me with lousy lies like that. The witch tried to catch her breath after that outburst. There were tears in her eyes. Surely you didn't come here to talk about this kind of thing? Just hurry up and cut the case already. Fine. I stepped forward and closed my distance to the witch. W -a D don't come any closer. She summoned her staff and held it against my throat. I refuse, but I ignored her and took another step forward instead. She panicked and moved her staff away. What are you doing? She took a few steps backwards as I continued forward. Eventually, her back hit the wall. I immediately slammed my hand against that wall and leaned closer to her. I showed her a daring smile. See what I meant? Even right now, you're showing me your kindness. Seriously? What do you want? Ceres no. I should stop calling you that. Sheena may I? I changed my way of addressing her. Sheena looked surprised as her staff shook a little. If the curse from her previous life was still bounding her, then I would be the person who would free her from it. I found the whole situation funny. She said all those things about me being cursed when it was her who was suffering from a curse. I didn't mean it literally. Of course. Yes. Her soul was bound by that heinous curse. But that wasn't what I was meant to say. She Ina was afraid. Afraid of being approached by people. 
afraid of being touched by people. She was like this back then too and she hadn't gotten any better since then. Even when we were linking our arms together for her treatment, her fear showed clearly in her manners. When it came to communicating with others, she tended to take a step back before even doing anything. It was because she was afraid of getting hurt. The reason for that was because she always thought that she deserved to be hated. After all, for all her life, she had been living in a hell filled with nothing but people who were hostile to her. That was why, to save this idiot who was holding her tears back, I said this without any hesitation. Be my friend, my face felt hot. Maybe it started to redden as we were speaking. Did she notice that? Huh? She Ina looked at me with her mouth slightly opened. Soon after, her face turned bright red. Why you? W.Y. Suddenly, she let out those words while panicking. Well, that was a natural response, I guess. If she were to say the same thing to me, I would react the same way as her. In any case, I should explain myself clearly to her. I want to help you. I want to see you smile you're right. This isn't how I should feel toward the enemy from my previous life. But, her face was red up to her ears as she heard more of my words. Why couldn't she have a more serious reaction? It was hard trying to come up with those words, you know? In any case, I continued, being enemies and such let's bury that relationship in the past already. Be my friend, if we became friends, then, I don't need to think of a reason to help you. Because that's what friends are for right? To help each other when needed. Maybe. I was mistaken about something. Normal friends wouldn't have a tighter bond than he currently have. The feelings I had about her were way heavier than the feelings I had towards any of my friends. Nevertheless, nothing would change if I didn't change the nature of our relationship. It was indeed a troublesome one, I admit that. Becoming friends? To help me? She in a grip the hem of her clothes. There was a sense of longing in her eyes. In the end, you haven't changed at all, huh? How many times should I tell you so you can understand? In order to remove the curse that had been eating this girl's heart for years, I had no choice but to repeat those embarrassing words over and over again. Well, in a way, to remove that curse was a part of my duty. Not as a hero, but as an exorcist. I'm not helping you because I'm a hero or anything like that. I have no obligation to do so because I'm not a hero to begin with. You were correct. For the longest time, I had been tied by my past as a hero. Only when I decided to let it go did I realize that there are a lot of things I wanted to do in this world, and the first thing I want to do is to help you. I finally realized that. I finally realized that feeling of mine, that shows you how much I like you. I love you. I love your clumsiness. I love your foolishness. I love everything about you. Everything. You are important to me. To me. You're the one I cared about the most. I would do anything for you. That's why. Be my friend. In my desperation. I uttered those ridiculous lines before turning my face away. I didn't have the courage to look at her face now. So, what do you think? Do you believe me now? I'm not trying to help you because of my duty or anything like that. Silence enveloped the room after I said that. Before long, Sheena opened her mouth to speak lies. There's no way that anyone in this world could like me. Then, even if everyone in the world hates you. The words flowed out naturally out of my mouth. It was how I truly felt about her. I'll still be by your side. I'll be the only one who loves you in this world. That's why, I'll remove both curses out of your heart and soul. I'm the witch, you know. Even if you could save me, I shouldn't be saved in the first place. I don't deserve it. A witch like me has no right to be happy. She was just speaking in circles now and her eyes looked more clouded than before. It started to irritate me. So, I shouted at her to shut her up. Shut the hell up. What witch? Who has no right to be happy? That's all in the past, you dumbass. She flinched when she heard me shouting. Thanks to that, her eyes began to regain their clarity. Be but. In any case, you are not allowed to be unhappy. I won't let you be unhappy. H. Huh? be happy instead. I'll make you happy. I promise you. I pulled her closer to me and embraced her small, frail-looking body in my arms. Listen, you're not a sinner anymore. You're a new person. You didn't carry your sin from your previous life over. Everyone who knows you in this life likes you. Hell, even I, who knows you from your previous life, like you. You're liked by everyone. 
You are not alone anymore. Even the people in our previous world would like you if they knew the truth about you. You're a victim, not a villain. So, stop trying to take all the blame. Who do you think you are? You're just a normal girl! Exclamation mark. I pressed her face against my chest so she wouldn't be able to say anything to reject my words. A soft, sweet scent tickled my nostrils, reminding me of the fact that the girl in front of me was a girl. But that didn't matter in the current situation. I'll save you. I'll make you happy. So, be my friend and let yourself be saved by me. I'm the hero who has saved the other world, you know? I'm more than reliable enough to save you. So, rely on me. Don't keep everything to yourself. Talk to me if you need help. That's what friends are for. At least that's what Ina told me. I had to tell her everything that I wanted to say. No matter how embarrassing it sounded. Also. If you were to be my friend I can be your exclusive hero. She Ina flinched after she heard those words. When she relaxed her body a little, she, you're such an idiot, smiled at me. I can't believe you said all that just for my sake. Tears trickled down from her eyes. One after another, water droplets fell down from her cheeks. Seriously why even? She let out a sigh. It seemed like she had finally decided to yield. I released her from my embrace and her body slid down the wall she was leaning on. She sat down on the floor. Now that you've resigned yourself to your fate, I will never let you go. I give up. I can't beat a stalker like you anyway. Who did you call a stalker? You menhara. W what? I am not a menhara. I'm a mentally stable person, thank you. Reflect on what you've been doing and say those words again. This time. Slowly, I shrugged my shoulders as a response to her glare. She tried to be intimidating but the tears in her eyes made her look pitiful instead. Are you sure you want me as a friend? Am I not a major pain in the ass for you? You are. I know what I'm getting into though, so you don't need to worry. If we're going to be friends then we'll be friends forever. Is that what you want? Yeah. When I nodded, she giggled. All right then. There's no reason for me to nag you anymore. Let's be friends. I'll grind you hard, so be prepared, okay? I don't think that's how friends work, but you were the one who offered yourself with such vigor just now. I had to do it because otherwise a certain thick-headed woman wouldn't even bother to listen to my words. Pot calling kettle black. At least I'm better than you. Fine, fine. I admit that I'm the most troublesome person in this room. She pouted before reaching out her hands toward me. What? My legs are weak. Help me stand up, huh? Come on, we're friends aren't we? Won't you help me? I pulled her hands and helped her. She wobbled before falling into my chest. Oi, shoulder, please. Is your body hurting again? My body is always hurting today just feels worse than usual. You should have told me beforehand. I held her waist and lifted her. I think this was the so-called legendary Princess Carrie. G. Grey, don't call me that. I'm shy racy go do now. Go to put me down. No, it's faster this way. Be but. But what? Never mind. Geez, seriously, you. Shinna had a strange expression on her face. In any case, I decided to carry her to her bedroom. I found the door to the room when I looked around the spacious living room. Is that your room? Eh? Yeah, why are you asking? No, wait. Can't we just do it on the sofa instead? It'll be more comfortable on the bed. But... Am I not heavy? You are. W what? I'm not that heavy. Oi, stop hitting me. Ouch, my neck. Seriously, that was dangerous. I opened the door to her bedroom while moving my aching neck around. Inside, there was a fancily decorated large bed. It was surrounded by a horde of plushies. I took a look at the witch's face and her bed alternatively. Anyway, don't just dismiss it, she retorted as she blushed. I mean... I won't judge you. Everyone has their own hobbies. Just kill me. As soon as I laid her down on her bed, she immediately crawled under her blanket. Then, she took a nearby plushie and hugged it. I sat down on the bed. Her back was pressed against my waist. The room was enveloped in silence for a little while. Go do. You said you were going to save me how exactly? She asked in almost a whisper. There isn't an easy way to get rid of the curse, you know? I guess so. Huh? Well, it's you after all. You're probably going to say something like I'll think of something later. Actually, I had been looking for a solution for quite some time now, but not a single one came to my mind. After all, 
Even Sheena didn't manage to find it even though she was a genius in the field of magic. The best thing I could do was to ease her burden. Your curse I'll take half of it. What? She looked horrified. If you do that, your life will be in danger. Actually, I don't think so. I'm an exorcist, remember? We have a stronger resistance to curse compared to normal people. As long as I use my exorcism, I should be able to prevent the curse's erosion on my soul. Honestly, it's easier to just transfer your curse as a whole to me. I could dispel it little by little if that was the case, but you won't allow that. Will you? Of course. If you do that, who knows what kind of burden will you? That's why I'll settle for half. If it's just half of it, I should be able to do something about it. My curse resistance is higher than you anyway, so it should be fine. I wasn't planning on sacrificing myself. I came up with this plan based on my experience on handling my exorcism. If I were to use my exorcism all the time while taking on the curse, the curse shouldn't be able to harm me. If I wanted to save her, this should be the way to do it. Perhaps she understood my intentions. She Ina's eyes started to waver. Don't try to handle everything by yourself. Sheena may I? We're friends, aren't we? We should share both our happiness and pain. That's what friends are for. She went silent for a while. I held my hand to her and she took it timidly. Even so, it's a give and take relationship, right? You can't just expect your friends to help you all the time without giving them something back. Yes. So, I'll be looking forward to your help whenever I get into trouble. Is that even possible in the first place? Well, of course. I'm not as clumsy as you are, but there are some troubles that even I can't handle alone. I'll come to you whenever I come across them in the future. Then, there was silence after that. Only the voice of the cicadas from outside the building could be heard. We stared at each other's eyes. If that's so, then. Sheena then uttered words filled with determination. Please save me. I grinned when I heard those words. After all, this girl who was hated by the whole world. This girl who was trapped in constant self-blame. This girl who always convinced herself that she had no right to be saved. Had finally asked me, her first friend, for help. All right, don't complain after this, okay? Here goes. I pressed my lips against hers. MMPH? She was surprised but she didn't resist me. She probably found out that this was part of the procedure to transfer her curse to me, to build a bridge to her soul. We needed to be in physical contact. For treatment, holding hands was sufficient, but for transferring curses, we needed something more than that. Ah, honestly, I didn't really want to do it like this, but if I wanted to do it quickly, then, this was the way to do it. Actually, I should speed up the process even more. I put my tongue inside her mouth. In the process, our teeth bumped and it hurted me a little. To be fair, this was my first kiss, so I didn't really know the details on how to do it, so I wish that she could forgive me about that accident later. I raised my concentration. The way to transfer her curse over to me was for her to guide me to her soul with her magic. Then, I'd sever the connection between her soul and the curse. After that, she could push the curse over to my soul using her mana. The kiss was to maintain the connection during that process. My only problem with this method was that I had to keep kissing her the entire time. It was a bit awkward. But whatever, just think of it as CPR or something. Also, I did this to help her, so I wish she could forgive me for stealing her lips like that. Phew. Nha. When everything was finished, I let her lips go. She Ina looked a little dazed. The work required concentration, so it was no wonder that she was exhausted. You okay, Sheena? When I called out to her, she became startled. Her body started to tremble. Her face started to redden up to her ears. She looked like an apple, but I probably was in the same state as her. My face felt hot, as if it was on fire. It was the first time that I had done this, so this should be normal, right? That was my first kiss. She gave me a resentful look. Hey. It was my first kiss too, who cares about that right now? How do you feel? Her expression was lighter than usual, she no longer looked like she was struggling, don't just dismiss it. Well, it's certainly better than before what about you? When she asked me back, I placed my hand on my chest, there was a heavy feeling coming from deep inside my chest, however, thanks to my exorcism, I didn't feel any pain coming from it, 
My body felt slightly more sluggish than usual, but I should be fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. You sure? Yeah, I think I can take more of your curse if you want me to. Her face reddened again as she turned her gaze away and clenched her fists. I don't want to kiss you again. I mean, as long as we make physical contact, it's all good. It doesn't need to be a kiss. Oh crap, I shouldn't have said that. Her face instantly turned uglier as it started to redden even more. Why 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 you? Are you kidding me? I'm going to kill you for real now. W wait, let me explain myself first. I tried to explain myself, but her hand landed on my face first. What an impatient girl. Epilogue. Shy Rashi Godu and she in a May I. Last day of the exam. This time, I didn't know whether I did well in the subjects for the day or not. I knew that I wouldn't get any red marks, but at the same time, it was doubtful that I'd get the average mark. How did it go? As I was holding my head in my hands, Sheena called out to me. If it wasn't for yesterday, I would have been able to do more. Pulling in all-nighters wouldn't help you by much anyway. I guess what about you? Everything's fine? It's your first exam, so the scope of the exam should be different from your previous school. Did you have it hard? Are you mocking me? All I've been doing at home is reading and studying, you know? Don't say that so smugly like that. It was hard to react to her self-deprecating jokes. Actually, knowing her, she probably didn't mean it as a joke. That was just how her daily life had been, so she just said it like it was nothing. Well, if you ever have to retake the exam, I'll help you to study for it. It was partly my responsibility that you had a hard time today and besides, W we're friends. She turned her face away after she said that. Now, I got embarrassed too. Thanks to her. Seriously, if saying something corny made her embarrassed, she shouldn't be saying it in the first place. I I guess so W we're friends, aren't we? Why yeah even if we didn't want it to happen. W we became friends anyway. We both felt a silence. What was with this awkward atmosphere? Could I leave now? I said too many cringy lines yesterday. I didn't want to remember any of it. I hope I can erase my memory of it. This morning I rolled around my room the moment I woke up. Seriously, what the hell did I do yesterday? What exclusive hero? What are you? An idiot. How could you say something cheesy like that? Also, how could that girl listen to those words earnestly like that? Was she an idiot? W well. Don't worry about me, I, I doubt I'll have to retake it. Is that so? Gee glad to hear that. Why you aren't that stupid, I see. Stop calling me an idiot. When I yelled at her to deny her words, Sheena pouted her lips. Is this not how you normally talk to your friend? You um, she asked, looking unsure. No, you're right. They say it is because you are close that you can freely throw insults at each other. Question mark. Sheena tilted her head, confused. Well, she didn't really know how friendships worked in the first place, so I guess it was a given that she'd be puzzled about it. Because all the people she met in her previous life were hostile to her, she became used to throwing out cold words. That was why she developed that honor student persona of hers, so she wouldn't unilaterally spit out poison at random people. She acted suspiciously at times because she didn't know what to say aside from those harsh words. I don't understand. Friends how am I supposed to act around them? Personally, I don't care if she acts normal around me. Friends are just people you are comfortable with. But this clumsy girl wouldn't listen to me if I were to tell her that. That was why. All right. Now that the exam is over, it's time to have fun. H have fun? Yeah, I'll teach you how to have fun with your friends. What exactly should I do? Anything, really. Shopping, karaoke, bowling hell, just going out together counts. Anything fun so we can forget about the exam works. We don't have to do those things together, do we? Oi. The point of it was that we would be doing it together. The more the merrier. If it's someone you don't know then it's acceptable if you feel awkward. But with friends, you shouldn't be. Friends are the people you're comfortable with, after all. Wait. I just said those embarrassing lines with a straight face. Just earlier. I swore at myself for doing it yesterday and now I did it again. It was too late to regret it. My black history kept accumulating. Let's go together. Well, we were high school students. 
I should just dismiss my black history as the folly of youth and the move on. Oh, okay. She in a let out a wide smile. The smile she had never shown before. I'll leave myself in your care section. And so, we decided to do karaoke. You am go do? Yeah? Well, you don't need to talk. I know what you are going to say. Sheena was frozen stiff. Reason being, who? It's been a while since I last came here. You always come here every time an exam is over. I mean, it's a good distraction. Now, let's sing to our heart's content. Hina, Shinji and Yuka were all here. After our conversation, Sheena and I decided to do karaoke. But along the way we ran into Shinji and Yuka. After that, Yuka invited Hina to join us. Do you feel uncomfortable? Eh no, I don't. It's just... Well, I knew that she'd act like this. That was why I was hesitant when those three decided to join in. You know, those three were worried about you too. They noticed that you hadn't been feeling well. When I told her this, she froze. Really? MHM. That's why you should show them that you're doing well. You might think of them as strangers. But they thought of you as their friends. EA, is it that easy to make friends? You're the only one in this room who'd think that it's hard. I flicked her forehead. When Shinji saw me talking with Shiina, he poked me in the shoulder. You guys are getting along well. More like we're getting along better. <laughs> when I told him that, he smirked before letting out a hearty laugh. I felt like I would be bombarded by a barrage of questions, so I quickly grabbed the microphone. No one would ask me anything if I were to sing now. A perfect countermeasure. I didn't have much confidence in my singing voice, but I knew that I wasn't horrible at it at least. Did you do well on the exam? May I chan? I I should be fine I think. Meanwhile, Sheena was dealing with the girls. Was she aware that she was cutting their conversation short with that kind of answer? Well, to be fair. It wasn't exactly a conversation that should be prolonged to begin with. No one liked talking too much about exams. Anyway, it wasn't like she could fix her shyness overnight. She had to steadily cure her fear of people and lack of self-esteem by constantly talking with other people like this. When I was thinking about that, I finished singing my song. Almost immediately, Hina picked up the mic in high spirits. The screen displayed a rather popular idol song. Let's sing together, Yuka. Sure. I can only sing the chorus though. I went to the drink bar to get some drinks for myself. I returned to our room with a melon soda in hand. Oi, what are you doing? She Ina was frozen stiff while holding the tablet. When I called out to her, she answered me in a whisper. W what should I do? What do you mean? You're at karaoke, just sing. I don't know how to. Why the hell did you choose karaoke then? Out of the many options I offered her, she was the one who picked karaoke. Because it's better than bowling or any other activities that involve me moving my body around. I see. I assume that you don't normally listen to popular songs, then? I only listen to classic pieces. I don't think you can sing those songs here. Also I don't know how to use this machine. Wow you know how to use your phone, right? It's similar to your phone, you should be able to get the hang of it quickly. I taught her how to use the tablet. She was smart to begin with, so she got the hang of it quicker than I thought. So, what are you going to sing? I'm um, anything that I usually hear on TV, I guess, she said as she pointed to a list of really old songs. All right, go with that one. It's old, but everyone should know about it. Are you sure I should go with this? You aren't making fun of me. Are you? I'm not. Karaoke is about singing the song you want to sing, no matter how outdated or bad it is. Well, some groups would force you to sing the songs that everyone knew, but it wasn't the case with our group. Everyone knew that Sheena was bad at socializing and they wouldn't force her to do anything. Oi, you over there, listen to my singing properly. I'm listening, so just do your thing, jeez. Why yes, eh, me too. You're an amazing singer. Kairoshima san. Huh. You think so? Thank you. Ina beamed happily. I shrugged my shoulders after seeing her like that. She Ina. Flattery can hurt people, you know? Don't say unnecessary things. EA. I, I didn't mean to. Sheena looked flustered and made eye contact with Hina, who was giggling at her. I handed the tablet to Hina. Oi Hina, I picked a song. You go sing with her. Eh? Okay okay. I didn't expect you to listen to this kind of song. She Ina-san, 
Ah ha ha I don't remember the lyrics well though, don't worry, me neither because it's a really old song. The exchange was clumsy, but Sheena managed to talk more comfortably now, as I was feeling at ease after seeing her growth, Shinji, who had just come back from getting a drink, sat down beside me, good for her, I knew what he meant, I don't know what happened, but it seems like she's getting better. His eyes were on Sheena, who was holding the mic with both her hands while looking flustered. It was obvious that she wasn't used to being in this kind of situation and I couldn't help but laugh at her. Her pitch when singing was a little off, but at least she looked like she was having fun. So, why are you trying to talk to me? Eh? I just feel like it. He shrugged his shoulders. His gaze looked as if he had seen through me. I might be a hero back in my previous life, but the current me was merely a high school student. I wasn't omnipotent enough to read the thoughts of everyone. Summer vacation is almost here. Yuka, who sat next to Shinji, said that in a cheerful tone. If you want to, we can go out and hang out together. Can you bring Shiina-san with you? Ask the person yourself. When I pointed at Shiina, who was engrossing herself in her singing, Yuka blinked her eyes and laughed. I mean, I wasn't Shiina's guardian or anything. There was no need to go through me for every single thing that involved her. After that, only Sheena's and Hina's singing voices echoed through the room. It was hard to say that they nailed the song, but Hina was vibing while Sheena did her best to sing, and she said that a witch wasn't allowed to be happy. What a full load of crap. I wanted her to say that again after looking at her current state in the mirror. She was having fun playing with everyone. You wanna go somewhere? Yes. Let's go to the beach later. Now, that was a bad suggestion. Sheena couldn't swim, so I could imagine her drowning in the sea. I sensed trouble coming in the near future. H how was it? I, I didn't mess up, right? Well, if you want my honest opinion, you suck. Ah really? I really shouldn't be allowed to sing. You know, I sighed at Sheena, who acted all depressed after hearing my words. Seriously? This girl just couldn't take a joke. Talking with her always brought me headaches. Nevertheless, she was my friend. Unfortunately, I was stuck with her since I promised to make her happy. So, despite what she said, I had to protect that smile of hers from now on. I could sense trouble in the near future. An enjoyable one, though. Section. Once upon a time, in a distant land, a witch asked. If we met under different circumstances, would we be able to be friends? Once upon a time, in a distant land, a hero answered. Nothing will change between us unless we're reborn in another world. Afterwards, time flew by and I realized that it had been more than two and a half years since I last published a book. In any case, I'm happy to be back. Whether you're new or a long-time reader of mine, I'll introduce myself. My name is Amami Kazuki. After deciding to make my debut again in the Rookie Award, I managed to receive an honorable mention for the Kodansh All Light Novel Bunko Rookie of the Year Award. That's the story behind this book's publication. So, what do you think of the modern reincarnation rom com? Do you like it, huh? It isn't the kind of rom com you expected, it's still a story about youth. So it counts as a rom com. The story started out when I was thinking about what if two powerful beings who were able to decide the fate of the world were to be dragged into a modern rom-com setting. At first, I planned for the story to be light-hearted, but as I began to make the hero and the witch's backstory, it turned into a more serious story than I planned, though, it became more interesting as well. So, can the former hero and former witch be freed from their curses and live happily ever after? Because of their distorted feelings that carried over from their previous lives, it would be hard for them to achieve that, but both of them will never accept the situation where each other's hard work in their previous life goes unrewarded in their next lives. If I have a chance to release the next volume, I will bring you a more light-hearted rom-com into the series because it's summer when I'm working on this. The theme will be summer-related events. Summer festival. Fireworks. Swimming pool. Oh, I'm getting excited by just thinking about it. If you find the idea interesting, make sure to say it on Twitter or any social media you have. This humble author, who had been eager searching since the first day of this book's release will definitely be pleased to see your feedback. Also, recommend this book to your friends as, if there are more readers, 
the more the chance that this book will get a second volume. Anyway, time to move on to the appreciation section. Firstly, thank you M. San and S. San who managed to discover this work. Thank you Ayu San for the lovely illustrations, and a huge thank you to everyone who was involved in the creation of this book. If this work managed to touch your heart a little, it would be a huge pleasure for me. The author, by the way, sorry for the self-plug, but I also won the H.J. Novel Award with my other work, Hey I Barakun's Teenage New Game Plus. The book will be released in the near future. It's about a young man who regretted his gloomy youth and traveled back in time to fix it. It's an interesting story, so please read it if you like it. Well, that's about it for now. Hope to see you again in the next volume or another series. End of Volume 1